ABC 2000. Live from around the world, once again from Times Square, Peter Jennings. Well, Times Square looks a little bit like the celebration has already begun. In fact, we were out there uh, pretty early this morning. And some people have actually come to Times Square in the rain and set up seats for a celebration that will not start for almost 16 or 17 hours from now. We shall be here, but we shall be drier, though the weather forecast for the eastern United States says rain until noon and then clearing up. But it is raining in Paris, and we'll get to Paris and Barbara Walters in just a moment, and it is very cold in the Vatican. There's St. Peter's Basilica. We'll be there in a short while to talk to Cokie Roberts, and before long, that place will be absolutely mobbed by people from all over the world. And there, which is a little bit less recognizable to many people, is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Manger Square in Bethlehem, where it is a beautiful day today, and we shall be there before long, too. There's some word from Bethlehem that a lot of the talk about terrorism has kept crowds down around the world. Um, but we'll know a little later on in the day as to whether or not people have been or crowds have been subdued, uh, particularly at Vatican and at, um, at Bethlehem. Let's go back to the Pacific now because though we're waiting to uh, celebrate in the Chatham Islands just south of New Zealand, I think Kiribati is still going as an old man and a young boy uh, take their gift of fire out to the sea the celebration moves to New Zealand, to the Chatham Islands, just to the southeast of New Zealand, about 800 miles from the mainland. These are two islands, Chatham and Pitt, right down there in the lower corner of your screen, in which not a great deal happens except farming. New Zealand famous for its sheep, among other things. Though a lot closer to the rest of the world now in the internet revolution. But the first inhabitants here on Chatham Island were, as we saw, on Kiribati and in Tonga were Polynesians searching around the Pacific to make their home on a variety of these quite lovely but uh, not profoundly uh, productive islands. ABC's James Walker is in Wellington, New Zealand. And uh, New Zealand, I guess you'd have to say today, is the canary in the coal mine. Uh, actually, as one Australian or New Zealand paper put it, uh, because it is there where the world is going to watch first for the Y2K developments. Jim, are you there this morning, James? Peter, you took the words right out, right out of my mouth. It is indeed the canary in the mine shaft, the first industrialized country in about 40, 48, 50 minutes to welcome the new year, and then we will see whether or not it also welcomes the millennium bug. Let me just set the stage for a second. Behind me is the beehive, part of uh, the Parliament buildings right, right here in Wellington. It is the home of the Prime Minister and other members um, uh, of her government. On the first floor is the White 2K Government Commission. In the basement is emergency management, which has ties to 300 uh, utilities, hospitals, police stations, and we'll be monitoring them throughout the night. The White 2K Government Commission will be giving us briefings. Um, the government officials here are, are very confident. They say that the key sectors they believe will work water utilities, telephones. Um, but when it comes to Y2K, there are no guarantees. As you, uh, as you know, Peter, information technology uh, statistics indicate that 14% of all computer code that has been fixed still has the Y2K bug in it. So there are no bets. We won't really know until we get there. OK, James, we'll come back to you very shortly, too, because as you said, it's the canary in the in, in the mine, it's a, it's a guinea pig for many American companies, particularly who do, who do business in New Zealand and throughout the Pacific. Uh, but while we're waiting for the Chatham Islands to uh, enable us to share in their ceremony, want to just walk around Europe very quickly. Cokie Roberts is in, in Vatican City, and looking a little less cold, Cokie, uh, than you did uh, a little <laughs> while ago, but it is cold in Rome today. Well, it's very cold in Rome, and a lot of these pilgrims who are here from all over the world are a little surprised at that. But they are here from all over the world, Peter. And behind me now, it's 11 o'clock in the morning here, and behind me there are hundreds of people lining up to get in through the holy door at St. Peter's. The millennium really began here on December 24th when the Pope started the Jubilee year, the Great Jubilee. They happen every 25 years, but he's deemed this one great because it is the 2000 year. And he opened the Holy Door Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve, and people have been lining up to go through it ever since. And they're already here by the hundreds this morning. Thanks, Koki. We'll make contact later. later we have made contact with uh, the Chatham Islands, so let's listen to their celebration. They're about a minute from midnight.
beacon of hope shines brightly in the minds of the children of the new millennium. The spotlight shines directly into the eyes of world leaders. The words are not appropriate at this time. It is the actions of man today, whereby the children of all nations can truly receive the dividends in their time from peace and harmony, brotherhood of man and environmental care. You see a modesty in this ceremony that you'll see in lots of places throughout the world today. their first midnight in the Chatham Islands. Not many people live there, but they share the sentiment, surely, of people all over the world that the 21st century is going to be good for those young children. 39 time zones there are in the world. We've now been through two of them. One happened to be on the quarter hour, but to the local people there, it's midnight, and that's what matters. And our millennium coverage will continue. Introducing the new AccuView 2 contact lens. So natural, it feels like you're wearing nothing at all. For a free trial pair, call us or visit your eye care professional. Announcing a new way to see near and far. AccuView bifocal contact lens with pupil intelligent design. Call 1-800-531-2121 for a free trial pair or visit your eye care professional. We need a car. A minivan. No. An SUV. <gasps> With leather. Blue. Green. Bluish green. Introducing Autotrader.com. Over a million used cars updated daily, making the biggest, best used car site on the planet. Now we need insurance. And a loan. Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. What color are your teeth? Introducing Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste. It'll safely whiten your teeth with just one tube. Prove it to yourself with our exclusive whitening guide in every package. You can go from here to here. Great tasting Arm & Hammer makes the difference. We guarantee it. So what color are your teeth? Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste. Whiter teeth, one tube, guaranteed. Oh, Mom, it's great. My first apartment. You should see it. It's huge. <laughs> When you've got things to talk about, it's a good idea to dial 1010321 first. And I got a great view of the river. With 1010321, you get 50% off calls over 10 minutes. That's just 8 cents a minute, day or night, and no monthly fees. And at 50% off, you can share every last detail. And I even have a garden. Talk as long as you want with 1010321. Monday on 2020, an emotional tug of war. Adopted children searching for their birth mothers. Birth mothers who don't want to be found. I was also just absolutely terrified. Can you understand why your birth mother does not want to have contact with you now? A gripping 2020, Monday. ABC 2000 continues live from around the world. Once again, Peter Jennings. Well, that's Times Square, and it's uh, been midnight in a couple of places out in the Pacific, and so the world is just beginning to flex its first 21st century muscles. We'll continue to do that just for a little while now by going first to Paris and saying good morning to Barbara Walters. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Bonane. Happy New Year to you, Peter. <laughs> I am right across, as you can see, from the Eiffel Tower, where for the past, <clears throat> excuse me, thousand days, they have been counting down the days. Now they are counting down the hours. You see the, the J is for sure. 13 hours until midnight of en long before the year 2000. And at midnight, you are going to see the most spectacular 
spectacular view of the Eiffel Tower. 20,000 lights are going to light it up. Fireworks that are going to climb a thousand feet in the air, swirling and dancing and twirling. They say there's never been fireworks like this before. On the Champs Elysees, which is the main boulevard uh, here in Paris, there are 11 different uh, Ferris wheels that are also going to be whirling and twirling with acrobats and dancers, and you can see some of them now. They will only be here for one day. They start at midnight, and then it all ends. The Paris that we know has always been a city of light, but Peter, it will never be as bright and as glittery as it will be tonight. It's raining now, it's been cold and raining every day. People are already lined up here uh, at the Eiffel Tower. And after days of storms, there's a feeling of excitement and the fact that it's really going to be a glorious night. Six o'clock Eastern time, three o'clock Pacific time, midnight here, and we're 13 hours away. Well, I'm going to bound to say, Barbara, I'll say it now, that you look absolutely gorgeous, but the weather behind you looks horrible. Um, and you've had terrible storms, in France particularly, in the last several days, with a lot of people killed. There have been more than 80 people killed. The, the storm started on Sunday. Uh, as you walk down the streets, if you go down Avenue Foch, for example, which is the um, a residential area, it looks as if a hurricane has hit with trees all over the street. Uh, the Notre Dame has, has been damaged. Windows were blown out, even parts of the structure. Uh, we went to Versailles, where the gardens are now closed. You can see the way it looks with some of the trees down. Uh, Versailles itself was damaged, but not inside. The park lost some of its oldest trees. 10,000 trees were destroyed, Peter, some of them three to 400 years old. So it's been very, very bad weather, and today is certainly not, not sunny and glorious, but uh, it, there are no storms. And France is in a pretty cheerful uh, mood. It's been a good year. Uh, for France. So they will be celebrating tonight. Good, Barbara. Look forward to seeing you before long. Thanks very much. Barbara Walters outside the Eiffel Towers. Take a look out here at Times Square at the moment. It is, uh, it's raining here too, but even now it has begun to let up just a little. And as I said, people have already come to the square this morning and have set up seats. Uh, the police have transformed this. Uh, there's going to be no uh, interference as far as they're concerned with any celebrations here, but they've, they've transformed it into a whole series of little islands and we'll explain it to you as the day goes on because uh, New York has has already planned quite a celebration of its own but still ahead for us is the Y2K watch in Washington and in New Zealand right after the local news in many cities so I hope you'll stay with ABC as we continue our live global coverage and that it is of the millennium The Giver. Hello, I am The Giver. That is Latin for one who loves to give. And as always, Send.com has helped me send a gift to my friends that stands out and says I care. You see, I could not resist sneaking by to see how splendidly my gift of fine wine is going over. Just look how much they love the beautiful... Freeze, perverts. Oh my, this cannot look good. Careful, I am a bleeder. <laughs> You're tickling The Giver. Send a gift of fine wine elegantly wrapped in white linen. Send.com, where great givers go. Wake up to a brand new century with a special New Year's Day edition of Eyewitness News this morning. See what happened at the stroke of midnight, what's working and what's not in the wake of Y2K. We'll get you through it first thing New Year's Day on Eyewitness News this morning, Saturday morning at 6, right here on ABC7.
What should you do to stop a friend from driving drunk? Whatever you have to. Breast cancer not only affects adults, but children too. Hi, I'm Audrey Storch. When I was diagnosed, my kids needed me when I couldn't be there. So I created Huggy Miss You, the first huggable frame for children. It's a hug from you, even when you're away due to illness, work, or any kind of separation. A portion of the proceeds go to breast cancer research and programs. So give them a hug. Huggy Miss You. For more information, call the following number. I'm Yolanda Vega. The New York Millennium Millions jackpot is now $100 million. And that's a record. See me draw the New York Millennium Millions numbers on New Year's Eve at 627 p.m. live only on ABC7. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC7 Eyewitness News. It is 526 and the final day before the year 2000. So we take you live to Times Square where the final countdown is on in just 18 and a half hours. That world famous ball will drop. Good morning, everyone. Have no doubts about it. It is December 31st, New Year's Eve. I'm David Ushery. And I'm Nancy Liu. We'll have more on the final Y2K Count down in just a moment, but first, some breaking news out of Russia. In a surprise television appearance just a little while ago, President Boris Yeltsin announced his resignation. His powers are being turned over to Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. Elections will be held in 90 days. Of course, ABC News will have more on this major development throughout the morning. Well, the crossroads of the world has turned into a frozen zone now, and people going to Times Square tonight could be subjected to random weapon searches. Right now, the area is virtually shut down as police try to keep New York City's celebration of the millennium safe. Broadway and 7th Avenues from 42nd to 47th Streets are already closed, and this evening, that frozen zone will expand. And believe it or not, the Times Square celebrations officially kick off in about half an hour from now, Sandra Bookman is there live with more. Sandra. Good morning, Nancy. It is buzzing here in Times Square. In fact, there are a few people that have already staked their claims on a spot for the celebration. Now, right now, there's more police and members of the media than anybody else. That certainly will not be the case later today. Up to two million people are expected in Times Square tonight to see this. Not to worry, this is just a dress rehearsal for the real thing tonight at midnight. Plenty of police were already on hand to make sure nothing unpleasant happened. Despite a small explosion in a Con Ed manhole that injured a Con Ed worker repairing a feeder, Police Commissioner Howard Safer says Times Square, in fact, the whole city, is as safe as it can get. As I've said many times over the last few days, there is no specific credible threat or any information of a specific credible threat to New York City or any of its environs. Now, in fact, the first official event kicks off here this morning about 625, a dance performance, and the Millennial Ball will be raised up that pole. We're live in Times Square, Sandra Bookman, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you very much, Sandra. All right, the most important thing we can tell you about is traffic in Times Square this morning. Let's check in with Eric Rath, who's over at Metro Traffic. Eric, good morning. Hey, good morning, David. And the other thing is, don't even think about driving into Times Square tonight, folks. They have massive closures between 34th and 57th through 6th, 7th, 8th. Avenue. If they catch a car in there, they will definitely tow you away. Stick with Mass Transit, Metro North, New Jersey Transit, LIRR. They're all running extra trains. That's the way to go. I'm Eric Rath, Eyewitness News. All right, Eric. And you saw the sprinkles out there yeah. with Sandra right. Bookman. Exactly. Let's check. have a quick check of the New Year's forecast for you. It has been a steady sprinkle this morning, but AccuWeather says that we'll clear up a little bit later and the sun should be out this afternoon. The high will get up to 44. Tonight will be clear. And the lows of the city will get down to 36. That is local news for now. I'm Nancy Lou. I'm David Usher. We'll see you in 15. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update brought to you by Toyota, taking you into the new millennium. How do you enhance a V8 engine that produces 245 horsepower? A chassis that can haul up to 2,000 pounds or brakes that have four piston calipers? Simple. 
add about six pounds of steel. Toyota Tundra, Motor Trend Truck of the Year and four-wheel and off-road magazines, 4x4 four four of the year. Hey, Jeff. Now, listen, I got it right here, buddy. It's icy cold and tasting great. Now, come on, Jeff, you tell me. Is there anybody in this world who deserves this here Pepsi more than you? Hi, Jeff. See you later, Jeff. Hey, that's what I call motivation. I don't know where she came yeah. from. The joy. ABC 2000, live from around the world. Once again from Times Square, in New York, Peter Jennings. Well, there's a small example of how the world has changed. That's the Omar Mosque in Bethlehem, the place where the Gospels say that uh, Jesus was born, and we'll go there in just a minute. And I'm not sure that your local news actually dealt with it, um, but a couple of headlines here. Boris Yeltsin has resigned as president of Russia. Uh, that means, uh, technically speaking, there should be an election in Russia uh, within 90 days. And it looks very much like India and the hijackers of that Indian Airlines Airbus uh, have reached an agreement and that there's going to be an exchange of passengers for three either militants in favor of an independent Kashmir. We think that's what it is. And the passengers are going to be exchanged before the day is over. So we get a great shock at the beginning of the 21st century with Boris Yeltsin announcing that he's going to step down and make way for the man who's currently Prime Minister, Prime Minister Putin, who has very much on edge and everybody else, and the good news which comes out of southern Afghanistan that that horrible siege uh, for the people on that plane may, within hours, be over. We'll be going off to New Zealand and, and uh, Washington in just a couple of minutes to get some of the first Y2K news, but we want to go way back in history now uh, to Manger Square in Bethlehem, where ABC's Bill Blakemore is standing just outside that little door you can see down there at the bottom right hand corner of your picture which is actually how people get in uh, to the church of the holy sepulcher itself and bill blakemore is there good morning bill good morning peter actually church of the nativity Did church of the holy sepulcher holy of course, being... in Jerusalem. i'm sorry <laughs> no problem it's um it's unusually hot here today 77 degrees here in manger square it's very often at this time of year uh, cold and rainy even uh, snowy, but uh, the very hot weather has produced what is just like a shirt sleeve day here, sunny weather. Very few Christian pilgrims so far this morning making their way in. We can't tell yet whether the security warnings have indeed kept them away. We'll find that out maybe this evening. The Friday noon prayers have just broken up here. The Mosque of Omar, of course, just across Manger Square from the Church of the Nativity behind me. The Church of the Nativity, as you know, of course, is built over the cave where tradition says that Jesus was born 2,000 years ago, making this, in a sense, ground zero uh, for the year 2000. And we're just, by coincidence, halfway around the Earth. It's just afternoon here. And so it will be this evening before we see any celebrations. But the interesting thing here today, Peter, is that by coincidence, it's a day of great importance for all three of the Abrahamic religions, the religions that uh, stem back to Abraham. The Jews, of course, start their Sabbath this evening when the sun goes down. It's the last Friday of Ramadan for the Muslims. And many of the Muslims from throughout the West Bank today have gone into Jerusalem because for the first time, the Israelis have lifted the requirements that there be special permission during Ramadan to go in and pray there. And of course, the Christian millennium, moving into the third millennium tonight, there's a certain sense of heightened tension here because of all of these different religious feelings of, uh, of importance today. And the Israeli and Palestinian police are on heightened security. Bill, let me just before I ask you what the Palestinian Authority plans, Ramadan, of course, is a month of fasting for Muslims throughout yes. the world. They fast from dawn until sundown and party uh, sometimes quite ex extravagantly a after dark at night. But the Palestinian Authority, which now controls Bethlehem, has what planned for later today? Well, they're going to have a, a concert. They're going to have a number of singers and a film festival of Palestinian filmmakers this evening. As midnight approaches, there's going to be a special lighting of candles here in the square and then the releasing of 2,000 doves a symbol of peace, most apt here, of course, because it is hoped by many here that the year 2000 will be a year of considerable peacemaking, since the Israelis are now talking with the Syrians starting on Monday uh, about what is going to happen between those two countries, including possibly the disposition of the Golan Heights. And the Israelis are still talking with the Palestinians and say that they hope by September to have 
Palestinian-Israeli peace established as well. But there are mixed feelings on all sides here. Something has to be given up by everybody. So, as usual in the Middle East, and especially here at the crossroads of three continents with three religions mixing it up together on a day like this, there's a variety of feelings and expectations and hopes. Thanks very much, Bill. We'll talk to you later in the day. Uh, uh, one piece of news related to the Russian news in Moscow this morning. The Russians have just announced that the acting president, Vladimir Putin, is going to be going to uh, Bethlehem and to Jerusalem next week, replacing Mr. Yeltsin. When I was talking to Bill Blakemore earlier on, he said that was one of the first things they had asked because Mr. Yeltsin had indeed planned to come. But with that news in Moscow today, Vladimir Putin gets a tremendous, tremendous boost. They've just had an election in Russia. And many of the parties in the Russian parliament, which were supported by the Kremlin or supported by the Kremlin, was something of a mean and nasty election, um, uh, much meaner and much nastier than we are accustomed to in the United States. But uh, the pro-Kremlin parties and the pro-Yeltsin parties, the pro-Putin parties, the new prime minister, now very much likely to be the next president of Russia, um, have all done fairly well. Mr. Putin will be going to the Holy Land. And we will continue our millennium coverage in just a minute. Stay with ABC and the world as the new millennium arrives down under. Still ahead, Australia's pre-party direct from the Sydney Opera House handles Messiah from New Zealand. Plus, the latest on what's really happening with Y2K. And that's just this morning. ABC 2000, 24 incredible hours continues. Hi, I need to pick up my car. You, you are. Yes, me, please. Okay. Can you spell that, please? B L E E T H. You know, maybe I should just come back another time. No, 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 no. no. Hey, Jeff. Now listen, I got it right here, buddy. It's icy cold and tasting great. Now, come on, Jeff, you tell me. Is there anybody in this world who deserves this here Pepsi more than you? Hi, Jeff. See you later, Jeff. Yeah, that's what I call motivation. I don't know where she came yeah. from. The joy. America's Broadcasting Company wishes you a Happy New Year. There is nothing wrong with your television set. We are controlling transmission. We hope you've enjoyed the journey and remind you that the best, the best is yet to come. to television's new millennium. Brought to you by your friends at ABC. Track says the muscular V6 gives it undeniable appeal. Open Road says this SUV is an all-star player. It's the V6 Grand Vitara from Suzuki. And we say now it can be yours for under $20,000. That's right. Visit your local Suzuki dealer today and drive one home for under $20,000. Find out why MotorWeek says the Grand Vitara is the best small SUV of the year. And it's only at your Suzuki dealer. <laughs>
ecampus.com. Textbooks and stuff. Cheap. Save up to 50%. And shipping's always free. ABC 2000 continues live from around the world. Once again, Peter Jennings. Well, it's 5.30 in the morning in New York City. It's 5.30 in the evening in Bangkok. It's 7.40 in the evening in Tokyo. In the Pacific, they're going to have their midnights uh, before we are. There were a lot of people talking about buzz on this particular occasion. Where was the buzz? Well, as we came to work early this morning through Times Square, which New Yorkers are utterly convinced is the center of the universe, I was surprised how many people there were who were here who weren't working. But Jack Ford is working. Jack is down there. Good morning, Jack. What are all these folks doing here? Peter, good morning. The folks are starting to gather here, although in talking to some police officers just recently, they expressed some surprise over the fact that there weren't bigger crowds here yet. That probably is attributable to the fact that although the forecast was for cool and dry, we got the cool part right, but not the dry part right. It's been raining throughout the course of the morning here. It's starting to slow down now. Uh, you can see behind me that there are a significant police presence here. Crowds are starting to gather. The police haven't yet begun shepherding the crowds into the spectator areas, the so-called pens that they've set up here. They indicated again in a conversation that there's no real timetable for that. They'll just do it by feel when they look like the crowds beginning to gather and it makes sense to get them into those areas. So the rain is keeping people away right now. The rain is starting to let up a little bit and they're expecting, as you've said before, perhaps as many as two million people out here. The dropping of the ball is some 18 hours away, but the crowds are starting to gather, Peter. We will have a chance, by the way, on television this morning to see the ball go up in about an hour and a half from now. And Jack, if I'm not mistaken, having seen the weather forecast quite late last night, this is going to be a dry and cool day before we're finished. Hopefully, they'll, we'll get the dry part right soon, Peter. As I said, it's just starting to let up a little bit now. As you mentioned, the ball is, is going to be up there um, it, it, at about 7 o'clock or so Eastern time. We'll be chatting with some folks out here also, talking with the designer of the ball from Waterford Crystal. And so the festivities will be getting started. And very briefly, New York City has a whole panoply of events itself. When are they going to start, you know? Uh, Peter, they're supposed to get started officially at 6.30 this morning, and there's an hourly event. It, it includes things such as, as street fair, theater, dancers, a great deal of events taking place throughout the course of the day. Thanks very much. Jack on the street, nice to talk to you. Right, Stay dry if you can. When we come back, the 21st century is about to begin in New Zealand, right after local news in many cities. Stay tuned with our Millennium coverage. ABC 2000, live from around the world, will continue in a moment. The King. Should have used Energizer. They keep going and going and going and going. What color are your teeth? Introducing Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste. It'll safely whiten your teeth with just one tube. Prove it to yourself with our exclusive whitening guide in every package. You can go from here to here. Great tasting Arm & Hammer makes the difference. We guarantee it. So what color are your teeth? Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste. Whiter teeth, one tube, guaranteed. The GMC Convoy 2000 is here. Trucks with capabilities that will change the way you look at the road. Professional grade pickups, SUVs, and family vans designed better than they need to be. Like the 2000 GMC CRX Extended Cab with the most powerful standard V8 in its class. Get up to $1,587 average finance savings with 3.9% APR on select 2000 Sierra models. GMC, do one thing, do it well. Select Polaroid cameras and film. Here we go. 
Save now before December 31st. Here we go. Final answer. You win 250. Yeah. To be a millionaire returns January 9th on ABC. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. And good morning to you. It is 546 on New Year's Eve, Friday, December 31st. We're in the final hours now of the final day of the final year of the 20th century. And we're so glad you're starting it with us. I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Ushery. Throughout the morning, we'll supplement ABC's worldwide coverage with our own coverage of things going on in the tri-state area. And within the next hour, the New Year's Eve celebrations will get underway in Times Square. And you know the crossroads of the world have been turned into a frozen zone as the city makes room for two million guests in Times Square. Sandra Bookman, already there live with the latest for us. Sandra. I gotta tell you, Nancy, it's a little wetter than I thought it was gonna be this morning, but that hasn't stopped people from trickling in here to Times Square. I don't know if you can see to my left here. We've already got a few people that have lined up, well, they're sitting down along the sidewalk, already staking claim to their spot for the celebration. And right around the corner, you see these police officers, just a small sample of the nearly 8,000 officers that are gonna be here in the Times Square area today to make sure that this millennium celebration goes off without a hitch. The first, con the first uh, official activities began about 6:25 this morning. It's a dance number, and then they're going to raise that Millennium Ball up the pole. We're going to be here to catch it all and give you guys a glimpse at home. For now, we're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Exciting already. Thank you. All right, forget about the car. Let's check in with Eric Rath over at Metro. Eric. Hey, good morning. Thank you, David. Yes, of course, we do not want to drive into the Times Square area. Stick with Mass Transit, LIRR, New Jersey Transit, Metro North. They're all running extra trains, extra cars today to help us out also through tomorrow. Now, here's what else is going on. You can see that sheen coming off the roadways. We do have some light rain coming down, so the roadways are very slick. Here's a look at the Southern State Parkway as you make your way into the Belt Parkway in through Queens coming out of Nassau County. We are getting reports of even some heavy a heavy wet snow in the tri-state area, so making the roadways very, very slick. Please keep that in mind if you're heading out this morning. Be very careful. I'm Eric Rath, Metro Traffic for Eyewitness News. All right, good advice. Thank you, Eric. Yep. Now, the financial markets will be in action today. Here's Reuters reporter David Hafenrapper. David? Well, Nancy, just a half day of trading today. The markets will close at 1 o'clock this after that sort of mixed day yesterday where the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost some ground, down 31 points on the day. The Nasdaq also pulled back just a bit in the session from its record highs, down 4.5 points on the day to finish out at 4,036. And there was no action in the Asian markets overnight as traders there observe the New Year's holiday. And of course, at this point, S&P futures are pointing to a weaker start for us today. David, Nancy. All right, David. All right, so when will the rain clear out of yeah. here? Here's your New Year's Eve forecast. It is raining lightly in most places throughout the tri-state area right now. Here is the AccuWeather forecast. It is 37 degrees right now, relative humidity 92%. The clouds and sprinkle will give way to a sunny afternoon. The high today near 44, but then we're heading down into the 20s tonight for New Year's Eve in the coldest spots, but count on about 38 degrees in Times Square when we begin the countdown into the next century. All right, and again, we're keeping an eye on things here in the local area, of course, ABC News, and we are following events in Russia where President Boris Yeltsin has now submitted his resignation. And in India, where there may be a settlement in that hijacking, uh, uh, negotiations may be successful there. So we're following all that for you. And that'll do it for now. I'm David Usher. And I'm Nancy Liu. We return you to ABC 2000 after a break. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of cola. Now what'll it be, sweetheart? Let me guess. A nice, cold Pepsi. I wouldn't want to hear one of those crazy voices of yours, huh? Honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hit it, fellas.
year 2000 Corolla. Millennium proof dependability. The New York Millennium Millions jackpot is now $100 million. ABC 2000 continues live from around the world. Once again from Times Square in New York, Peter Jennings. Good morning, everybody, or good morning again. Welcome back to our live coverage of the century change. In a moment, we're going to go to New Zealand, where the first industrial country in the world will enter the 21st century. We'll get our first taste of what Y2K is doing, if anything, to the technological base there. But before that, we want to check in on London, where ABC's Charlie Gibson is standing by, and who's usually up at this time of day in this city. London seems to have had a few problems over there this morning or in the last couple of days about getting ready for its Millennium coverage. Well, there have been glitches, Peter, with some of the uh, new things that have been built in London for the Millennium. And, of course, the British are a querulous lot, and so they have been arguing about exactly what's going to be going on here. But, you know, I think, Peter, as this party that the world is throwing for itself on this... Uh, dawn of the new century and the new millennium goes on, many cities will say, we have the biggest or we have the grandest or we have the gaudiest uh, celebration. And London can certainly make its claim because its New Year's celebration will be over such a wide area. Peter, up and down four miles of the Thames, they're going to be celebrating with a giant fireworks show that I'll tell you about. But of course, this is also probably the most international city of the world. And so there is such great concern that perhaps a party crasher will commit some untoward act and security is very tight as you look around the city this morning traffic has been shut down almost everywhere indeed the city of london will be pretty much restricted to pedestrian traffic through this uh, uh new year's eve now when i mentioned the big celebration that will go on up and down the thames and you're seeing shots of the beautiful river that bisects the city of london uh, for a four mile stretch peter at midnight after the bells of big ben have struck uh, midnight, the 12 gongs, at a height of 200 feet, they're going to blanket the Thames River for this four-mile stretch with a series of rockets. It, it will be as if the river is on fire. And then they modestly say they're going to have 15 minutes of the largest fireworks show in the history of the world. As I say, the British are always very modest about that. Hmm. But we did, you did mention the glitches in the preparations here in London. Uh, number one, they built at a cost of more than a billion dollars. Uh, they built this Millennium Dome down in Greenwich, um, and nobody's quite sure why they built it. And then uh, that's the Millennium Dome that you're seeing there. Uh, it's, uh, it's reviving the Greenwich area, of course, which is the center of time. But um, inside, it's a, it's a sort of show with lots of exhibits, and there's a stage. But um, Londoners uh, really do scratch their head as to why it was worth spending a billion dollars, over a billion dollars, on this uh, Millennium Dome. And then you got to peek at the London Eye, this, um, well, they don't like to call it a Ferris wheel because the, the modules are enclosed, but this is right on the south bank of the Thames, Peter, and I'm going to be interested to get your opinion of it. Um, Ferris wheel it by dominates. any other name, Charlie. <laughs> well, all right, we'll stick with Ferris wheel. Americans will, will relate to that. But, Peter, it's 50 feet higher uh, than Big Ben. And the only thing I can really equate to it is in 1889, in Paris, of course, they built uh, uh, the Eiffel Tower, and people were so shocked in Paris by that. It was only supposed to be up for a few years, and, um, and of course, it stands still. Uh, this is only supposed to be up for five years here in London, but uh, it is really a rather majestic thing. Now, of course, people are supposed to start riding in it tonight. Well, it doesn't work right, Peter. One of the modules doesn't rotate properly. And so they're not going to be able to open it for three weeks or so. But uh, it is up here. And to some Londoners, it is an eyesore. To some, it is a thing of beauty. I will let you be, uh, be the judge. This is your old city. You give me your verdict. Well, I was going to say to you that I wonder how Mr. Ferris would feel who designed the first wheel for what the Chicago Exposition, because you have a fabulous right. one there. And they've got a whole collection of them up and down the Champs-Élysées in Paris, which we can see at the moment, too. I think there are 12 designed on the Champs-Élysées, and each one of them different. But this is George Ferris's wheel for the Chicago World Fair. And I must tell you, Charlie, as modern as yours looks, 
it does indeed look like George Ferris's wheel in some shape or form. And there's a glimpse of one of them uh, in the distance uh, in Paris as well this morning. Charlie, you said very briefly there that we, you, London would claim being the center of things for being such an interesting place, but also you want to take a quick whack and you claim it because you are the center of time. Sure. Uh, just uh, east of here on the Thames River is Greenwich which is uh, at zero degrees uh, uh, longitude, and uh, it is the center of time. It is where the official measurement of time is taken uh, for the world. Indeed, all of these uh, uh, midnight celebrations are really keyed to the official clocks, which are in Greenwich. Okay. Well, it's great to talk to you, and we will talk to you a lot throughout the day. There's Big Ben. Clearly, I, th I think, surely the most famous clock in the world, and we'll be talking all about clocks and times, the importance of time and the relevance of time. Uh, before the day is over. But let us now go out to New Zealand because there in New Zealand they are about to be the first industrial country to become the center of time. Elizabeth Vargas is in the Pacific for us. Elizabeth, can you give us a handle first on what's happening in New Zealand? Well, they've got a huge celebration planned in Auckland, uh, Peter, with a record amount of fireworks that they're shooting up into the air. Auckland, of course, is, is known as the city of sails. There are more sailboats per capita, so they have a lot of people planning to be out on the water. Um, as well, a lot of fireworks launched from barges. And in fact, uh, from a small island off the coast of, uh, just right off the coast of Auckland, called Rangitoto, which interestingly enough, at the turn of the last millennium, wasn't even there. It was uh, caused by a volcanic eruption 600 years ago. Barges attached to that island will be, of course, launching a lot of those fireworks. Um, Auckland will be, of course, the first major industrialized landmass to celebrate New Year's. We will be celebrating shortly thereafter here at Sydney Harbor, and the party is well underway here as well. Celebrations beginning well before midnight with, uh, again, record-breaking crowds in both uh, New Zealand and Australia. Thanks very much, Elizabeth. One of the people who's with us in New Zealand this morning, along with James Walker, is Susie Aiken, who's a reporter for TVNZ, as they call it. We say Z, but TVNZ, Television New Zealand. Can you hear me, Susie? Yes, I can. Good morning, Peter. Good How morning excited from are you Aotearoa. people there? Well, in the last half hour, I've really felt the uh, energy level and the am ambience around me. The, uh, the boat horns, as you can hear, we've got 68 super yachts in this purpose-built America's Cup Harbour behind me. A concert going on, New Zealanders are out to party, and we are counting down the minutes. We've got three minutes to go, and it's hard not to get completely caught up. It's exciting to be the first major city to see this in. Do you think that's a feeling it's held throughout New Zealand? It's not a very big place. It's not a very big place, but uh, we've uh, got about 3.8 million people, but a very strong voice uh, globally, we hope, and uh, we're really looking forward to this new millennium. But the very positive uh, accent for us is to aim to preserve the planet. So okay, that's, I think, where our mission will be in the next years we're ahead. Lovely to have we're you with us, close. Susie. Let's listen to, to the official you, ceremony itself. For a minute. If the last 2,000 years are worth anything, it's because we can learn from them. Just for a second, what legacy you will give to the future. Look around right now, look at your loved ones, look at the strangers, go on, have a good look at those faces and think, what and how can I affect them in the future? What will my legacy be for them and for those yet to be born, for those yet to come? Okay, I'm getting it through now, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at each other, <laughs> say goodbye and get ready to say hello. We're at Auckland on the North Island of We're New Zealand, the biggest city there, just over a million people, as Susie said. It's coming up, ladies and gentlemen. The largest about Polynesian a city in the world. Here it is. Oh, it's building. <laughs> Here it comes, I can feel it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm checking the watch. Closest big city in the world for the International Dateline. Wildly popular with people who visit it. Indigenous people, the Maoris, there represent a small part of the population, but an enormous part of New Zealand's history. 50 historic seconds culture. to go, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. It's official. 50 seconds. Let's have a look where we are. <laughs> 30 seconds, 30 seconds.
seconds, ladies and gentlemen, and counting. Here we go. 23, 22, 21, 20, and 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 30, 12, 11, 10, and 9. these two islands, these two islands which the Polynesians settled on originally in the South Pacific, biggest city in New Zealand, celebrating its future and its past. Talked to someone there yesterday uh, who I hope we'll talk to before the day is over. In fact, might even try to get him on the phone now, Dennis Dutton, an American who told us uh, yesterday that he had uh, moved to New Zealand from California, and he thought he was never going to be heard of again. And of course, the world in which we now live, the technological world, the internet world, has simply changed all that completely. And he now sits there connected to the rest of the world on his email. Susie Aiken, if you had to describe New Zealanders' attitude towards the 21st century, what would it be? I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? I said if you had to describe New Zealand attitudes towards the 21st century, what would they be? Well, we're into clean and green. We love our country, we love our land. Our Māori, our indigenous people have a very strong link with the land. And I think our attitudes towards the next millennium is to really want to preserve it so that we can uh, have it here for many generations to come. We're very strong in terms of our uh, ban on whaling and our uh, drift net fishing or ban on drift net fishing in the Pacific. The ecological and environment is very important to us. So for all New Zealanders, that's our paramount mission in the next uh, millennium ahead. The celebrations behind me are just going off. It's really very exciting and a wonderful uh, feeling to be in the new millennium. And has all the technology made you feel more part of the world, Susie? Definitely. The internet has uh, brought us closer globally, and that's very important for New Zealand. We're a trading nation, we're a small island nation, and uh, I think we're going to step up firmly into the global network and global economy, and uh, that will continue to grow over the next 10 years. That's the area that New Zealand wants to move into, and the internet, of course, has made that possible for us. So no more jokes about sheep in the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a lot of sheep. There's 3.8 million New Zealanders. I think there's something like 60 million sheep. But hey, we eat a lot of lamb and we export a lot of it too. In fact, uh, we export a lot to the States. So yes, there you I, go. I know you're right. It's, uh, it's our first trade dispute of the 21st century between the United States and New Zealand on lamb, but we'll forget it for tonight. We will indeed, yes. That's between the countries, and our relationship between American citizens and New Zealand has always been a very friendly one, so it's great to be talking to you tonight. Susie, enjoy the fireworks. Happy New Year. Thank you. I might have a few bubbles now. <laughs> <laughs> I should hope so. <laughs> very New Zealand. The 21st century in New Zealand. Our coverage of the millennium continues 1204 in Auckland, New Zealand. 
This is ABC 2000, the celebration of the millennium. Brought to you by Autotrader.com, the biggest, best used car site on the planet. And by Polaroid. See what develops. We need a car. A minivan. Mm, no. An SUV. <gasps> With leather. Blue. Green. Bluish green? Introducing Autotrader.com. Over a million used cars updated daily, making the biggest, best used car site on the planet. Now we need insurance. And a loan. Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. the walk here was something else but when his dream future heavyweight champion of the world collided with his cause my religion means more to me than some fuck he divided a nation this is my destiny and changed the world you ready i told you i was coming now the story of how he became the greatest athlete of our time Look like a butterfly, sting like a bee. an abc original motion picture event this is my history today i am Terrence Howard and the practice is Steve Harris star in Muhammad Ali, King of the World. Monday, January 10th on ABC. The talented Mr. Ripley has been nominated for five Golden Globe Awards, including Best Picture of the Year, Best Actor Matt Damon, Best Supporting Actor Jude Law, and Best Director Anthony Mengele. Time Magazine calls the talented Mr. Ripley sumptuous and intelligent. And Newsweek says it's wonderfully seductive. Four stars. Matt Damon, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jude Law. I know what I'm saying. I know what it's real. The talented Mr. Ripley, rated R, now playing. This week, you have a meeting with some very important people. Your family. For an all-inclusive vacation, call 1-800-CLUB-MED or your travel agent now. Club Med. Renew. Years of technological achievements have made us what we are today. Jeep is the most award-winning brand of 4x4s of this millennium. So we're celebrating the next millennium with the Jeep Year-End Awards event. Featuring a great lease on the legendary and powerful Grand Cherokee Laredo. Get one now for zero down, $379 a month, and $874 due at least signing. So get to the Jeep Year-End Awards event and see where a little recognition can take you. Check out this $379 lease at your Jeep dealer today. celebration of the millennia. This is ABC 2000. With Peter Jennings at ABC 2000 headquarters in Times Square, Barbara Walters in Paris, Diane Sawyer in New York, Charles Gibson in London, Cokie Roberts in Rome, Elizabeth Vargas in Sydney, Connie Chung in Las Vegas, Deborah Roberts in Orlando, Jack Ford in Times Square, Carol Simpson in Chicago, and Sam Donaldson at the Y2K Command Center in Washington. 
with our correspondents spanning the globe in Shanghai, Bombay, Bethlehem, Moscow, Havana, Rio de Janeiro, and across the U.S., reports from Miami, New Orleans, Tucson, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and in New York, Dick Clark counting down to the new year in Times Square. Special Millennium performances by Billy Joel, Elton John, Enrique Iglesias, Faith Hill, In Sync, Fish, The Bee Gees, Aerosmith, Blondie, Bonnie Raitt, Neil Diamond, Harry Connick Jr., Kenny G, Ray Charles, The Eagles, Barry Manilow, David Blaine, and Barbara Streisand. Now, from ABC 2000 headquarters at Times Square in New York, Peter Jennings. Well, there's no doubt we're going to see a lot of fireworks today. The most spectacular we've seen before in Auckland, New Zealand, on the North Island, where they have just entered the 21st century in the most spectacular fashion. A country located about 1,200 miles to the southeast of Australia the most physically isolated of the advanced industrialized countries in the world, but totally connected to the rest of the world today by this celebration of the 21st century and all of the people in Auckland and many of the people in Wellington, the capital, turning out as well. Welcome again to our millennium coverage as we make our way across the world. Just a couple of news items, uh, a little after six o'clock Eastern time. Uh, the Russian President Boris Yeltsin surprised everybody this morning by resigning as president. He has chosen as his successor Vladimir Putin, uh, going to be the acting president now. In fact, a Russian news agency reports that Mr. Yeltsin has already handed over the so-called nuclear briefcase uh, to Mr. Putin. Uh, Mr. Yeltsin, who's 68, as you know, has been in poor health for this year. And earlier today, I think he said something. It was uh, Russia should enter the sec next century with new faces, though he is going to travel. We said earlier that Mr. Putin would go in his place to Bethlehem in a couple of weeks' time. But in fact, Mr. Yeltsin himself is going to go through there. And the other, the good news of this morning, the particularly good news for people who have watched the hostage situation for several days, India has now agreed uh, that it will come to an end and they will turn over three prisoners having to do with Kashmiri independence. We'll talk about Kashmir's independence later in the day in exchange for those 155 hostages who've had six days of horrendous conditions on board the plane, most of them on an airport in southern Afghanistan. Uh, and the Indians will give up these three prisoners in return for the 55 uh, people who have been on the plane. Now, we've touched our first industrial country of the world, and, and whether or not you're easy about it or slightly hyped about it or slightly nervous about it, uh, one of the big stories about the beginning of the new century is indeed the Y2K millennium bug. The world has been familiar with it for more than a year, and much of the world, though not all of the world, as you're going to hear, um, has worked vigorously to make sure it did not disrupt the technology of life with which we are all now so familiar. So let's go first to New Zealand, to Wellington, New Zealand, on the southern part of the North Island, to ABC's Jimmy Walker, who was there just outside the New Zealand Parliament at a place called the National Incident Monitoring Centre, looking to see what, if any, Y2K problems, James, there are at this time of day. Peter, first, I've got to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Second, That's right. You're the first among us. And second, let there be light, and there is light behind us. <laughs> the electricity, at least here uh, in Wellington, we've had no reports about any problems anywhere else in the country, is, is A-OK. -okay. Now, we were told that the analog um, cell phone service is overloaded, uh, but that happens, as we all know, uh, on Mother's Day and on Easter and Christmas and everybody was asked please not to pick up those phones all at once at 1201. They did. And they did and and right now it's overloaded. Um, I can also show this to you. This is a receipt from the National Bank here in Wellington. An a this is an ATM re uh, receipt for, let me think, it's dated 1100 and the time on it is um, three seconds into the new year. Mm. Peter? Well, Jimmy, you were always one for collecting souvenirs, so I trust you'll bring that home with you. And, and, and a happy new year to you. But, but tell it, New Zealand is important uh, to a lot of companies in the United States who are watching you carefully. Why are they watching well, New Zealand? Well, there are about, yeah, there are about um, 
Well, there are dozens of companies. There's EDS and United Airlines and FedEx and Merrill Lynch and Citibank, uh, Hewlett Packard, all have offices here. Um, because they've got offices here, they are tied uh, through common computers to the United States. And of course, they're very concerned that a glitch that could pop up here uh, could translate because everybody's exchanging data, for instance, uh, back to the United States. Now, by paying close attention here, they could have an 18, 16, 15 hour lead um, should a problem develop. The big problem with this bug is to to isolate it, to identify it, to try and to try and stop it. And as I mentioned to you uh, a little bit earlier, it's really tough because you can test and test and test mm. and still that bug can be there. For instance, if you test a com computer code and you then change the function for some reason, change the, perf change the, uh, the performance, uh, you can introduce the, the, uh, the bug all over again. Mm. Jimmy, let me ask you this. Uh, New Zealand, as I said, has taken this pretty seriously, but there are parts of Asia which are not as K2Y2K compliant as New Zealand is, one of, one of which is China. Are they really worried in China? Yes, they are worried in China, and they've got a couple of uh, reasons. One, they did, China started late. Also, there is a problem there involving uh, pirated software. Uh, there's a lot of pirated software there and in Russia, and you can't very easily uh, expect uh, Bill Gates or Microsoft to be very happy when they get a letter in the mail saying, will you please send us an upgrade when they have no receipt for, for the original one. Let me just add very quickly that in Southeast Asia, um, Indonesia and the Philippines last year uh, faced a very severe uh, currency crisis, and that diverted their attention from Y2K, so everybody's going to have a real eye on Indonesia and Philippines and Taiwan to see how they fare. Okay, Jimmy, thanks very much. We'll be coming back to you on several occasions. It's now uh, 8.16 in the evening in Tokyo, 7.16 in Hong Kong, 6.16 in the evening, New Year's Eve evening in Bangkok. And so those problems which are anticipated throughout Asia uh, are still somewhere down the line, but we will watch them very carefully as the day goes on. And when we come back, we'll go to Washington and talk to Sam Donaldson, who is at Y2K headquarters in Washington. Everybody in the government who's involved with that is working today as well. Right back. ABC 2000, the celebration of the millennium, live from around the world, will continue in just a moment. I don't want to run a marathon. I don't want to go skydiving. I don't want to feel like a kid again. Though, not feeling ancient would be nice. All I really want is to be able to climb the stairs and give Michael a bath. Viox is here, a prescription medicine for the most common type of arthritis pain, osteoarthritis. One little pill, taken just once a day, can provide 24-hour relief. In rare cases, serious stomach problems such as bleeding can occur without warning. People with allergic reactions such as asthma to aspirin or other arthritis medicines should not take Viox. Tell your doctor if you have liver or kidney problems. For more information, ask your doctor or pharmacist about once daily Viox for the relief of osteoarthritis pain. And you may be able to plan your day around your life instead of your pain. Viox for everyday victories. The GMC Convoy 2000 is here. Trucks with capabilities that will change the way you look at the road. Professional grade pickups, SUVs, and family vans designed better than they need to be. Like the 2000 GMC CRX Extended Cab with the most powerful standard V8 in its class. Get up to $1,587 average finance savings with 3.9% APR on select 2000 Sierra models. GMC, do one thing, do it well. It's a freedom, adventure, uh, it puts me at one with the natural elements, liberating, allows me to clear my head. One of the few things I can do whereby I actually don't hear music in my head. Um, brings me closer to God, uh, allows me to, to bask in the, the wonder of God. Being at the top of a mountain is one of the most incredibly beautiful experiences I've ever had. <laughs>
king. Should have used Energizer. They keep going and going and going and going. Next week on Good Morning America, a Y2K reality check. How do we make out? Plus, new year, new resolutions, topping the list, getting fit. We'll show you what works. Plus, supermodel, supermom, Cindy Crawford looks back at baby's first year. And kick off 2000 with Britney Spears on Good Morning America next week. ABC 2000 continues live from around the world. Once again, Peter Jennings. Well, we talked to you a minute about, we're talking about Y2K problems we left. It's only 12 o'clock in the afternoon at Vatican City. It's a little after uh, 1.30 in, in Bethlehem. And oh, it is not very nice in Paris where the time is about 20 minutes after 12. That's, there's the Eiffel Tower with that the countdown on the Eiffel Tower. They have a spectacular evening planned for today, but they have been really hammered by weather in, in the last couple of days. So in the immediate sense, their last uh, concern is the Y2K problems. And we saw uh, Sydney, Australia as well, too. They've had a few scuffles there, which we'll get to. And just one piece of news I just read on, uh, on Dawn, one of the Pakistani papers, uh, which says that, uh, in fact, the militant prisoners are on their way or have already left from India to go to, uh, to Afghanistan to be concerned, uh, to be exchanged with the passengers on board there. Now, very briefly, I want to introduce Sam Donaldson, who's at our Y2 headquarters in Washington. Sam, just, just give us a quick uptake in about 15 seconds, if you would, for a moment, what you're going to tell us when you come back. Well, Peter, the in information comes here to the YK2 uh, Information Gathering Headquarters in Washington. Government and business people are here to monitor it from around the world. They're looking at countries that say, we're not ready. Mm -hmm. Russia, for instance. 70% of their defense computers are not ready, not very settling. And, of course, countries that say they are ready Thanks, are keeping Sam. their fingers crossed. Thank you, Sam. We'll be back to you very shortly after our local news in many cities. Stay tuned with ABC. Announcing the Nissan Year End Countdown event. For 14 days, just 336 hours, Nissan is offering some of the best deals of the year. Now get $500 in addition to existing incentives when you purchase or lease the new 2000 Altima, Quest, Sentra, Frontier, even Pathfinder. That's a total of $2,500 or more in savings. So what are you waiting for? You've just let another 30 seconds go by. This $2,500 or more in savings ends January 3rd. Is it laboratory tested for safety? No, but it's cheaper. How about some metabolite that? Does it have the same proprietary herbal blend as metabolite 356? No, but it's got all the same herbs. I don't think so. Well, what about a watch? You want to buy a watch? Don't be fooled by imitators. Metabolite is number one for a reason. Laboratory tested for safety and clinically shown to be effective for weight loss. Only available through metabolite retailers and distributors. Call for the location nearest you. Agree. Any given Sunday is a speeding freight train of nonstop action. Four stars. Oliver Stone's most entertaining movie in years. Any given Sunday, an Oliver Stone film. Rated R. Now playing. 
Hey. This is for those ready to hit the road. Hit the road. This is for a tough world. Tough world. This is for those looking for a solid experience. This, this is excitement. Well built. This is for right now. Right now. Hit the road for Pontiac driving excitement and lease a Grand Am SE for as low as $209 a month for 36 months. Call for important lease details. This is for me. For me. For me. Hit the road for Pontiac driving excitement. This is for me. Wake up to a brand new century with a special New Year's Day edition of Eyewitness News this morning. See what happened at the stroke of midnight, what's working and what's not in the wake of Y2K. We'll get you through it first thing New Year's Day on Eyewitness News this morning. Tomorrow morning at 6, right here on ABC7. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC7 Eyewitness News. 625 in the tri-state area, but in some parts of the world, it is already the year 2000. We take you live to Times Square, where people are already gathering. We are just 17 and a half hours away from that milestone here in New York. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for starting the last day of this century mm -hmm. with us, December 31st, New Year's Eve. I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Ushery. And of course, here locally, we're keeping an eye on things for you as we head into the year 2000. And for the past several days now, officials in New Jersey, Connecticut, and New York have been promising the tri-state area is prepared for Y2K. And we've heard the same from utility companies, hospitals, and financial institutions. Well, the first industrialized nation to hit 2000 has now done so. Done so and so far, no significant problems have been reported in New Zealand. That is a good sign, but here it is wait and see. And as you may know, the crossroads of the world has been turned into a frozen zone. And if you are heading to Times Square tonight, you should know that you could be subjected to random weapon searches. Right now, the area is virtually shut down as police try to keep things safe for the celebration tonight. Broadway and 7th Avenues from 42nd to 47th Streets are already closed, and this evening, that frozen zone will expand. The Times Square celebration is getting underway right now, and Sandra Bookman's in the middle of it all. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning, David. Indeed, it is. You know, New York has promised a party to end all parties, and the revelers have started to arrive. Now, to my right here is the stage where a lot of the official activities are going to take place today. In fact, in just a few minutes, the first performers will take the stage, 6.30 in, 6.30 to help uh, bring in the new year where it comes in in one of the first places, the South Pacific. The balloons are up. Again, I said the party goers are already starting to arrive. These celebrations are going to go on throughout the day. Official plan celebrations, music and dancing. So if you're headed to Times Square, the best way to get here, the bus or the subway. And the city says, don't bring alcohol. We're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Sandra, thank you. Let's get more on traffic right now. I'll head over to Metro Traffic and Eric Rath. Eric? Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes, indeed, as Sandra just said, Nancy, there's no way do you want to try to drive into Times Square. Stick with mass transit. That's the only way to get in there. And here's another problem we're going to have. Look out on the roadways. There's not a lot of traffic out there right now, but as you can see, the roadways are very, very slick. In fact, we even have a little bit of snow coming down in the tri-state area. That was a look at LaGuardia. Here's a look at the New Jersey Turnpike. As you can see, traffic pretty light as you make your way into the Hudson River crossings. But the big problem, again, is moisture roadways are very very slick please if you're heading out please take it easy now street cleaning rules have been suspended but that means you still have to feed the meters and again do not even think about parking around Times Square use mass transit I'm Eric Rath Metro traffic for eyewitness news thank you very much yep. Eric all right Eric mentioned those slick roads let's check the New Year's Eve forecast and today we'll see these morning clouds and these stray sprinkles but they should be moving on soon the sunshine should be out this afternoon the high will get up to around 44 tonight should be clear for the big party. The low will get down to about 36 in the city, and it'll be 20s in the suburbs. And we'll, of course, have more local New Year's Eve coverage in 15 minutes. But right now, we send you back to more ABC 2000 coverage right after the break. And don't forget, the Millennium Lottery happens today, so you may want to run out and get your tickets. The drawing is live right here on ABC at 627 p.m. tonight. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update, brought to you by Toyota, taking you into the new millennium. I'm too sexy. I'm too sexy. I'm too sexy for the drive through And I'm too sexy for my car seat. Too sexy for the groceries. Too sexy for the 
dry cleaning. Introducing the newly updated Camry. So stylish it could go to your head. I'm too sexy for the slow lane. Too sexy for the neighbors. Too sexy for the car wash. Mm, too sexy. The best taste for me is Pepsi when I'm cruising down the streets of the NYC. Me and my boy just shooting the breeze. On the streets of LA, we sipping a Pepsi. Hey, to the effervescent joy, they only call it for me. The joy of flavor. The joy of fun. The joy of vocal. All on your tongue. The, the joy of joy. <laughs> Y'all need a lift? Joy Cola, yeah. Cola, Pepsi Cola. But what about a ride, yo? ABC 2000 continues live from around the world. Once again from Times Square in New York, Peter Jennings. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. We're going to sit here for a few minutes and we're going to watch the Pacific because the first, the 21st century has already arrived in parts of the Pacific. So let's go first to Perth in Australia, where they are playing down the sun. Famous lifeguards of every age on an Australian beach. Perth in Western Australia, one of the five time zones in that country. The West Australian Symphony Orchestra. Sydney, Australia, it's a great modern city in New South Wales, where Elizabeth Vargas is sitting with us watching these extraordinary dancers on the outside walls of the Sydney Opera House. Peter, it is extraordinary. We have six dancers on top of the Opera House, in addition to a violinist on the very top. And just to give you a little perspective, the sails, the very top of those sails of the Opera House are 220 feet high. This is not for the faint of heart. I'm having a little vertigo just looking up at these guys. They are, of course, harnessed in, but this is quite an event. And in the distance, I don't know if you can see this, Peter, from your perspective. Oh, we just lost the shot. But we also have in the harbor over my shoulder, just behind the Opera House, a parade of marine sails. You can see it right there in the corner of your screen. Each one signifies uh, different creatures from Sydney's harbor, like a sea dragon, a bottlenose dolphin banner fish and sea horses. So it's it's quite a colorful celebration already underway. All of it happening in one of the most important ports in the South Pacific, Sydney, the capital of New South Wales, the largest city in Australia. Let's listen. It is indeed. Although, Peter, we should tell you that um, already it's, it's not midnight yet, but we've already had a little bit of it. The celebration has been marred slightly by some scuffles that have erupted in the crowd. We have a record crowd of more than one million people have been gathered here, many of them since last night. And there was a bit of controversy because they have divided the harbor off uh, using barricades, announced they would do that a few days ago. That was a bit controversial, and sure enough, some folks a little by a while ago began to push and storm through some of those barricades. Police came in and made some arrests. We uh, don't think there have been any injuries of any sort, but there were some scuffles and police did have to take some action. Well, this is quite an extraordinary city. It was not always thus. Australia, a penal colony for the no. first Western settlers. And, and here, the great Sydney Harbour Bridge, uh, which people climb on on weekends, rather like rock climbers in other parts uh, of the world. 
They do. It's one of the only bridges, Peter, where they can do that. The nickname for the bridge is the coat hanger, incidentally, because there's so much steel involved in it. It is, in fact, made of 53,000 tons of steel. It takes, get this, 10 years and 8,000 gallons to repaint it. Right there, you're seeing right now some of those marine uh, floats that we're talking to you about. They're each one three stories high. There are 18 of them in total. And they're each sailing from Darling Harbor past Sydney Harbor right now. And Peter, you were mentioning a moment ago about the fact that Sydney and Australia started as a con colony of convicts, British convicts. And Australia is really looking forward to celebrating this new millennium because they feel they're really taking their place on the world stage and overcoming what has been known as something as called a cultural cringe in the last few decades. Um, a lot of Australians felt a little embarrassed uh, in years past about the fact that they were founded as a penal qual uh, colony and they're now looking forward to taking their rightful place on the world stage. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. The Harbour in Sydney, Australia. Our coverage will continue in just a moment. Sooner or later, you're going to quit smoking. So consider this. A quick date this good won't come along for another thousand years. Don't waste it. Quit with Nicoderm CQ. CQ's got the three gradual steps, and hundreds of thousands of smokers have already quit with it. Wasn't one millennium smoking enough? Start the next one with Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. What do you have, folks? A large pepperoni pizza. Can I Pepsi, please? Sure thing, Curly. Thank you. Hey, we both know. I ordered a Pepsi Cola, and now you've insulted me by offering me this. this. I'd like to give you a chance to make a mince. Capiche? Yeah. Here you go. Oh, good eye. Contemptible. It's all serving like buffoon. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I got your report. Thanks so much. Mr. Platton. Hey. He's on vacation. <sighs> ah! <gasps> more and more kids are getting it together. Programs are working to keep kids away from crime, but they need your support. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT and help McGruff take a bite out of crime. ESPN Classic presents a special New Year's Day showing of ESPN Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes. If you missed any of the 50 Greatest Athlete profiles, here's your chance to see the countdown presented in its entirety. An all-day, round-the-clock marathon that no sports fan should miss. Watch ESPN Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes Marathon beginning at 7 a.m. New Year's Day, only on ESPN Classic. The countdown has begun to the dawning of the next millennium. Siemens Furniture celebrates with markdowns in every department and no down payment, no finance charges, and no monthly payments until 2001 or an extra 5% off every piece of furniture you buy. Seaman Furniture's Millennium Celebration. Going on now with special New Year's hours and no payments until 2001. Over the past hundred years, Ford has made automotive history time and time again. And for the last time this century, we're doing it again. Presenting the 20th Century Clearance from your Tri-State Quality Ford Store. It's the biggest automotive sales event in history. It's also your last chance to get the deals of the century on almost everything in stock. Like Ford Explorer. Now get Explorer for $389 a month with zero down, no first payment, and no security deposit. So come into your Tri-State Quality Ford Store today. Because when Century Clearance ends, it's history. <laughs> Ecampus.com, textbooks and stuff, cheap, save up to 50%, and shipping's always free. Years of technological achievements have made us what we are today. Jeep is the most award-winning brand of 4x4s of this millennium. 
So we're celebrating the next millennium with the Jeep year-end awards event. With a Cherokee Sport lease for zero down, $269 a month and $764 due at signing, plus air and more at no extra charge. Or get a no-charge automatic on select Wranglers. So get to the Jeep year-end awards event and see where a little recognition can take you. Check out this $269 lease at your Jeep dealer today. Live from around the world, ABC 2000. Once again, Peter Jennings. It's a wonderful, dramatic shot of uh, New York Harbor, the Statue of Liberty, at just 20 minutes to 7 Eastern Time. But it's a little bit of a reminder of Australia, too, where we've just gone uh, across five time zones in a couple of minutes because, as uh, Elizabeth Vargas was saying, Australia was originally a penal colony. It had a very uh, deeply embedded indigenous colony which suffered for many years under the under the whites, the aborigines, but in the last 10 years, maybe the last 20 years, has become much more conscious that it's had to be a part of Asia, and so has become a much more open society in many ways to other cultures from around the world. But now, having gone across those five time zones in Australia, um, in Sydney, Australia, where they're 11 hours away from New Zealand, uh, 11 hours away from England, uh, Greenwich, just south of uh, London, as Charlie was telling us earlier, is ground zero for time on zero meridian. Let's go there now to hear uh, the wonderful singer Annie Lennox um, with the Eurismics, among other things, singing that great hymn, Jerusalem. Annie Lennox not singing quite the song that the uh, International Consortium has told us she was going to sing, but singing nonetheless in Greenwich. And we will hear her later on, I hope, singing the song, singing the hymn, Jerusalem. We'll be right back after this break for your local stations. It's a freedom, adventure. Uh, it puts me at one with the natural elements, liberating, allows me to clear my head, one of the few things I can do whereby I actually don't hear music in my head. Um, brings me closer to God, uh, allows me to, to bask in the, the wonder of God. Being at the top of a mountain is one of the most incredibly beautiful experiences I've ever had. This is my invention. The silverware instrument. C'est les lunettes éclairantes. You could slide them, but they don't slide by themselves. It worked. It worked. Head light. It could change somebody's life. 24 hour sundance. That is the greatest idea I've ever came up in my whole life. Will extra amenities in your life lead to greater happiness? Are 64 crayons in a box better than eight? Is 
there such a thing as too many cable channels? Introducing the all-new, redesigned Avalon, the most luxurious, most refined sedan we've ever created. Hey, Annie Matthews, what's on your plate today? Today's gonna be great, but really busy. 10, maybe 15 cuts. Lunch's here, Annie. I'll probably grab a quick bite when I can. Annie, you're two o'clock's here. And maybe get heartburn. I used to think Tums if I'd already eaten. Not anymore. Now you can take Pepsid AC whenever you need it. Pepsid AC controls heartburn before, during, or even after you eat. Of course I can take you. No matter what's on your plate, today should be heartburn free with Pepsid AC. On the second Sunday. Final answer? Of the new century. I'm going home with a quarter mil. The phenomenon is back. This is the final answer heard all around the world. He's won a million dollars. Who wants to be a millionaire? The original returns Sunday, January 9th on ABC. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Early risers are helping to celebrate the new year around the world as we bring you a beautiful live picture from the party at Times Square. And if you've been watching the ABC 2000 coverage, you know the 21st century already started in some parts of the world. Not here yet, though. No. I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Ushery. The party has started. We're keeping an eye on things for you. So far, no big problems to report. And as Nancy mentioned, the New Year's already arrived in New Zealand. But the party really just getting started in Times Square. We take you back live to the crossroads of the world, which have been turned into a frozen zone. Early revelers already there to catch the official party, which started at 6.30 this morning. Meantime, downtown city officials are ready in case of trouble. Celeste Ford is live at OEM headquarters with more details on that. Celeste? Nancy, officially, this is called the Emergency Operations Center. It's nicknamed the Bunker, and it amounts to a very sophisticated command post. Unfortunately, you can't see it in this live picture because officials decided to lower the screens that cover the two picture windows yesterday. No explanation was offered, but reporters here speculate that they grew tired of the media watching their every move. Earlier this year, during Hurricane Floyd, we saw the bunker in action. It's staffed with dozens of officials, someone from each city agency. They're monitoring everything from the subways to the power supply. New York City has spent three years and millions of dollars preparing for Y2K, and we're assured the city is ready for just about any emergency. On Long Island, Nassau County is also bracing for the start of the new millennium. The County Medical Center and the Long Island Power Authority have set up command centers to head off problems there. And the Office of Emergency Management says its 911 system is ready for Y2K. In New Jersey, emergency management officials say it's all systems go at their command center in Newark. The center will coordinate the response to any Y2K breakdowns or terrorist threats. New Jersey Transit will stop all trains several minutes before midnight to check its computer systems, and Newark Airport will check its crash and rescue equipment at midnight. And that's the latest from the World Trade Center, the site of the Emergency Operations Center, reporting live, Celeste Ford, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Celeste. And we want you to know what's moving and what isn't in terms of the commute, so we'll check in with Eric Rath over at Metro Traffic. Eric? Hey, we got a few folks shuffling around out there, David. Let's go outside and take a look at the FDR Drive. Traffic actually moving very well. Traffic pretty light, although a few folks are coming out. And let's also take a look at the inbound Lincoln. We have less than five-minute delays at all the Hudson River crossings. The Whitestone and Throgs Neck Bridge is also very light. And here's a look at LaGuardia traffic pretty light this morning. I'm Eric Rath, Metro Traffic for Eyewitness News. All right, Eric. Now, financial markets will be open today. Here's Rogers reporter David Hafenreffer. David? Nancy, an abbreviated session today. The stock and bond markets will close at 1 o'clock Eastern time. We did have a uh, mixed day yesterday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average losing 31 points. The NASDAQ composite down 4 points. David, Nancy? All, All right. right. Thank you, David. That'll do it for us for now. Don't forget the big Millennium Lottery drawing tonight at 627 live here on ABC 7. ABC 2000 returns in a moment. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News update brought to you by Toyota, taking you into the new millennium. Will extra amenities in your life lead to greater happiness? 
Are 64 crayons in a box better than eight? Is there such a thing as too many cable channels? Introducing the all-new, redesigned Avalon, the most luxurious, most refined sedan we've ever created. Want to share my joy? <laughs> joy cola, Pepsi cola. Yo, Mary, wait up! The New York Millennium Millions jackpot is now one hundred million dollars. Live from around the world, a celebration of the millennium. This is ABC 2000. With Peter Jennings at ABC 2000 headquarters in Times Square, Barbara Walters in Paris, Diane Sawyer in New York, Charles Gibson in London, Cokie Roberts in Rome, Elizabeth Vargas in Sydney, Connie Chung in Las Vegas, Deborah Roberts in Orlando, Jack Ford in Times Square, Carol Simpson in Chicago, and Sam Donaldson at the Y2K Command Center in Washington. With our correspondents spanning the globe in Shanghai, Bombay, Bethlehem, Moscow, Havana, Rio de Janeiro, and across the U.S., reports from Miami, New Orleans, Tucson, Los Angeles, San Francisco. And in New York, Dick Clark counting down to the new year in Times Square. Special Millennium performances by Billy Joel, Elton John, Enrique Iglesias, Faith Hill, In Sync, Fish, The Bee Gees, Aerosmith, Blondie, Bonnie Raitt, Neil Diamond, Harry Connick Jr., Kenny G, Ray Charles, The Eagles, Barry Manilow, David Blaine, and Barbara Streisand. Now from ABC 2000 headquarters at Times Square in New York, Peter Jennings. Did we forget to mention Annie Lennox, who has just been singing uh, at the Greenwich Observatory, just southeast in London, the home of time. We'll go back there many times throughout the day. There's some terrific things planned all around the world. New Zealand has reported in with the first baby boy of the 21st century. And in case you were just getting up, one of the sensible ones, though, would have been really fun to be here at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Let us show you in, in a thumbnail way what we've already been doing in the Pacific. The first great celebration today was on the islands of Kiribati in the South Pacific. It used to be called the Gilbert Islands, but in Kiribati they came to the beaches where Americans had once given their lives in the defense of freedom to welcome in the 21st century. And they did the same thing in Tonga, sometime called the Friendly Islands, the most Christian nation on earth with the Hallelujah Chorus. And they had a ball in New Zealand. In Auckland and in Wellington as well, whether it was laser beams or church bells, they have welcomed the 21st century there with tremendous enthusiasm. This country of three and a half million people, the first industrialized nation in the world to celebrate the beginning of the 21st century. We've checked in there with Jimmy Walker to see if there are any Y2K problems. There do not appear to be any so far, but bear in mind it will take days and weeks and in some cases months to see whether or not there are Y2K millennium bug problems somewhere in the system. We are here, of course, in Times Square, where we shall be for the next <clears throat> very long time. Out there in the square is Jack Ford, because they're just about to put up the ball, which will drop at midnight Times Square, and Jack Ford, that is part of your territory. Peter, you mentioned that they're about to put the ball up, uh, to get it up there before it comes down again a minute before midnight. It's a little bit loud out here now. You can probably hear this if you look out your window over there. You can see where we are on this platform. Uh, the, the ceremonies, the events, uh, the performances, if you would, have 
just begun at about 6.30 Eastern time. What we're hearing now and what is making it difficult in terms of our sound is a virtual orchestra that's going to be performing throughout the course of the day. All of this is done by computers, not surprising in this technological age, especially as we celebrate the passage of the millennium. And the computer orchestra that we're hearing right now is playing what's called Fanfare for the Common Man, something that was put together specifically for the celebration of the passage of the millennium. But as you said, Peter, in just a little while, they're going to hoist that Waterford crystal ball up to the top of the 77-foot shaft. It'll be up there until one minute before midnight tonight when it comes down. A little bit later, we're going to have an opportunity to talk with the gentleman who was the master designer from Waterford Crystal. They were the ones involved in this. I can give you a few statistics on this now. However, before we get to that, it weighs about 1,000 pounds, actually 1,070 pounds to be precise. It is six feet in diameter. It has on it about 600 light bulbs, 168 of them there in the exterior, 432 are on the interior. And it has 504 Waterford crystal triangles. And these are all cut in what's called the style of the Star of Hope. It was designed specifically for the Millennium Crystal Ball here. I should mention also there are 90 rotating pyramid mirrors that are going to assist in the reflection of the ball. Now, it's all designed to come down mechanically, as we said, work its way down a minute before Jack. midnight. If it doesn't work, then it's going to be old-fashioned muscle. We're told that there's a crew standing by ready to lower it on, essentially, on chains if the mechanical device isn't working. So, Peter, in a little while, the ball will be up there. The folks are starting to gather downstairs here, and they're looking forward to the first glimpse of that Millennium Crystal Ball. Jack, let me interrupt you because we're seeing something quite amazing here. This literally is a virtual orchestra being conducted in a virtual way electronically with laser beams. Watch the conductor. Toby of Baltimore's Peabody Institute is using two light-emitting wands which have infrared sensors and he's pointing them in the direction and speed and with the nuance that he wants them to have and as they move through space newly invented software reads the information and triggers a whole range of orchestral sound. There it goes, this magnificent Waterford crystal ball. They've pulled the switch. They've lighted it up. If you look high above the old New York Times building at the southern end, right at 43rd Street, 42nd Street, and Times Square, this crystal ball, which has been synonymous with this place since 1906, makes its way into an early sky.
question the highest tech ball they've ever had. An elaborate hardware and software system descending into this square, which is in itself all about electronic hardware now selling products all over the world. celebration there. We had a brief report that uh, there had been a power outage in, uh, in Auckland and in Wellington and New Zealand, but we're glad to hear that they have power back. from the days in which they dropped an iron ball every day to mark the time. The ball has a tradition, no matter, no matter where it occurs, it's put up so people know that it is a certain time. It has its original traditions at sea. The Navy picked it up in the United States as well, and now it becomes uh, synonymous, not just in New York's Times Square, but uh, in many other cities around the world where they drop something. Gonna be a plum, I believe, in Atlanta, or no, it's not gonna be a peach in Atlanta. How could it be anything but a peach in Atlanta? On Peachtree Street. But for now, there you see the ball which will come down 12 hours from now in New York Times Square. Lots of things to contend with today. Y2K to crowds, uh, to the weather in some places, but one thing uh, that everybody will be thrilled to contend with, and that is tradition. A little later on, we'll talk about this quite extraordinary square where the New York Times first made its home almost a century ago, or a century ago, actually, uh, which time a lot of people in this city thought they were mad, and now New Yorkers will tell you that it is the absolute center of the universe. And certainly anybody who comes to this city from anywhere else in the world wants to be at least for a moment or two in Times Square. But this is a day for the universe. And so why not, as we begin our day, as we begin the time where Good Morning America normally is seen, Charlie Gibson is in London, Diane Sawyer will be here a little later to, uh, to help us celebrate this day. But as we begin this day in the traditional broadcast time, why not an overture for the globe?
Well, that's our overture to the world. We'll give you a chance to see it um, a couple of more times today because it's a very beautifully prepared thing, which really does give you a sense of what is happening in all the corners of the globe today. We've begun to celebrate the 21st century in the Pacific. The sun is coming up in, in Florida. Another horrible day in paradise, as they often say down here, and the ball has gone up in New York's Times Square. And we have a lot of very valuable colleagues waiting at their posts around the world, so we're just going to move around the world a little bit, bit now and see what they have on offer. First to London, ABC's Charlie Gibson. Charlie. Well, Peter, you saw the bonging of uh, Big Ben, the bells of Big Ben bonging the 12 uh, noon time, and that's the last time, at least with the first digit of one, uh, that we will hear that. And actually, a fair group of uh, people had gathered on uh, Westminster Bridge in order to celebrate that modest occasion and people are beginning to gather along the banks of the Thames. We're now 12 hours away uh, from the celebration here when the entire Thames River will be lit on fire and as I said the British modestly say they're going to have the biggest firework show in the history of the world. What else is cooking Charlie? Well, Peter, one of the things that, uh, that I think is worthy of mention is the fact that uh, millions of people will be singing All Lang Syne when the midnight hour comes. And while that is a very American uh, tradition, it is something that began here, as so many traditions do, in Great Britain. It feels as if it's always been there. No matter what the year, no matter where the festivities, there is that song. But for the song's origins, you must go to the green hills of western Scotland. That is the home of the poet, Robert Burns, who was the first one to write down the lyrics to an old Scottish folk song more than 200 years ago. And he was gathering old songs, and he knew this song. It had never been actually written down before, and Burns had got the melody from an old man he heard singing. He tidied up the words, added some verses of his own, and not content with the song's original melody, he found one more to his liking. Another well-known Scottish tune of the time. Burns' Auld Lang Syne grew in popularity, particularly after his death in 1796, and soon became the traditional Scottish song of parting. Auld Lang Syne, which literally translated means for old time's sake, uh, and we're going to gather again, meet up for Auld Lang Syne, old time's sake. As Scots emigrated around the world in the last century, they took the song with them to places like Canada. There it was heard by the man who would make it a part of New Year's Eve. And now, here is Mr. New Year's Eve himself, Guy Lombardo. From the stage of the grill room at New York's Roosevelt Hotel, Lombardo and his Royal Canadians made All Lang Syne a New Year's Eve standard. They played it there for the first time in 1929 and continued for decades afterwards, making it their signature song. A tradition was born. Happy New Year, everybody. A very happy New Year. So, Peter, when the ball drops tonight and you have a little glass of the bubbly and you kiss your favorite person, a little thanks to Bobby Burns up in Scotland for bringing us all Lang Syne. Thanks very much, Charlie. Look forward to talking to you many times throughout the day. 39 opportunities there are to celebrate the New Year's. If you like the 39 different time zones in the world, we're going to cross a lot of them in a minute. We'll go to Barbara Walters. But first, just to tell you some of the news that has been made today. The big surprise when we all got underway this morning was that Boris Yeltsin uh, in Moscow announced that he was going to resign as president and turn over the yeah. reins to his acting president, Vladimir Putin. President Clinton has already... Uh, hailed Mr. Yeltsin's leadership and says that he looks forward to working with Mr. Putin. The so-called nuclear codes have been turned over by Mr. Yeltsin to Mr. Putin, who not very long ago, um, probably in his wildest dreams, could never have expected he was likely to be the next president of Russia. In Kandahar, in Afghanistan, five hijackers have walked off that airplane, uh, which means that that siege there is effectively over. They made a deal with the Indian government uh, three Muslim militants, those who had been fighting for the independence of Kashmir, where there's a very large Indian occupying force, uh, were freed from Indian custody, and the hijackers simply walked off, got into a car, and have disappeared. We have no idea where they have gone, and we have no idea as yet 
of the condition of the people on board the plane. Uh, here in the United States, the FBI does believe that it has evidence now that Ahmed Rassam, the man who was arrested earlier this month as he came across the border from Canada uh, at Washington State, uh, does have connections to a larger plot in the United States. Um, but there have been no definitive indications what they're precisely talking about. Um, almost everywhere you look in the country today, you get the sense that every police force has been on the job, turned over everybody they know involved with anything um, bad. And certainly outside this window here in New York Times Square, there's a very large uh, police force in evidence, and everybody is very relaxed. Let us now go to Paris, where ABC's Barbara Walters is sitting just across the Seine from the Eiffel Tower. Barbara. Indeed we are, Peter, and when we heard Charlie a few moments ago talking about that bubbly you're going to be drinking at midnight, just remember that bubbly, that champagne, comes here from France. They've had a very bad few days with very serious storms here and 83 people in this country who've been killed, but today it is a day of celebration, especially where we are at the Eiffel Tower. For a thousand days now, they have been announcing the days. Now they are announcing the hours, and eventually, three minutes before midnight, it will be the minutes and then the seconds. You can see the base of the Eiffel Tower where there are going to be enormous fireworks going up a thousand feet to the top of the Eiffel Tower. There you see it says J for Jour, which had been the day. It's 11 hours now until midnight. And the Eiffel Tower, the top of it, is still uh, shrouded in fog. It's been uh, quite rainy. Today is the first day that it isn't raining. People are already lined up, Peter, even though it's 11 hours away. And it's supposed to be the most glittering. 20,000 bulbs. It's taken mountain climbers uh, three days, or three months, rather, to put those bulbs on. Now, what you're looking at is one of the Ferris wheels on the Champs-Elysees where they have 12 Ferris wheels just for today, each one with a different theme from cows and monkeys to acrobats and an internet. There you see the largest one, that's there uh, each year, but the other 12, or the other 11, this makes the 12, are only made for tonight and they won't start going until midnight. So it, it's a festive time here, not jammed, Peter, sort of like New York, a lot of people are staying home. The Prime Minister canceled his vacation to come here because of the storm. And it's, it's a feeling of festivity, but I, I can't tell you that it's really ecstatic. The streets are filled, but not jammed. And uh, for the first time, the weather seems to be clear. Now, that's really nice to hear. And later in the day, we want to talk a lot to you, Barbara, because uh, as Barbara knows as well as anybody uh, on this staff, the French have had an enormous amount to offer, um, offer the world. I, I'm curious about one thing, Barbara. Are there many Americans in Paris that you've run in today? That's always been a place where Americans have loved to go. There are Americans. We saw Americans at our hotel. There are a lot of Japanese. There are Germans. But it isn't jammed. The hotels are not totally filled. They're fine and they're, you know, they're doing okay. But there, it, it hasn't been the kind of enormous crowds that some people had expected. The restaurants are filled. Ah, there's going to be a big ball at Versailles for $2,400. You can go to Versailles where there will be 2,500 people. Weather and notwithstanding. And foie gras. I'm sorry, what did you Weather say? notwithstanding. Versailles is still open after Weather that terrible storm. Weather notwithstanding, yeah. They have tents that they've made outside of Versailles. The people will not be allowed to go into the park, as you just said, uh, Peter, because of the storms. They've had 10,000 trees destroyed in the park in the, uh, at Versailles, some of them three or 400 years old. But there will be this public uh, dansant, if people want to spend that kind of money. And then there's a private dance as well, given by a very wealthy Greek named Goulandris, and that's by invitation only. So, you know, there is a spectacular, there is, there is the kind of festivity that you expect with gorgeous clothes. People will be wearing costumes and wigs of the of the 18th century, so it'll be pretty, you know, pretty glamorous. And here, the main event is indeed the Eiffel Tower with the countdown and the fireworks and the 20,000 bulbs and the Ferris wheels and ooh la la, as uh, right, we'll, we say here. We'll, we'll make you work on a lot of other things between now and then, Barbara. Thanks so much. A lot of people here looking quite envious at the thought of being in Paris. I think it must be the parties. Um, at any rate, uh, I don't know if anybody else noticed the bus going by there. That's the Schmetterling bus. That's the German word for butterflies. That terrible joke about which 
language has the most beautiful words, butterfly, Schmetterling in German. But it's a sort of a reminder today, in Europe particularly, how much that continent is coming together in a variety of ways, and in how many different ways French and English still continue to fight each other, uh, with English around the world, in large measure, thanks to the Internet, thanks to the technologies which make the kind of television coverage possible today, uh, simply becoming increasingly the language of the 21st century. Want to go to Sam Donaldson, who's at Y2 Hay headquarters in Washington. Sam, first of all, tell us what are they looking for today in very general terms from there? Well, Peter, they're looking for power outages, utility outages, transportation problems, and problems in such things as military installations and power plants, nuclear power plants. You mentioned that very small uh, power outage in New Zealand at a water plant that appears to have been caused by high winds. So they're also having to sift through, well, is this something that Y2K caused or something else? You know, we just turned 7 o'clock, and the first commercial nuclear power plant in the world that might be affected by a Y2K problem has come online. There are 430 in the world, and the ones that we're really looking at are the 21 in the former Soviet Union, built by the former Soviet Union. Now, you see up on your right-hand screen, Bilibino. 7 o'clock, Bilibino came into the millennium. We've had no reports of any problems, although there can always be a delay. But the reason, Peter, they're watching this very carefully, you do remember the name Chernobyl. If, for instance, the power should go down, the electric power that keeps that plant going, and they don't have enough electric power to cool the atomic rods, the core, if you will, after some number of hours, radiation could be released. And Nome, Alaska is only 730 miles downwind from Bilibino. I want to stress again, Peter, we've had no reports of any problems. But as the millennium marches along, those 430 power plants, 103 of them are in the United States, will be kept very carefully scrutinized. Sam, thanks very much. Come back to you many times throughout the day. I want to make a big jump now and go all the way to India because ABC's Lynn Sher is out there for the millennium. Uh, she's in Bombay, or at least most of us know us as Bombay. The Indians now call it Mumbai, um, by the great gate of India. And even though this is not by any Christian standards a millennium celebration there, coming into the 21st century without talking about India would be virtually impossible, right, Lynn? I think that's true, Peter. As you say, Mumbai, the new official name. Uh, this is a city that is a Wall Street, uh, Hollywood rolled into one. Uh, this is teeming with energy. It is pulsing with money. And, of course, this is where they make the movies. This is the most populous city in the nation that has been the fastest growing on our planet. By sheer numbers alone, India is already a superpower. Uh, the question is, can they become a world superpower? That's the challenge they see for the new millennium. What you're going to see tonight is the crowd gathering behind me, as you say, at the gateway of India. Um, they're excited about it. No special celebration plan. In fact, it's a little muted uh, because the former president of the country died this week, and so there's no um, state celebration. Uh, but as somebody said to me here, a senior manager of a computer company the other day, he said, you know, for you folks in America, this is your first millennium. He said, we've had a few already here in India. Mm. Country of a billion people, as we've just been watching. What's that body of water right behind you? That's the Arabian Sea, Peter. And um, even though this we're technically facing east here, Bombay is the city that faces to the west. This has always been the city that's been open to the rest of the world. Uh, and that's why, to a great extent, um, Indians are thinking about their place in the world and what happens to them as we enter the next century. And I want to make, thank you, Lynn, we'll come back to you before long, I promise. I just want to make one very quick check in to give people at home a sense of where we are with Shanghai. ABC's Mark Litke is in Shanghai to us, which in many ways, Mark, you're on the Bund, I know, overlooking the river, but in some parts of Shanghai, it looks like Times Square. I tell you, Peter, it feels like 1.2 billion people have been waiting for you here. You talked about a sense of awe at the beginning of the broadcast. Well, welcome to awe-inspiring Chinese style. Uh, this city, this magnificent city, is truly into the spirit of this uh, event, even though this is not a uh, traditional holiday here. But we can talk about more about that later. Uh, when we talk about Chinese New Year. Good. Thanks, Mark, very much. Nice to see your face and to see the bun behind you and all those people and the lights on. But we'll continue our coverage with you and everybody else in every part of the world when we come back. 
This is ABC 2000, the celebration of the millennium. Brought to you by Johnson & Johnson. Just like you, we care how your kids feel. And by Pepsi, the joy of cola. started writing, winning a Nobel Prize never entered my mind. My first book was a profound commercial failure. But quitting was not an option. I learned persistence in subtle and not so subtle ways from my parents. For years, my mother used her whole paycheck to send me to college. My father convinced me I could do anything as long as I tried. And he was right. So tell your kids to wake up every morning and do their best. Tell them to make the most of each and every day and not to worry about tomorrow until tomorrow. My parents gave me a gift nothing could beat. Long before I was a success, my parents made me feel like I could be one. Just like you, we care about how your kids feel. Select Polaroid cameras and film. Here we go. Save now before December 31st. Here we go. Should have used Energizer. They keep going and going and going. Miss Johnson. Johnson, it's time for your massage, Miss Johnson. Solara, an entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. Cellular One, clear across America. No matter how you look at it. Hey! You think we're gonna toy with you? There are some things that should never change. Oh, for God's sake. Go put an apron on right now. Why? Because your buttocks is exposed. Aren't you glad Blue's back? The season premiere Tuesday, January 11th on ABC. Viewer discretion advised. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Good morning, everyone. There you see it, the biggest sign of the times, the magnificent crystal ball that will drop at the stroke of midnight. It was just raised a short time ago in Times Square. Indeed, fireworks went off as hundreds of people who are already staking out their spots in the crossroads of the world watched in awe as that ball climbed to the top of course, the big moment will be later on as it comes down and brings in a new century. Good morning. I'm David Ushery. And I'm Nancy Liu. We're so glad you're with us on this very special morning. And you may know at the crossroads of the world, we've been celebrating with the world. Exactly. Sandra Bookman has her eye on it. She's right there in the middle of it. Sandra? I, I sure do. You know, just for a few minutes when that ball went up, I didn't mind getting up at uh, 2 a.m. this morning. Just for a few minutes, though. A lot of other people got up this morning. If you can see behind me, the barricades. Uh, police have already moved some of the barricades into the street. In fact, there are some uh, workers from the city have been handing out balloons here trying to help get the party started. Uh, you should have heard the people out here count that ball up. It was a kind of a drop run, if you will, of what's going to happen tonight at midnight. Again, seven to 8,000 New York City police officers out here today. So if you're headed to Times Square, you can expect to be herded sort of into barricaded areas like this. There's a, a whole lot of people about a block down the street from us, and I got a feeling in another hour or so, 
we're going to see a few more people here in Times Square. We're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you very much, Sandra. Well, as Sandra's suggesting, Times Square has really turned into a frozen zone. People going to the big party tonight could be subjected to random weapon searches. Right now, the area is virtually shut down as police try to keep New York celebrations safe. Broadway and 7th Avenues from 42nd to 47th Streets are already closed. And this evening, that frozen zone will expand. That means big traffic changes. Here's Eric Rath at Metro Traffic. Definitely, Nancy. You don't want to be driving into Midtown Manhattan, into Times Square. Definitely stick with the subways and use uh, Metro North, New Jersey Transit, LIRR. They're all running extra trains to help with the celebration, so that's the way to go. Now, I believe we're going to go out to Queens. We've got a problem from our chopper here. We have a shot of the conduit. Now, here's what's going on. This is just coming northbound, right off the Belt Parkway, coming out of JFK. We have this two-car accident. In addition, we have a problem on the southbound Van Wyck, right at Rockaway Boulevard. There's a two-car accident there as well. Now, the problem out there, folks, is we've got a little bit of moisture on the roadway, so the roads are very, very slick. Uh, you got to take it easy. you got to slow down a little bit. In fact, we also have some snow coming down, some wet snow in parts of the tri-state area. So please, if you're heading out, be very, very careful. I'm Eric Rath, Metro Traffic, for Eyewitness News. All right, good advice, Eric. You mentioned those slick roads, and in the forecast, those lingering showers, they should be leaving over the next hour or so. The sun should be out by this afternoon. The high today will be around 44 degrees. Tonight, it will be clear. The low in the city will be about 36 degrees. So all those people standing there, if they're still standing there tonight, it'll be 36 degrees when the new year arrives. Mm -hmm. All right, officials of the United States have been keeping a close eye on the first industrialized nation to hit the 2000 mark. It did so about 90 minutes ago. So far, no major problems are being reported Y2K-wise in New Zealand. There were a few brief power outages, but they have been fixed. And you will want to stay tuned because Australia will welcome the new year in about half an hour. So stay tuned for that. And we'll be back in about 15 minutes with more local news for you. Yep, but for now, more ABC 2000 coverage right after the break. And please don't forget to watch the live Millennium Lottery drawing right here on ABC 7 at 627 tonight. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of cola. Hey, Jeff. Now, listen, I got it right here, buddy. It's icy cold and tasting great. Now, come on, Jeff, you tell me. Is there anybody in this world who deserves this here Pepsi more than you? Hi, Jeff. See you later, Jeff. The joy of I don't know where she came yeah. from. The joy don't worry, Jeff. There's always Daytona. Hello? How is an echo a reflection of you? Center mounted instrument panel, six speaker audio system, funky, two glove compartments, dash pockets, headroom, leg room, room for friends, adjustable head restraints, fold down back seat, lightweight, zippy, zippy. How is an echo a reflection of you? Fun. There's a whole lot more on the inside. Fat cushions, skinny price, high visibility, adjustable head restraints, DVTI engine, funky. ABC 2000 continues live from around the world. Once again, Peter Jennings. Good morning and welcome ba back to the 20th century. Though it's the 21st century already here at Kiribati in the Pacific and in Tonga. Had a great celebration in New Zealand. Here's what our, here's the time zone we are in now and we have all that to go. It's about 11.30 at night in Sydney, Australia. You've seen some of that preparation there already and it is a little after 7.30 in the morning here in New York and we're very pleased to welcome the Mayor of New York, Rudolph Giuliani. Good morning, sir. Morning. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Happy New Year in Happy New Zealand. Happy New Year in New Zealand or in Tonga if you prefer. What time did you get up this morning? Uh, I'm getting confused on time. I think about 5.30 or 5.00. Did you really? And have you been out and around the city yeah, so sure, far? Yeah. Things are normal. Did you have any thought, did you have any pressure to cancel this celebration when things began to go south oh, in Seattle. Some, some pressure, but there really was never any thought of it. I mean, the, the reality is, and you know this celebration, uh, it's been going on since 1906. If we had tried to cancel it, twice as many people would have shown up. So the best thing to do mm -hmm. is to have it and create as much security as you possibly can, consistent with a terrific celebration. Do you think maybe that uh, maybe the, you're a public official, so it's a tough question. Do you think maybe the threat of terrorism is 
been hyped a bit or much, or you just have to take it as it comes? I guess you don't know that until this is all over with, right? And I don't think anybody can ever discount terrorism. I think that uh, the imponderable is always the most difficult thing to deal with in law enforcement or anything else. So which we've got seven, 8,000 police officers. We've got a plan that we've used for four or five years to try to create a peaceful celebration. We had a million people last year, so this isn't like something new to us. I mean, we've, we get a big New Year's Eve celebration every year. And you've got weather in your favor. You want, let's take yeah, a look out hope. the window. <laughs> well, I think it's going to clear up by, by the end of the day. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, down here is probably the, already. <laughs> this is probably the best place. Well, I was a little bit surprised when I came down today. Watch your feet. I was a little bit surprised when I came down today how many people there were already, and I think some of them may come for the morning television shows, but it really is quite astonishing yeah. even now, isn't it? Absolutely. Some of these people told me they're, they're here for the duration. I've, this group right along here, I inter interviewed them myself coming along. Yeah, I actually, they're I they're actually think they're waving at you, so it's politically <laughs> permissible to wave back. Yeah. I can't believe they're going to be there until uh, midnight. At, at midnight, I get, to, I get to drop the ball. A, That's quite exciting. You watch a, it go up this morning. a doctor from uh, Doctor Without Borders. Yes. He practiced it a few days ago. You did practice it a few one, days one ago. One year it was a second late. It was a uh -huh. second late? Uh -huh. That's we unforgettable it, for New York a, City. It was a second late, so this year it's going to be on time. What do you have, what, what, what do you have as, as, as a dream for the 21st century, for, for this city? I think to continue as the capital of the world. A few years ago that was in question. I think now this is the... Uh, the world's premier city in many, many respects, and I want to see that continue. I want do you to see think it become people, permanent. Do you think people in other parts of the United States resent New York City? They used or to. I they think, used to. I hope they resent us less now. I, I, so many people, ha half the people here come from someplace else. About half the people that are going to be at this celebration, maybe even 60%, do not come from New York City. And people seem to like coming to New York City a lot more now. And I hope uh, they feel a sense of hospitality and connection to the rest of America that at different points was lacking, I think. And I think we were a bit surprised to see the city had gone out to the degree it has to put on its own celebration here all yeah, for 24 hours a day. As, as you cover the various uh, changeovers in the world, they'll be having celebrations out here. They've already had three. And what have you got on your, what have you got on your plate for today? Uh, a couple of meetings at the command center. We, we have the whole Y2K command center going, which right. is... Uh, been over there yet this morning? About 200 people. No, I'm going to get there about mm -hmm. 9 o'clock. So far, the turnovers have been terrific. But that's something we spent $340 million on, to make sure that the computers turn over correctly. They had a bit of a blackout in New Zealand this morning, but they seem to come back online uh, pretty we're, quickly. We're trying to monitor what happens in the other parts of the world to see if we can pick up things we didn't anticipate. That, you know, whether you're talking about terrorism, Y2K, or something else, or some crazy person, the real fear that you have is the thing you didn't anticipate. You spend years and years literally planning, and then you think, well, there's, there may be that one thing you mm -hmm. didn't think of. Um, you've got about, uh, you've got about uh, 30 seconds left, I apologize. No politician <laughs> likes to right. hear that. But what's your message for the country? Because the country and part of the world is watching too now. Well, this, is, this has been a, a great century. It's been a, a century in which freedom and democracy and the rule of law are spread throughout that globe mm -hmm. that you're showing there. And uh, let's hope it continues in the next century, I think. Uh, and New York hopefully will be a part of that. Great. Well, you're nice to drop in us this morning. <laughs> I know you have a busy Thank day. You, Peter. Happy Thanks New Year. Very much. Happy New Year to you, sir. Somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somewhere. Rudolph Giuliani, the mayor of New York, will be back in just a minute. ABC 2000 will continue live from around the world in just a moment. Sweetheart. Let me guess. A nice cold Pepsi. I wouldn't want to hear one of those crazy voices of yours, huh? Honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hit it, fellas. GMC Convoy 2000 is here. Trucks with capabilities that will change the way you look at the road. Professional great pickups, SUVs, and family vans designed better than they need to be. Like the 2000 GMC CR Extended Cab with the most powerful standard V8 in its class. Get up to $1,587 average finance savings with 3.9% APR on select 2000 Sierra models. GMC, do one thing, do it well. 
In the new millennium, the wonderful world of Disney continues bringing home great family entertainment every Sunday night. We are gonna knock them dead! Get ready for the new year with a Bugs Life. Tim Allen's wild adventure in Jungle to Jungle. Supermodel Tyra Banks, a living doll in Life Size. Emmy winner Cameron Mannheim in A Story of Courage, Loretta Claiborne. The new classic animated movie, Mulan. And Disney's first original musical for television with Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Drew Carey in Geppetto. You're the best son a father could ever want. The tradition of excellence continues on the wonderful world of Disney, Sunday nights on ABC. <laughs> Announcing the Nissan Year in Countdown event. For 14 days, just 336 hours, Nissan is offering some of the best deals of the year. Now get $500 in addition to existing incentives when you purchase or lease the new 2000 Altima, Quest, Sentra, Frontier, even Pathfinder. That's a total of $2,500 or more in savings. So what are you waiting for? You've just let another 30 seconds go by. This $2,500 or more in savings ends January 3rd. Big news, New York. I like one with everything. You want it all? Yes, sir. I want it all, too. How do you mean? From AT&T. Oh, here we go. I want my local and long distance from one company. Well, it's funny you should say that. Now get local and long distance together with AT&T Local One Rate New York. I want it all on one simple bill. One bill. And how about one monthly rate for my local calls? One rate, one bill, one company. Great. Can you sign me up now? I'm on my lunch break. Call now to get your local and long distance together. Saturday, it's Macy's last one-day sale of the millennium. All jewelry, 30 to 50 percent, plus an extra 15 percent off selections. Sportswear, sweaters, and more for her, 50 percent, plus an extra 10 percent off. All coats and jackets for her, 25 to 50 percent off. Men's sportswear, suits, outerwear, 40 to 50 percent, plus an extra 10 percent off. Mini quilt sets, five patterns, 39.99. Macy's last one-day sale of the millennium. Saturday, shop early, shop late. Ecampus.com. Textbooks and stuff. Cheap. Save up to 50%. And shipping's always free. Over the past hundred years, Ford has made automotive history time and time again. And for the last time this century, we're doing it again. Presenting the 20th Century Clearance from your Tri-State Quality Ford Store. It's the biggest automotive sales event in history. It's also your last chance to get the deals of the century on almost everything in stock, including Ford Focus. Now get low 4.9 financing on the all-new Funda Drive 2000 Ford Focus. So come into your Tri-State Quality Ford Store today, because when Century Clearance ends, it's history. Live from around the world, this is ABC 2000. Once again from Times Square in New York, Peter Jennings. Good morning, welcome back to our Millennium coverage. Uh, we've just been talking to John McCarthy, our Pentagon correspondent, who tells me that the first military bases in the Pacific are in the 21st century, and they have had no Y2K problems. We'll check in with Sam Donaldson before long and James Walker, who's in New Zealand. And by the way, we talked a little bit about the small blackout in New Zealand, YK1. In other words, wind. Uh, it wasn't a Y2K problem at all. Not that we necessarily thought it was, but it turned out some wind caused the devastation there. What have we seen so far? Well, this day began, or the century began, the new century began on the island of Kiribati. The Kiribati Islands in the Pacific, once upon a time, the Gilbert Islands, they danced on the beach. In Auckland, New Zealand, they made all sorts of noise. And this is the quite astonishing scene at the Opera House in Sydney Harbour in Sydney, Australia where it is not quite midnight yet, but they, being Australians, Australians like to celebrate at almost every opportunity, and they're on Sydney Harbour. And then here in Times Square, they put up this new, quite astonishingly looking crystal ball, which will 
come down about 12 and a half, 14 hours from now. But that's what it looks like going up in Times Square in this morning. Our coverage will continue right after your local news. Stay with ABC and celebrate with the world. Still ahead, the Pope in Rome. Festivities from Bombay and the Pyramids. And later, Billy Joel, live from Madison Square Garden. Plus, the latest on Y2K. ABC 2000, 24 incredible hours continues. Something new is here. A whole new way to take care of heartburn. Introducing Pepsid AC gel caps. Just one gel cap controls as much acid as a whole roll of tums. An idea that's very easy to swallow. New Pepsid AC gel caps. Announcing a new way to see near and far. Back you view bifocal contact lens with pupil intelligent design. Call 1-800-531-2121 for a free trial pair or visit your eye care professional. Nice album. CDs, you sound like dad. They're from Play, from Columbia House. Music club, been there. Forgot to send back those cards, got stuff I didn't want. It's different with Play. No reply cards or unwanted CDs. And check out the Play website. Easy ordering, email, hassle level zero. CD samplers with new artists and 12 CDs as soon as you join. Come on, let's go play. Visit ColumbiaHouse.com or AOL keyword CH Music or watch your mail. We need a car. A minivan. Mm, no. An SUV. <gasps> With leather. Blue. Green. Bluish green. Introducing Autotrader.com. Over a million used cars updated daily, making the biggest, best used car site on the planet. Now we need insurance. And a loan. Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. Before I quit smoking, I asked my doctor, is Nicorette safe? And he said, of course Nicorette is safe. Smoking is not. Nicorette has been proven safe and effective in dozens of clinical trials. And Nicorette offers the Committed Quitter Support Program, which my doc said is clinically proven to increase my chances of success by up to 50%. And when he told me that only Nicorette comes in mint, I knew that that was the right choice for me. So I took my doctor's advice, and you know what? It worked. You can do it. Nicorette can help. Next week on Good Morning America, a Y2K reality check. How do we make out? Plus, new year, new resolutions, topping the list, getting fit. We'll show you what works. Plus, supermodel, supermom, Cindy Crawford looks back at baby's first year. And kick off 2000 with Britney Spears on Good Morning America next week. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Forget about waiting until later. It's 745 and Times Square has already come to life this morning. Large crowds already on hand to usher in the new year. The party of the century well underway. We're glad you're with us. I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Usher. We're keeping an eye on things we are in the tri-state area for you. And a trip down to Times Square is very apparent that the new year has arrived early. The party kicked off early, even before the start of sunrise. Sandra Bookman is there live, soaking it all in. Sandra? Nancy, the city's $7 million Millennium Party got off to a fast start this morning. As you said, there are quite a few people that have already showed up here to get their place early. And just about 45 minutes ago, they got a preview of what it's going to be like around midnight here in Times Square. That's when they sent the Millennial Ball up that 77-foot pole to get it in place for the event 
eventual drop tonight. In fact, there was even a countdown as the ball headed up the pole. As I said, people celebrating, just practicing for the real thing later this evening. Now, it's not all party here in New York City. Uh, city officials are keeping a close eye on what happens, Y2K concerns. And with a look at that part of the story, Celeste Ford is standing by live at OEM headquarters. Celeste? Sandra, we're on the 23rd floor of Seven World Trade Center at the Emergency Operations Center, also known as the Bunker. Behind those giant screens, we have a very sophisticated command post. It's staffed with dozens of city officials, someone from each of the key city agencies. In fact, by this evening, the mayor has ordered a commissioner or deputy commissioner from each of those agencies to be on the scene. We also have the Red Cross, Salvation Army, FEMA, Amtrak, and other state and federal agencies represented here. Each is responsible for gathering information from the field, and they're monitoring every aspect of the city, including the subways, the utilities, phone service, traffic, and so forth. This bunker opened in June at a cost of $13 million, and we're told it has up-to-the-minute equipment, making the city prepared for just about any type of emergency. But so far this morning, it's been very quiet. If that should change, we'll be back with an update. Reporting live, I'm Celeste Ford, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Celeste and Sandra. All right, let's check it with Eric Rath over at Metro Traffic. Eric? Hey, good morning. Well, the problem out there on the roadways, David, right now is we've got some moisture out there causing some problems. Also, the fog just rolled in. We had to have both our helicopters land. And let's go out to the Kew Gardens interchange here. You can see a little bit of the moisture as it reflects the light off the roadway there. And we do have a problem southbound on the Van Wyke. This is just south of this picture shot here. Just between Linden Boulevard and Rockaway Boulevard, there's a two-car accident in the process of being cleared out. In addition, northbound Conduit Boulevard, just north of the Belt Parkway. This is for folks coming out of the uh, JFK Airport. We've got a two-car crash. That's in the process of being cleared as well. And over in New Jersey, northbound Garden State Parkway, right at Route 78, we have a two-car crash. That's also in the process of being cleared. So take it easy. I'm Eric Rath, Metro Traffic for Eyewitness News. All right, Eric. And, of course, frozen zones in place already around Times Square. Oh, you betcha. Right now, as we take a look at our AccuWeather forecast, you don't have to worry about the rain for too long. Right now, it's cloudy in most places and 36 degrees. But we're heading for a high of 44, and the clouds are moving out. They'll do so over the next few hours, but we will have sprinkles until this afternoon when we will see sunshine and a mild high of 44. And tonight in Times Square, the temperature will be about 36, 38 degrees. Nothing to worry about. All right, and tonight a very special lottery jackpot drawing, the biggest ever in New York State, $100 million. It'll be right here live on ABC7. We'll see you. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update brought to you by Toyota, taking you into the new millennium. Ever have that dream where you're driving? Introducing the next Celica. Go! Now, what'll it be, sweetheart? Let me guess. A nice, cold Pepsi. I wouldn't want to hear one of those crazy voices of yours, huh? Honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hit it, fellas. Happy New Year from ABC7. From Times Square in New York and around the world, this is ABC 2000. Once again, Peter Jennings. As we look around the world, including at the Globe here in New York, the ball that will drop at midnight tonight, there's so much to celebrate. In the last 40 years, as we see people on these streets, we realize that life expectancy has risen in this period of time to a greater degree than all of human history. And what would a millennium celebration be without uh, thinking of and considering the children of the six billion people on Earth at the moment, 2.2 billion of them are under 18. And two billion of them, we are sad to say, live in developing countries against great struggles. So when we go down to Epcot in Florida, 
at the moment to see Deborah Roberts and to hear from some kids down there. It's a reminder of how lucky in America we are. Deborah? That's right, Peter. In fact, this morning, Walt Disney World will kick off its festivities by doing what Disney does best, and that is celebrating children. This morning, we're going to hear the angelic voices of 70 children from a 250-person choir from the Central Florida Performing Arts School. They range in age from 3 to 16, the entire choir does. And this morning, they're going to perform a song that was actually suggested by First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton to mark the millennium, and it was written by the Clinton's good friend, musician. Randy Goodrum. It is entitled appropriately Millennium. Thank you, Deborah Roberts. Thank you very much uh, at Epcot this morning. Just take a look out the window here. I, I must tell you, this is a crowd that we anticipated we were going to get later this evening. Diane Sawyer's just come in and said that they're all lively as heck down there. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Have they come to stay? We shall see throughout the day. But the big celebration now is about to come up in Australia. We've been talking about the Internet today and technology. Uh, probably uh, not many countries in the world rank as high in Internet use as the Australians do, and nobody ranks any higher when it comes to having a party. And the Internet and technology, of course, have made Australia much more a part of the world than they ever were before. So let's go there just a few minutes before their midnight, down to Sydney, Australia, 
and Elizabeth Fargus. Party, they say in Australian history. It's been in the planning for years. The biggest fireworks display, 20 tons of them, about to be launched in just a matter of minutes, as I said, as Australia begins to herald in the second millennium, the oldest continent on Earth, ready to welcome in the second millennium. This is this astonishingly controversial opera house when it was first designed by a Dane, if I recall, but has become an absolute landmark for the Sydney Harbour. Uh, the Opera House has designed its roofs in the shape of sails. This is one of the most important harbors in all of the Pacific. It's been crowded tonight. Australians, uh, certainly in this part of the world, uh, which is uh, in, uh, in New South Wales, in the western part of Australia, love the sea. We saw earlier this morning all of their famous lifeguards coming. That's their famous bridge. Has anybody been climbing up on the bridge today, Elizabeth? They climb up on that bridge every day, apparently, walking over the top of it. Uh, they have nobody up there at the moment because, of course, they're going to be launching all those fireworks. And, Peter, a moment ago, you were talking about that Sydney Opera House. Interesting point uh, here. It's covered with more than one million antifungal tiles, believe it or not, so that the thing never has to be cleaned. A good thing, since it's as big as it is. This is a nation... Elizabeth, which you know better than most, has taken a whole new lead for itself in, in the Pacific as it's about to celebrate midnight. It has, Peter. It's looking forward to pick, taking its place on the world stage. As you know, it's for the first time leading a United Nations multinational force in East Timor. The, the, the 2000 Olympics are here this year, probably the biggest Olympic Games they claim to be ever. It's, in addition, going to be celebrating its own centenary in one year, the, the founding of its own federation of states. So Australia as a whole is looking forward to overcoming what it calls the tyranny of distance and joining sort of other world powers on the global stage. He said that Australians love to have a party. They'll celebrate right through 2001 because it's, uh, it's the Australian centenary in 2001. And so they can begin now. Australians, exactly. though, never need an excuse for a party. They're among the most traveled people <laughs> on Earth. Um, it partly comes from, be from being so far away from everything. But if you go to almost any city in the world, you'll find a clutch of Australians. And now they're a minute away. Let's listen to them. countdown as you can hear Peter and about ready to launch all those fireworks it should be spectacular listen to them count it down
Melbourne in Victoria State. Back to Sydney. Now they promised they'd do it up brown. Peter, incidentally, if you can still hear me in Sydney, it's also the first time in history they've launched fireworks from the top of the Sydney Opera House in addition to the Harbour Bridge. While this excitement continues in Australia, maybe we can put it down in the corner of your television screen because something else as excitingly has happened to us. Because in this great debate, I don't know if our map can bring up the world time zones at the moment, but in this great debate about who was going to be the first to celebrate the 21st century and who was going to be where, the U.S. Navy decided that uh, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea if they were the first. And so the USS Topeka, America's most modern submarine sailed out into the Southern Pacific to uh, to put its bow to put its bow right under the uh, under the equator, which isn't quite marked on here and elsewhere, and its stern on the other side of the international date line, just to give you some sense of where they are. And on the line with us now, because they promised they'd make a telephone call from the Topeka, is its commander, Lieutenant Commander Wenner. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. So this is Lieutenant Commander Warner. I have with me the commanding officer of the USS Topeka, Commander Mark Patton. Uh, Commander Patton, over to you, sir. Uh, Commander Patton on the USS Topeka, the center of the heartland, on the equator in the 180th meridian, <laughs> sir. Happy New Year. Hi, Commander Patton. How are you? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day down here in the, uh, along the equator. And, uh, we were honored to be given this opportunity to uh, kick off the, uh, the new millennium for the Navy as well as a submarine force. So what did you actually do? Well, so we submerged the 400 feet, and our navigator uh, used our uh, high-tech navigation equipment to put the center of the ship right between the equator and the 180th uh, meridian right at midnight. And he did a beautiful job. And if you were on the port of the ship, you were in the 1989. If you were in starboard, you were in the year 2000. And, and you came, you surfaced, right? Uh, yes, sir. And then we surfaced and established communications. We wanted to do a deep though to uh, to uh, put the issue as a submarine. We wanted to make this a little bit unique for us, and uh, it turned out it turned out wonderfully. Uh, uh, 130 hardworking men, and this was a fantastic opportunity for them to uh, to do this something to talk about for their life. Well, you sound very excited. What could you see when you came up on deck? Well, sir, it's, uh, pretty, we expected some cruise ships and uh, sailboats, but actually it's uh, pretty busy here. We seem to be the only one that uh, actually made it to this point. Well, we cannot think of anybody better to be there on this particular occasion. Thank you very much. Good luck and a happy new year to some of the crew and a happy new year to the other part of the crew when you get the other part of the ship in the right place. Well, thank you, sir. Happy new year to you. Thank you very much, Commander Patton, the commander of the USS Topeka. It was a great stunt the Navy wanted to play. They said it was going to be a stunt to put the bow on one side of the international date line and the stern of the USS Topeka on the other, right at the point where the 180th meets the equator. Our coverage as you watch Sydney, Australia will continue in just a moment. ABC 2000 will continue live from around the world in just a moment. Kathy, can you hear me? Years of technological achievements have made us what we are today. Jeep is the most award-winning brand of 4x4s of this millennium. So we're celebrating the next millennium with the Jeep Year-End Awards event. Featuring a great lease on the legendary and powerful Grand Cherokee Laredo. Get one now for zero down, $379 a month, and $874 due at least signing.
So get to the Jeep year-end awards event and see where a little recognition can take you. Check out this 379 lease at your Jeep dealer today. a week, rediscover the thrills and chills of childhood. For an all-inclusive vacation, call 1-800-CLUB-MED or your travel agent now. Club Med. Renew. And now, The Giver. Hello, I am The Giver. Giving is my je ne sais quoi. And I am here, incognito, to see my colleague enjoy this elegant dining experience I have sent her through Send.com. This gift shows how much I value her. And for a special surprise, I myself will bring her and her companion, Cherries Flambe with extra liqueur. Oh dear, that was not part of the plan. Water, please, preferably sparkling. Send a gift of dining at the finest restaurants. Send.com, where great givers go. If you were a new luxury car, how would you stand apart from the rest? Would you have the most powerful V6 in your class? Or the largest interior? Maybe you'd offer amenities you couldn't find anywhere else. Imagine how special you'd be if you could claim all of them. Presenting the all-new Infiniti i30. It's all the best thinking. It's that time of year when people make their wish lists, but some things are needed year-round. I wish I had a better home for my kids. I wish I could read. That's why Fleet Boston Financial is committed to supporting community-based programs, employee volunteers, and all those who help improve people's lives. I'd really like a job with a future. I wish I could eat like this every day. What wishes can you help make come true? Over the past hundred years, Ford has made automotive history time and time again. And for the last time this century, we're doing it again. Presenting the 20th Century Clearance from your Tri-State Quality Ford Store. It's the biggest automotive sales event in history. It's also your last chance to get the deals of the century on almost everything in stock, like Ford Windstar. Now lease the five-star safety-rated 2000 Ford Windstar for just $2.69 a month. So come into your Tri-State Quality Ford Store today, because when Century Clearance ends, it's history. around the world, a celebration of the millennium. This is ABC 2000. With Peter Jennings at ABC 2000 headquarters in Times Square, Barbara Walters in Paris, Diane Sawyer in New York, Charles Gibson in London, Koki Roberts in Rome, Elizabeth Vargas in Sydney, Connie Chung in Las Vegas, Deborah Roberts in Orlando, Jack Ford in Times Square, Carol Simpson in Chicago, and Sam Donaldson at the Y2K Command Center in Washington. With our correspondents spanning the globe in Shanghai, Bombay, Bethlehem, Moscow, Havana, Rio de Janeiro, and across the U.S., reports from Miami, New Orleans, Tucson, Los Angeles, San Francisco. And in New York, Dick Clark counting down to the new year in Times Square. Special Millennium performances by Billy Joel, Elton John, Enrique Iglesias, Faith Hill, In Sync, Fish, The Bee Gees, Aerosmith, Blondie, Bonnie Raitt, Neil Diamond, Harry Connick Jr., Kenny G., Ray Charles, The Eagles, Barry Manilow, David Blaine, and Barbara Streisand. Now, from ABC 2000 headquarters at Times Square in New York, Peter Jennings. Actually, take a look at Sydney, Australia, where it is 10 minutes after midnight there. They're deeply into the 21st century and deeply into an Australian party. Those fireworks have been going on for two minutes. That's Sydney Harbour Bridge there, with its famous smile, which you can see written on streets all over Sydney. This large, dry, fascinating place so far for so long from everywhere else and now thanks to technology so much closer to the rest of the world and now much more of an Asian nation than it ever has been in the past.
And while we look just a couple of the other headlines around the world, we got up to the fact that there's going to be a new president in Russia today, and the acting president, Vladimir Putin, says the country's foreign and defense policies are not going to change. That comes as any great surprise. President Clinton has already paid his tribute to Boris Yeltsin, and the national security advisor has been talking with Russian officials this morning to, quote, confirm and understand Mr. Yeltsin's resignation. And the other story overseas is that in Kandahar, the hijackers are off that Indian Airlines plane now, and the people who have been on the plane for all that board are in the process of coming off, but we do not yet know what sort of condition they are in. In London, Michael Abraham, a young man from Liverpool, has been actually charged with attempted murder in the attempted, or that struggle he had yesterday with uh, Harrison and his wife, Olivia. Um, Abram's mother says her, who says her son has a history of mental problems and recently became obsessed with the Beatles. Can we uh, talk to the person who owns this space most of the day? Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm hiding you, out here uh, watching yeah. you. Yeah, but you didn't have to get up so early this morning. You take that as a No, call. I can't tell you that hour was like a whole century for me this morning. Were you a little great. surprised when you came through Times Square this morning? It's fantastic. You know, usually when we come in, it's, it's beautiful but pretty desolate out there and to come in this morning with these teeming crowds I've been down talking to some of them and I told you earlier mm. it's amazing some people from Denver from from California from South Carolina they have been here since 1 and 2 in the morning marking out their little 14 inches of space with their camping gear there and charting the number of steps to the bathrooms yeah. <laughs> which will not be an inconsiderable No, I can tell issue. you I wanted to speak to you about the design of your facilities here yes. <laughs> in terms of how far they are the way I must say I'm not at all cynical or skeptical about these matters but I am surprised that people are here at this time of the day on a rainy morning to take a place for midnight it makes me think that maybe in the you can't take terrorism lightly right but it just goes to show you that people will not and isn't it good that people will not have their lives changed by threats or alleged threats that's really encouraging to see so many folks will not there. have their lives change and in this year in which everybody talks about the internet and how it's going to separate us from each other and we're all going to become housebound creatures doing email the fact is everybody's here to be together you can mm. tell there is a sense that that it is a planetary party and we all got an invitation mm -hmm. and we better show up. You had a chance to see the stuff in the Pacific this morning on Kiribati and in Tonga. The one great disappointment for me this morning was Fiji. You know, we belong to this international consortium of more than 60 nations and Kiribati and Tonga and Fiji and New Zealand, not to mention Greenwich and England, all been fighting to be the first. Oh, that was great when the submarine Wasn't that went wonderful? under the international dateline. But Fiji somehow got lost in all this because the international consortium couldn't get Fiji to us this morning which was a bit of a pity. Well, the other thing I've been noticing watching your coverage is this, the variety still exists on the earth. Only the Australians would have their fireworks led off by a happy face that winks at you, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Only in Australia. They're, they're the least earnest people on earth. But and I think the New Zealanders were even more keen. I, uh, both these islands, as, as Elizabeth Fargs was saying about us here, both these islands have had a chance to come out like this in an even more profound way than they have in the past. New Zealand's, after all, a pretty small place. Doesn't have an awful lot going for it in some people's sheep. minds. Well, and very open this morning, more sheep than people, but they were having such a good time this morning. Yeah. You've come, you're going to spend several parts of the day with us, which is really nice, but we want to start off by talking about women. Um, it was New Zealand, actually, in 18... Todd Brewster's here with us, and we're Todd, 1895... Uh, we'll find it. 1893, 1895, Todd Brewster, who's the editorial director of the Century here, I gave was afraid women... you were going to give me a pop quiz, <laughs> like, a, who's the prime minister of Chechnya, and I'd be in trouble. But it was New Zealand who gave women the right to vote for the very first time, just before the turn of the century. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about women in the century. As a professional woman, do you get to the end of the century satisfied, generally? I think all women in Western nations and developed nations and that's a distinction that matters it's a life and death distinction for a lot of women in this country all women feel that momentum is somehow shifting there is wind behind their backs in a new way I was just reviewing some of the statistics as you know more women vote than men women elected mm -hmm. the last president men would have elected a different president more women are watching television than men more women are graduating from colleges than men right now. So you have a sense all these seeds are being sown and the next millennium 
is going to pay off mm -hmm. that investment. Let me bring in Lynn Sherwood with this, this because uh, Lynn has not only done a lot of writing about women her, on herself, but she's in India today. And, and there the story is not quite the one that Diane tells. The future for women, the century for women, Diane, or Lynn from there? Uh, Peter, I think it, it's very simple. If there is going to be a future for India, they have got to empower their women. The women are the key to whatever happens in this country. Uh, at the moment, they are the most underutilized resource in this, in this entire nation. They are more illiterate than men, more women are illiterate than men. And of course, overpopulation is such a huge problem here. You know as well as I that an educated woman is a woman who will not have too many children. That's one of the challenges here. Um, on any list of 10 top priorities for India in the millennium, numbers one through nine are give women more power. The irony, of course, being that this is the nation that had one of the first female prime ministers, Indira Gandhi. Um, the other, uh, two weeks ago, in the parliament here, a bill to put more seats for women in parliament was hooted down by members of the legislature. So this is a top priority here for women of all economic levels. It's just got to happen or there will be no progress for India. Lynn, when you talk to, when you talk to Indian women, how profoundly restrained are they by their history? It is a question of their economic level, Peter. As you well know, the ones, uh, there are many, many independent women here who own their own businesses, who are entirely well educated, who are very independent, who choose their own husbands, I might add. Uh, but the lower down you go, the less choice there is. And they are so constrained by tradition, uh, by caste, by religion. Uh, that for many of them, there's no, there's no education for most of the women in this country. Uh, that's what's really sad, and that's what they want to see changed as well. Thanks, then, Diane. I think this comes as an enormous surprise to a lot of American women. I think it does, too. And one, and one of the things that y you, when you look at world politics, you find unimaginable is that there is not an international outcry about honor death, for mm. instance, a number of nations in the world in which fundamentalist communities kill women who are suspected, just suspected of not being virgins, for instance, women not being educated mm. around the globe. And perhaps one of the consequences is if the developed nations, if women gain more economic power, which they are doing at a considerable rate, more political power, mm. that suddenly there will be the kind of indignation that can make a difference in some of these countries. I wonder what this looks like seen from the Vatican. Koki Roberts is, is with us in St. Peter's the Square this morning. Koki, you've been listening to this um, scene, from the, scene from the background of a church which is still profoundly in favor of, uh, of uh, anti-birth control. Well, and it's certainly a very male institution, to put it mildly, but in Italy as a whole, Peter, it's a very different story. Everything about modern Italy is counterintuitive to what we uh, now think of, what we used to think of as the Italian family, the Italian woman, is just the opposite of what Lynn was saying in India. Italian women are now more educated than the Italian men. They are the longest lived people on earth. They live to be about 81 years old, and it is the lowest fertility rate on earth here in Italy. Uh, and it is considered a direct result of the fact that women are educated and are working. They are, by the way, according to the UN, the hardest workers in the industrialized world. Italian women work longer hours and more days than any other persons in the industrialized world. And the effect of that is no babies. Mm -hmm. and, and Koki, I don't mean to make any of you uh, speak for the entire consensus. We've left out Moscow. Mm -hmm. At this moment, for example, where the role of women has changed quite significantly since the early days of the communist revolution or the socialist revolution. But as you look around, do you think the next century is an exciting one for women, seen from there? Sure it is, seen from many of our vantage points, I think. And as you pointed out, Lynn and I have both written a good deal about women in politics in the United States. And there the news is, is good news. It's not good enough, fast enough. Uh, we don't have 53% in government uh, positions as we are in the population. But it is certainly considerably better than it was even 25 years ago. Uh, when my mother went to Congress in 1973, there were only 16 women there. Now there's 60. Uh, so that uh, the, the changes have been vast in a short period of time, and you've got to expect that they'll only be vaster because technology and modernization and urbanization 
always works for women, and that's what you're going to see more of in the next century. Man. Can I, since this is, after all, your place. <laughs> my place, mm -hmm. can I ask you a question? Mm. Do you think that women will change the world as they gain more economic power? No, I think women have already changed the world. As you were talking about education, I kept thinking about Elizabeth Dole, who was once asked to give away her place at the law school at Harvard because it would be better suited by a man. I think as we go to the next century, I think we men will just simply have to think that the differences don't and shouldn't exist. Um, but I've, I've seen too many occasions in which women have already changed the world. Do you think, for instance, it will be a more peaceable planet? Do you think it will Not be Not necessarily, a... but we have 10 seconds. So would you like to take us to a local Wait news Wait a minute. You please? lob a grenade, <laughs> and then we have 10, 5, 4, 3, 2. We'll That's come it. back we'll after continue. the break. <laughs> Not necessarily. This is ABC 2000, the celebration of the millennium. Brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevy will be there. And by Cellular One, clear across America. Chevrolets, the cars and trucks you can depend on, or low APR financing on Chevy Silverado, the truck. So come in now to the Chevy Make Your Money Count here and event. Don't let your turn to win pass you by. Cellular One, clear across America. I don't want to run a marathon. I don't want to go skydiving. I don't want to feel like a kid again. Though, not feeling ancient would be nice. All I really want is to be able to climb the stairs and give Michael a bath. Viox is here, a prescription medicine for the most common type of arthritis pain, osteoarthritis. One little pill taken just once a day can provide 24-hour relief. In rare cases, serious stomach problems such as bleeding can occur without warning. People with allergic reactions such as asthma to aspirin or other arthritis medicines should not take Viox. Tell your doctor if you have liver or kidney problems. For more information, ask your doctor or pharmacist about once daily Viox for the relief of osteoarthritis pain. And you may be able to plan your day around your life instead of your pain. Viox for everyday victories. From the director of Shine. I know you'll think this is crazy, but all I want to do is hold you. They shared an innocence. I want you to marry me. Are you crazy? A passion. I knew we could never be right together. And that soon I would have to tell you so. And a promise. That's the thing with girls. They grow up and break your heart. That their love would last forever. I love you. Snow Falling on Cedars. Rated PG-13. Now playing in select cities nationwide January 7th. Should have used Energizer. They keep going and going and going. Television sets equipped with a new V-chip are now available. This system allows you to program your television to control the programs your children watch. Use the TV parental guidelines to choose programming best suited for your family. The V-chip and TV parental guidelines. Together, your guide to better family viewing. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. And good morning, and we want to start with a live shot from where it is happening already, really, Times Square. You can see hundreds of people are already there despite some sprinkly weather, and many of these people say they will stay there until that famous ball drops at midnight. Good morning, everyone, on this very special day, December 31st. I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Usher. We're, of course, supplementing ABC's worldwide coverage with coverage of events that are happening in the tri-state area. 
Well, before we get to the celebrations, we must tell you the man arrested for conspiring to help a suspected terrorist will be arraigned today. Abdel Ghani was picked up in a raid yesterday in Brooklyn. Authorities say he had traveled to Seattle to meet with Ahmed Rassam. He is under arrest for trying to smuggle bomb-making materials into Washington state. And, of course, we'll have live reports on this developing story later this morning. But for now, just about everything is in place for tonight's big celebration, including a lot of people already. The Millennial Ball rose just about 90 minutes ago, complete with a few fireworks. In just 15 and a half hours, it will start falling as New York welcomes in the year 2000. And right now, we're going to take you back live to Times Square. Because also in place is our Sandra Bookman, who's been soaking in the festivities. Sandra. Uh, that's not the only thing I'm soaking in, <laughs> Nancy. It has started to rain here again at Times Square. Not a heavy rain, but it's been steady all morning and everything down here is very wet. That has not, however, kept several thousand people from coming down here early this morning to get a jump on the millennial festivities. So far, so good. Uh, those police barricades that have been put up to sort of control the crowd throughout the day, they're already there. The city is, of course, hoping that the rest of the celebration goes as smoothly as it's gone this morning. Two acts from the uh, city's planned festivities have already gone on. Another is going on in about 15 minutes. As I said, so far, so good. That sizable police force the NYPD has in place. You see evidence of it all over. And uh, it's been great in terms of keeping the crowd we do have controlled. And uh, we'll see how things work out as this day goes on. For now, we're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Sandra. Now, if you are planning to go out there to join Sandra and all of her friends out there, <laughs> you should know that you may be subjected to random weapon searches by police. Right now, the area virtually shut down. Police are working very hard to keep New York's big celebration safe. Broadway and 7th Avenues from 42nd to 47th Streets already closed. And this evening, that frozen zone will expand. And if you have to uh, head out elsewhere this morning, we want to check with Eric Rath. Eric? Good morning. Thank you, David. Yes, we can't emphasize it enough. Do not drive into Times Square. Stick with mass transit. All the trains are supplying extra trains and cars, and the subways are running on or close to schedule. Now, the roadways, because of that rain that is coming down, are a bit slick. Here's a look at the Grand Central Parkway by LaGuardia moving pretty well. But southbound on the Van between Linden and Rockaway Boulevard. We had a two-car accident. That has just been cleared, but you can see a little bit of a delay through that area. I'm Eric Rath, Metro Traffic for Eyewitness News. All right, Eric, thank you very much. And a quick check of your New Year's Eve forecast. Those lingering showers, they should be leaving us in the next hour or so. The sun should be out. The sun should the be sun, out. yes. Anyway, it'll be sun. High of 44 tonight. The low in the city, about 36. So that'll be the temperature in Times Square. All right. We'll have more local news coverage in 15 minutes. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of cola. The best taste for me is Pepsi when I'm cruising down the streets of the NYC. Me and my boys just shooting the breeze. When the streets of LA be sipping a Pepsi to the effervescent joy, they only call it for me. The joy of flavor, the joy of fun, the joy of vocal, all on your tongue, the joy of cola. <laughs> Y'all need a lift? Oh, yeah. oh, cool. oh, cool. But what about a ride, yo? Four by four. There's no bigger rush. Adelaide, Australia. South Australia, midnight. South Australia's official millennium celebration. Another midnight. sitting here in New York watching this and uh, talking to Diane Sawyer.
Cokie Roberts and Lynn Scher about the status of women at the end of the century and the beginning of another one. And we're joined now by Carol Simpson, who's in Chicago. And we're having a very general discussion about women because both time and maybe the circumstance allow us to do that. But Carol, your thoughts about women at the end of this century and the beginning of the new one? Well, Peter, I have to describe where I am and where I got my information. I'm in Chicago at the McCormick Hyatt Hotel, where Chicago has invited two people from every country on earth to participate in the millennium. And I've been talking to some of the women here about what they think is going to happen to women in the next century. And there are Americans here who, like me, think that in the next century we're going to see the first female president. We are going to see more women heads of corporation. We talked about in the 70s, we've come a long way, baby, but we've got a long way to go. I think everybody here is expecting that in America, we are going to go the distance and, and really become equal partners with men in the next century. But I have talked to some of the women from the uh, less developed countries around the world, and they see progress coming for women there too. They think there is going to be great pushes for more education of girls around the world in some of these countries. So it'll be a little lag, but they think they're going to be coming on into their own as well. Uh, those, those women you talk to from other countries, do they tend to look to the United States or to any other country as a place where women might be the model? We are the model. Um, yes, everybody looks to the United States. I have to tell you that you began the broadcast with the uh, celebration in Kiribati. Kiribati, yeah. Kiribati. Kiribati. Behind me, I have two representatives from Kiribati who say they wish they were there instead of Chicago. It's a little cold here, but there's a gentleman from Morocco, from Liberia. It's, it's very exciting that Chicago has invited all of these people from around the world to celebrate and that Americans have come to be part of this celebration because never before would they have an opportunity to interact with people from all over the world. Thanks, Carol. We'll come back to you several times for that Chicago celebration today, which we're going to make much of. But we want to go to Paris now where Barbara Walters is. Barbara, we note that in France this year they chose, I think it was a model as the new face of the Republic. Um, and yet it's a, it's a country where women have always been regarded as in many ways more equal than women in some other countries. Yes, I think that's true, uh, especially today. Uh, many women and young women in, in Paris, in France, don't get married. They see no need to. Uh, they have children and the state supports the children. They have great independence. But you know, uh, Peter, and I, I have to tell you that I have just lost sound, but I'll just say this. No, it's come back. When I look at you and Diane, I, I can't help thinking um, that 30 years ago when I began on the air as a writer, there was only one female writer on the program I worked for. There was no such thing as a female co-host or two people talking so easily and equally the way you two are. I couldn't come in and ask a question until the third or fourth question. There was no woman's movement. And this is just in the past 30 years. Look how far we've come. Well, and we should add that one of the reasons we have is you, and that's the truth. No, not no. Well, that's no very question. kind. But, but uh, you know, here in Paris, I, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Well, I was going to say, they have a history of very strong women. You know, we go back to Joan of Arc. We, suddenly I'm French. <laughs> we go back to Joan of Arc in, in the 15th century, and Diane, you know, in this century, Simone de Beauvoir, who probably wrote the first uh, a book about the liberation of women, the second sex. They have designers like Chanel who took women out of their girdles and made them free and easy so we can wear jeans the way the men do. It's a very easy country. And what I like best is you can grow old here as a woman and still be considered desirable. I may not come back. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that one with a 10-foot pole, except that it does raise the question here, Diane, as to whether or not it's getting any easier for women to get older in America. It's always said it's easier for a man. Well, I think the baby boom demographics are simply going to mandate that right. it be somewhat mm -hmm. easier. And I always hear, for instance, these female, powerful female actresses in Hollywood saying, if the parts aren't no, there, they're going to create the parts. And that, again, is a function of mm -hmm. quantity. There are just too many women aging in this country for it not to be different. Thanks again. We'll be back. Our Millennium coverage will continue. Hope you'll stay with us. I could have danced all night, I could have danced all night, and still have begged for more. 
just got easier. Introducing America Online new version 5.0 with all new features so it's easier to stay in touch and easier to get started. AOL new version 5.0, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call now and we'll sign you up right over the phone. Can you believe it? My husband, Nolan Ryan, has arthritis. So his doctor says, stay active and take Advil to make it easier. I take it for my arthritis pain so we can exercise together. Advil, stronger than pain. Introducing the new AccuView 2 contact lens. So natural, it feels like you're wearing nothing at all. For a free trial pair, call us or visit your eye care professional. Something new is here. A whole new way to take care of heartburn. Introducing Pepsid AC gel caps. Just one gel cap controls as much acid as a whole roll of tones. An idea that's very easy to swallow. New Pepsid AC gel caps. 2000. 2000. What are you, you looking, looking forward, forward to? Look forward to the Event Network, ABC. The return of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And the Emmy goes to the Prime Time Emmy Awards. The streak is over. The Daytime Emmy Awards. Whitney Houston. The American Music Awards. Plus, Plus the Academy Awards. Thank you. And the Super Bowl. 2000. 2000. The biggest events of the new century are only on one network. One network. ABC. Seems every day someone asks me the same burning question. Wonder Dude. Mom says Wonder Bread helps build strong bodies. How does it do that? Well, that's easy. Wonder combines the vitamins and calcium together with the iron. And somehow, it always comes out soft. Delicious, too. Remember the wonder. Tune in next time for Who Needs Wings to Fly? Years of technological achievements have made us what we are today. Jeep is the most award-winning brand of 4x4s of this millennium. So we're celebrating the next millennium with the Jeep Year-End Awards event. With a Cherokee Sport lease for zero down, $269 a month, and $764 due at signing, plus air and more at no extra charge or get a no-charge automatic on select Wranglers. So get to the Jeep Year-End Awards event and see where a little recognition can take you. Check out this 269 lease at your Jeep dealer today. American Beauty. Yeah. Nominated for six Golden Globe Awards, including Best Actor, Kevin Spacey, Best Actress, Annette Bening, Woo! Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Picture. American Beauty. Rated R. Still in theaters. <laughs> Campus.com. Textbooks and stuff. Cheap. Save up to 50%. And shipping's always free. The most powerful V6 engine in its class. The most interior space in its class. Amenities that would surprise you in any class. For those seeking refuge from mediocrity and compromise, we offer the Sanctuary. Presenting the all-new Infinity i30. It's all the best thinking. Wake up to a brand new century with a special New Year's Day edition of Eyewitness News this morning. See what happened at the stroke of midnight, what's working and what's not in the wake of Y2K. We'll get you through it first thing New Year's Day on Eyewitness News this morning. Tomorrow morning at 6, right here on ABC7. I could have danced all night, I could have danced all night, and still have begged for more. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand... Give my regards to Broadway. 
Well, Remember Diane's here, the energy is all out there. You feel a tremendous energy here every morning, don't you? You really do when you come in. It's great to see people already up and shouting and after the third cup of coffee ready for the day. I watch I, you wave and they wave. I, I love these get-ups, too. You see the, the glasses. Have we seen the sunglasses? 2,000 glasses. 2000. The hats they're wearing. People have really come... They, they, they've come to contribute something here to the, to the atmosphere. And you, you'll see already, look over there, mm. you can't move. And I'm, last year, in which there were half the number of people expected as this year, you simply could not walk through the crowd. So I'm a little concerned about some of these people being able just to get out and get something. A I glass have to of believe that those people are going to stay here all day. They're going to be able to stay because they can't get out or they can't move. And they'll stay upright because there's no way to move and they'll hold each other upright. The, si the business community here has done a terrific job because every time you celebrate something, around the world they are celebrating a replica of it here and so at the moment they're out there doing things to contribute to the gilbert islands and things like that as well all right we'll come back for the energy of times square and more right away we're going to cut away first though for many of you to go to your local news Stay with us as the global celebration continues. Still ahead, Egypt's parade of boats on the Nile, a special millennium address from the Pope in Rome, an explosion of fireworks from around the world, plus Y2K updates. ABC 2000, 24 incredible hours continues. This is the workshop of radicals. A one-car garage where two young men with $500 in venture capital invented an industry. Their idea was simple, invent something useful and significant, or it doesn't leave the garage. The idea was so simple, it was radical. Today, the company of Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard is being reinvented. The original startup will act like one again. Watch. Who says you have to use a cream to treat a yeast infection? Kiss your creams goodbye. <sighs> and say hello to oral diflucan fluconazole. The only oral tablet for yeast infections you can take anytime, anywhere. Because it's as effective as the leading seven-day topicals without the inconvenience. So the next time you get a yeast infection, say, goodbye mess, goodbye applicators, goodbye nighttime treatments. And say hello to something completely different, oral diflucan. With diflucan, there's an increased possibility of side effects compared with creams, including headache, nausea, and abdominal pain. In rare instances, serious effects on the liver and serious allergic reactions were reported. Do not use Diflucan if you're nursing. If you're pregnant or taking other medications, talk to your doctor. To prevent heart-related complications, do not take Diflucan if you're taking Propulsive. For more information, ask your doctor or call us. Oral Diflucan. Kiss your creams goodbye. I need love, love to ease my mind. snack and kick back. Introducing single serving Tostito snack kits. Just be sure you pick the right time to eat them. Dig in, kick back, Tostitos. Arizona Angels coming to bat in the first. Year 2000 Corolla. Millennium proof dependability. Next week on Good Morning America, a Y2K reality check. How do we make out? Plus, New Year, New Resolutions, topping the list, getting fit. We'll show you what works. Plus, supermodel, supermom, Cindy Crawford looks back at baby's first year. And kick off 2000 with Britney Spears on Good Morning America next week. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. 
845 and did someone say something about a party in Times Square? It certainly didn't take long for the New Year's celebration to kick off in Manhattan, as you can see with this live picture. The party of the century well underway. So glad you're with us. I'm Nancy Lou. And I'm David Ushery. We are glad you're with us. We're, of course, keeping an eye on things in the tri-state area. And Times Square is quickly filling up with people all ready to ring in the new year. That world-famous ball, you know, the one made of Waterford crystal. It's hanging overhead, waiting for that countdown to midnight. But the crowd down below just can't wait. They've already received quite a show. Sandra Bookman is there live, making all kinds of new friends. Sandra. Yeah. Yeah, I've been making friends with police officers, other reporters, cameramen. We're kind of stuck on a platform up here, but, but behind me, the crowd is starting to, to widen out. More police barricades have been moved into the street. As you said uh, a little while ago, about 7 o'clock exactly, the, the people that did decide to come down here early got quite a show. They got to see the Millennium Ball go up the 77-foot pole, that 1,000-pound Waterford crystal ball. That's what it's made of. Of course, it's going to make its way down. Down tonight at midnight uh, to Harold Den, the year 2000. Now, here in Times Square, we've already had several of the official acts with the city show here that have sort of punctuated the new year as it has come in and different places around the globe. Of course, that's uh, all part of ABC's day long coverage. We're going to be here throughout the day in Times Square to keep an eye on New Yorkers to let you know what the situation is in terms of traffic and when we run out of space down here, if that's possible. But now we're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you very much, Sandra. Now, there is a serious part of this morning that warrants attention. Yes, the man arrested for conspiring to help a suspected terrorist will be arraigned in Lower Manhattan today. Cheryl Fiandaka is standing by live with more on that. Cheryl. David, that's right. Abdel Ghani will be arraigned right here in Manhattan Federal Court this morning. Officials raided his Midwood apartment yesterday afternoon after they suspected that he was friends and was conspiring with an Algerian man arrested two weeks ago in Seattle. That man has been charged with carrying bomb making materials into the United States. Both men are charged with plotting to bomb something in the United States. But the mayor says there were no specific threats against New York City. That arraignment is scheduled to take place this, this morning at about 10 o'clock in Manhattan Federal Court. We're live in Lower Manhattan. I'm Cheryl Fiandaka, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Cheryl, thank you very much. All right, let's check in with Eric Rath over at Metro Traffic. Eric. Good morning, David. Unbelievable how many folks are already out of Times Square. Of course, if you're heading to the festivities, stick with the subways. Or if you're heading out of town or coming into Manhattan, use the LIRR New Jersey Transit, also Metro North running extra trains and extra cars. Now, let's go outside. We'll take a look at the Kew Gardens Interchange. The northbound and southbound Van Wyck so far moving pretty good. We had an accident between Rockaway and Linden Boulevard. That's been cleared out, but as you can see, the roadways are very slick. We've got some moisture coming down. And here's a look at the New Jersey Turnpike. So far, so good. I'm Eric Rath, Metro Traffic for Eyewitness News. Thanks, uh, Eric. Yep. A quick check of the war forecast. Cloudy in most places right now, about 35 degrees. Wind chill making it feel like 19. Humidity at 96%. There's been a sprinkle here and there, but it should give way to some sunshine this afternoon. And tonight, what you need to know, about 36 degrees, but it should be clear. That is news for now. I'm Nancy Lou. And I'm David Ushery. ABC returns. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update brought to you by Toyota, taking you into the new millennium. Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson, it's time for your massage, Miss Johnson. Solara. An entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. Want to share my joy? <laughs> joy cola, Pepsi cola. Yo, Mary, wait up! Wishing you a happy Kwanzaa from all of us at ABC7. ABC 2000 continues live from around the world. Once again, Peter Jennings. 
People downstairs waiting for us, well, waiting for whatever at the moment. They can't be waiting all this time until midnight. They're going to have fun before then. We're going to go to South Korea now because they're celebrating the new millennium in South Korea already with their particular kind of historic celebration. This is their national traditional music troupe. They're performing at a shrine which has made one of the World Heritage Sites by the United Nations. And as you can see, traditional Korean costume in a part of the world which is uh, very important to the United States. Almost 40,000 American troops are still on the Korean Peninsula, uh, protecting South Korea from one of the world's most bellicose and isolated nations in the north. And as we watch this celebration, we have on the phone General Thomas Schwartz, who's the commander of U.S. forces in Korea, who is today, tonight, up at the demilitarized zone between the north and the south. General Schwartz, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Peter. How are you? Very well, sir. Can you bring us up to date on what American forces are doing there today? Well, I can because, you know, I just finished talking to some of our great soldiers, sailor, airmen, and marines up on the demilitarized zone, and uh, I can report to you, Peter, all is well. We're passing into the new millennium across freedom frontier, and everybody back in America should be extremely proud of these great young Americans as they serve their country. Have you done anything special for the celebration? Well, we have a lot of great celebrations going on here across the peninsula, Peter. And I'm proud to say that uh, we also have a lot of great uh, servicemen and women uh, who are working tonight, standing ready across this peninsula to do the things soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines do so well to make sure we transition into the new millennium here just shortly, and that all of our systems are safe, secure, and doing the kind of things that we're trained to do to stay ready. So you've been over the Y2K hump. Well, we're just getting ready to pass over that hump here uh, just shortly, Peter, and we have done all the things I think we need to do. We're looking for a real smooth transition. Good. General Schwartz, Happy New Year to you and your, and your troops. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you, Peter. God bless you and God bless America. Sawyer has been, uh, Diane, you've been watching this with me. Yeah. You're, you're one of the few people I know who's actually been to, uh, to North Korea for a reporting trip. Most secretive kingdom mm -hmm. possibly on the earth right now. Uh, we got in because I, I went with a group called Feed the Children. Right. They said I was a member of the choir. <laughs> I'm glad that wasn't put to the test in order to get me in. There's no way a journalist would have been allowed in otherwise. And we went there a couple of years ago at a time when famine was sweeping the country. And mm -hmm. to this day, we don't know whether a quarter of a million people died or two million people died. And here we are in some of the orphanages. They, they did everything they could to keep us from seeing these children who were desperately hungry. The mothers would whisper to us that they had no food. We kept hearing that the older people had decided simply to starve themselves in order to preserve as much food as they could for the younger children. One of the, one of the very big challenges, clearly, for the early years of the 21st century is to what North Korea will do, regarded it as a dangerous nation by us, uh, still on the verge of, of starvation, and, and, and the United States has been engaged to some considerable degree, but you sort of wonder where it's going. Well, the U.S. has decided to lift the sanctions mm -hmm. in exchange for their not having uh, tests of mm -hmm. their weapons there. But there, it's impossible to predict with these people. It's one of the last places where the children actually get up every day and have to give thanks to the peerless patriot, mm. the great thinker, the deep and beloved leader who is the father of the country. It blasts out from the speakers all mm. day long. And Kim Jong-il, who is now the head of Korea, is an absolute mystery.
to everyone. Yeah. He wears cowboy boots and is said to like Western movie starlets, but we have no idea beyond that who he is. One of the, one of the really sad things about always going to South Korea is really how much passion there is for reunification too, and clearly there's got to be reunification. You can't go another century ever since 1940s now, and, and the people who still feel so profoundly connected to the North ever since the end of the Korean War with families there, with so little contact with their families, and yet the passion in the South is extraordinarily deep. And they're trying something fairly brave called the sunshine policy, right. in which instead of simply entrenching and trying to defend themselves, they're reaching out a little bit, could backfire at any moment, as we know. But at this point, in this, at this point in the millennium, mm. that there should still be a country like that, in which people are required to take the same routes to work each day, mm. so that they can be monitored, and the same routes back home, it's inconceivable that it, it, it is still being tolerated by the rest of the world. Speaking of challenge, when we come back, we're going to go to Africa. Jim Wooten is in Djibouti in the Horn of Africa for us, and so we'll talk to Jim. We'll see what they are celebrating in Africa and what they are anticipating for the next century. From Times Square and around the world, ABC 2000 will continue in a moment. the Nissan here in Countdown event. For 14 days, just 336 hours, Nissan is offering some of the best deals of the year. Now get $500 in addition to existing incentives when you purchase or lease the new 2000 Altima, Quest, Sentra, Frontier, even Pathfinder. That's a total of $2,500 or more in savings. So what are you waiting for? You've just let another 30 seconds go by. This $2,500 or more in savings ends January 3rd. Ecampus.com. Textbooks and stuff. Cheap. Save up to 50%. And shipping's always free. Years of technological achievements have made us what we are today. Jeep is the most award-winning brand of 4x4s of this millennium. So we're celebrating the next millennium with the Jeep Year-End Awards event, featuring a great lease on the legendary and powerful Grand Cherokee Laredo. Get one now for zero down, $379 a month, and $874 due at least signing. So get to the Jeep Year-End Awards event and see where a little recognition can take you. Check out this $379 lease at your Jeep dealer today. vacation call 1-800-CLUB-MED or your travel agent now club med renew over the past hundred years ford has made automotive history time and time again and for the last time this century we're doing it again presenting the 20th century clearance from your tri-state quality ford store it's the biggest automotive sales event in history it's also your last chance to get the deals of the century and almost everything in stock including Ford Expedition. Now get low 3-9 financing and the best-in-class going 2000 Ford Expedition. So come into your Tri-State Quality Ford store today because when Century Clearance ends, it's history. Wake up to a brand new century with a special New Year's Day edition of Eyewitness News this morning. See what happened at the stroke of midnight, what's working and what's not in the wake of Y2K. We'll get you through it first thing New Year's Day on Eyewitness News this morning. Tomorrow morning at 6, right here on ABC7. The New York Millennium Millions jackpot is now $100 million. from around the world, a celebration of the millennia. This is ABC 2000. 
with Peter Jennings at ABC 2000 headquarters in Times Square, Barbara Walters in Paris, Diane Sawyer in New York, Charles Gibson in London, Cokie Roberts in Rome, Elizabeth Vargas in Sydney, Connie Chung in Las Vegas, Deborah Roberts in Orlando, Jack Ford in Times Square, Carol Simpson in Chicago, and Sam Donaldson at the Y2K Command Center in Washington. With our correspondents spanning the globe in Shanghai, Bombay, Bethlehem, Moscow, Havana, Rio de Janeiro, and across the U.S., reports from Miami, New Orleans, Tucson, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and in New York, Dick Clark counting down to the new year in Times Square. Special Millennium performances by Billy Joel, Elton John, Enrique Iglesias, Faith Hill, In Sync. Fish, The Bee Gees, Aerosmith, Blondie, Bonnie Raitt, Neil Diamond, Harry Connick Jr., Kenny G., Ray Charles, The Eagles, Barry Manilow, David Blaine, and Barbara Streisand. Now, from ABC 2000 headquarters at Times Square in New York, Peter Jennings. Times Square is trying to keep up with the rest of the world and doing it very successfully. They've just celebrated the new millennium in Australia and they're throwing tiny boomerangs from the tops of the buildings here down into this surprisingly large crowd for this hour in Times Square. The weather's improving slightly, but it's still a bit raw and thousands of people have come already to celebrate the new century, even though it is many, many hours before the famous ball drop here will occur. It's 9 o'clock Eastern Time in the morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Peter Jennings. Just a couple of headlines uh, from around the world. They have entered the 21st century on large and small islands in the Pacific. The two largest countries, Australia and New Zealand, report absolutely no problems with the millennium bug. They had a small blackout in New Zealand for a while. It turned out to be the wind and not Y2K. Russia has a new acting president, Vladimir Putin, and he says already that his country's foreign and defense policies will not change. This is when Boris Yeltsin several hours ago very surprisingly announced his resignation uh, mr. Putin now holds the codes that control Russia's nuclear arsenal but reaction is measured by investors at least in Russia appears to be positive the Russian stock market jumped to a 15-month high on the news now the hostages that had been freed from that Air India airliner that had been on the ground at Kandahar in southern part of Afghanistan are now on their way back to India. We do not yet know their condition, but we assume that they're in an awful lot better condition than they've been for the last five days. And the hijackers have disappeared with the three militants they managed to extricate from Indian jails, and we have no idea where they have gone, though surely the Taliban, which governs Afghanistan, does as well so far. And there has been no report anywhere in the world, to the best of our knowledge, of any untoward incident on this century occasion. We asked ABC's Bob Brown to put together a package of the highlights of what has happened in the world so far. Here he is. Like some global relay race in which a torch is passed at each midnight, the Millennium Celebration began on a place renamed Millennium Island, the easternmost island of Kiribati. My dear child, take this torch of peace and hope from Kiribati so that it may light the whole world. In a nation that saw heavy battle casualties during World War II when U.S. forces drove out the occupying Japanese army, the gifts of fire were taken to the sea by an old man and a boy while dancers chanted a farewell to the pain of the past in a traditional ceremony of good luck. <laughs> Tonga had placed itself on daylight saving time to savor the first moments of the 21st century with Kiribati. These first celebrations were in places that normally would be uninhabited. They were simple and traditional. When midnight struck the first major city, Auckland, New Zealand, that's when the glitz started. Where the ceremonies were fueled by fire, nobody gave a thought to Y2K compliance. But where the fireworks began in New Zealand came the first major Y2K test. The lights stayed on, and ABC News correspondent James Walker discovered the ATMs were dispensing money. This is an ATM re uh, receipt for, let me think it's dated 1100, and the time on it is um, 
three seconds into the new year. Famous landmarks around the world will be put to extraordinary use during this string of midnights. One of the first was the Sydney Australia Opera House, where dancers roamed its high curves representing sea creatures. And finally, another new year in Australia, making you wonder how many tons of fireworks will be blasted off before the world has finished its long day of celebrating. And we said uh, when we were planning this coverage, we were going to deal with business done and business undone. We're going to go to Africa now, and there's no continent on Earth in which there is more business undone. Africa enters the new millennium, as someone put it, a wash in coup d'etats, a wash in wars, and with a health epidemic that threatens to do greater damage to the ranks of the continent's people than centuries of slave trading actually did. We're going to go to Djibouti on the Horn of Africa, on the edge of the Red Sea, to ABC's Jim Wooten. Good morning, Jim. Peter, it's about five o'clock here, and, and uh, there's not much reason to celebrate. This is a refugee camp called Ali Adi. We're about 100 miles from the Red Sea that you mentioned. There are about 11,000 people here. Most of them are Somalis who have fled uh, a decade of war and famine and disease in their country and come here for some relative peace uh, in a camp that is run uh, by the Djibouti government. Uh, it's not very much of a place as you can probably see but it's a, probably the much better than what these people would have in their home country of Somalia Jim is uh, you've been there a couple of days I know and if you've been talking to these people and they have some sense of the passage of time now what given the assistance of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees do they have to look forward to? Well, the uh, UNHCR, the High Commission for Refugees, has uh, been appealing for uh, more money from uh, donor governments. They have an $800 million aid budget here in Africa, and uh, they only have about $450 million of that so far, uh, and it's just not enough. Uh, this camp is run by the Djibouti government, but it's supplied uh, and underwritten and subsidized by the UNHCR and other UN organizations. That's the case all over Africa. There are about 13 uh, million refugees in the whole world now, and 6 million of them are in Africa. That's a pretty constant figure, and it's a hard job for the UN. Uh, and uh, with, uh, with not enough money coming in, it's not much fun for these people either. And Most you... of these people have no concept. Yes, yes, Peter. No, I was just going to ask you, as you talk to these people as individuals about their hopes and dreams, what do they have to say? Uh, most of the people we've, we've spoken with have no idea what this is all about. And if I may be so blunt, they don't have any dreams or hopes. They've been here for six years, most of them. Half of them, of the 11,000, are children. It isn't, uh, uh, it isn't a place where dreams are easily dreamed where hopes are easily born. Well, it is a chilling scene and a reminder to us as we face the new millennium of business undone. As we said, a wash in brutal civil wars. Jim gave you the number of refugees in the world and the number who are in Africa. It is utterly clear to people who are concerned about Africa, particularly concerned about AIDS in Africa today, that there is no quick fix but it is one of the things that the world is going to have to turn to in the 21st century or else. Our coverage will continue. Many women don't do anything about the risk of osteoporosis until menopause. But if you've turned 40, you're already losing bone mass. I'm past 40 now, but I don't worry. Because I take OSCAL every day. I call it my osteoporosis insurance. Only OSCAL has been proven effective in more clinical studies and comes from a natural calcium source and has been recommended by more doctors than Caltrate and Citrical combined. Don't wait until menopause. If you're over 40, don't take chances. Take OSCAL. <laughs> King.
Should have used Energizer. They keep going and going and going and going. It's the most remarkable garage in the world. The garage that invented an industry, that reinvented work with a few simple rules. Work quickly, no bureaucracy, just invent. For six decades, this garage has been the workshop of the world's inventors. It will be still, because the company that began in this garage will return to the rules of this garage. Watch. He talked the talk. I'm the greatest, I'm the prettiest, I'm the fastest. He walked the walk. Here was something else. But when his dream, future heavyweight champion of the world, collided with his cause. My religion means more to me than some fuck. He divided a nation. This is my destiny. And changed the world. You ready? I told you I was coming. Now the story of how he became the greatest athlete of our time. Run like a butterfly, sting like a bee. An ABC original motion picture event. This is my history today. I am king of the world. Terrence Howard and the practice is Steve Harris star in Muhammad Ali, King of the World. Monday, January 10th on ABC. First time ever at Levitt's. This Saturday and Sunday only, pay no interest until 2002. Pay no interest in 2000. Pay no interest in 2001. Pay no interest at all until 2002. Choose from great brand names like Bassett, Rowe, and Berkline. Over 100,000 pieces of furniture in the tri-state area. And pay no interest until 2002. Hurry, this special finance offer is available Saturday and Sunday only. You love it at Levitt's. Over the past hundred years, Ford has made automotive history time and time again. And for the last time this century, we're doing it again. Presenting the 20th Century Clearance from your Tri-State Quality Ford Store. It's the biggest automotive sales event in history. It's also your last chance to get the deals of the century and almost everything in stock. Like Ford Explorer. Now get Explorer for $3.89 a month with zero down, no first payment, and no security deposit. So come into your Tri-State Quality Ford Store today. Because when Century Clearance ends, it's history. <laughs> Ecampus.com, textbooks and stuff, cheap, save up to 50%, and shipping's always free. Live from around the world, this is ABC 2000. Once again, Peter Jennings. 10 after 2 in the afternoon, big ban at the Houses of Parliament in London. We were talking a little bit earlier about how people in the Pacific were jostling with one another to be the first nations into the 21st century. Whenever we have a complicated question here, we turn to Robert Crow, which I wonder how come all of those... Asian nations, those Pacific nations, get to celebrate first and we have to wait 15 or 16 hours? Yeah, good question. I asked myself the same question. It turns out the answer is about 115 years old. In Washington, D.C., in the 1880s, 25 nations got together to figure out where a day on Earth should begin. And they were looking for an empty place. The emptiest place you could find, of course, is the Pacific Ocean. So they chose this line right here. This is the 180th meridian. It is almost empty, except for here. These are a bunch of Siberians. And here, this is the little island nation of Fiji. So let me just change slides, and I'll show you the problem here. The line that they chose originally ran right through Fiji. Now let me show you what the practical difficulties of that are. Next slide. <clears throat> you wake up one morning, let's make it a Monday morning in Fiji, you're whistling and you think, okay, I'm ready to go to work, but just possibly the international date line, this is conceivable, could run right through your home, so you walk in to have breakfast, it's 8 a.m. on Sunday. Now, no normal human being can contain this kind of a contradiction, so next slide, they made the, no the logical solution. Let's take a look at the na international date line, the way it was reconceived, they just moved around people. Well, that's fine, except, of course, once you make an exception for somebody, you have to make an exception for the next guy who asked. And the next guy who asked was recently the head of the island nation of Kiribati. Let's take a look at the, at the nation of Kiribati. You see here it spans to the dateline. So part of Kiribati is on one day and part of Kiribati is on the other day. So the president of Kiribati said, look, I want my whole nation to have one time together. And so he unilaterally pushed the international dateline two hours, <laughs> into 1999. 
which, and then to clinch it, he chose to name, as we've said all morning, the easternmost spot, Millennium Island. I guess hoping that's to attract... That, that's that beach they were dancing on yes, this morning. Yes, they got us. Right. All right, so you can't argue. But look what it means. It means that this, this president stuck the year 2000 deep in, two hours into 1999. He sort of thrust time two hours backwards. Or if you like, he extended the 21st century two extra hours and shortened the 20th century by two. And he can do that because, after all, it's just time. The nations around his country said, he can't do that. Stop him. And they went to the UN. And the UN said, and this is a general principle for the whole day, time is your business. We don't fight wars over it. It's not a law. It's a gentleman's agreement. And this gentleman did his deed. And this is why Fiji and Tonga and New Zealand and Kiribati jostled, as I said, everybody. each other for so long. Because I think everybody thought they'd make money out of it. And indeed, I bet you the Kiribati has me a little pile. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. That's okay. great. Robert will be with us uh, throughout the day, among other things, taking the measure of time. We'll be back in just a moment. Whatever a moment is these days. This is ABC 2000, the celebration of the millennium. Brought to you by Energizer. They keep going and going. And by OSCAL, the calcium supplement proven effective and doctor recommended. his entire life helping others. You are a gifted surgeon. I'm not a doctor. I haven't been to medical school. Now, it's his one chance to discover his place. I've never actually seen the ocean. In a world he's never known, America's top critics are calling it a triumph. Beautifully acted, a great revelation. Four stars, a joy. Definitely one of the year's best pictures. The Cider House Rules, at PG-13. Now playing at theaters everywhere. I need love, love, to ease my mind. I need to find, find someone to call mine. My mama said. Now there's a whole new way to snack and kick back. Introducing single serving Tostito snack kits. Just be sure you pick the right time to eat them. Dig in, kick back, Tostitos. Arizona Angels coming to bat in the first. The GMC Convoy 2000 is here. Trucks with capabilities that will change the way you look at the road. Professional grade pickups, SUVs, and family vans designed better than they need to be. Like the 2000 GMC Sierra Extended Cab with the most powerful standard V8 in its class. Get up to $1,587 average finance savings with 3.9% APR on select 2000 Sierra models. GMC, do one thing, do it well. All right, everybody, if this one doesn't get your toe tapping, check your pulse. You may be dead. Here it is, coming to you in living cola. Refreshing Pepsi Cola. From the wonderful folks who put the ah in cola. I'll be signing off now, because it's my bedtime. I'll catch you on the flip side. Be there. I like this job of freedom, adventure. Uh, it puts me at one with the uh, natural elements, liberating, allows me to clear my head. One of the few things I can do whereby I actually don't hear music in my head. Um, brings me closer to God, uh, allows me to, to bask in the, the wonder of God. Being at the top of a mountain is one of the most incredibly beautiful experiences I've ever had. A message for the fans of NYPD Blue. Starting January 11th, NYPD Blue is back on ABC. Still on Tuesday night, still at 10, 9 central, just like it should be. Blue is back. The new season begins Tuesday, January 11th on ABC. Your discretion advised. Thanks for still being there.
Another example of the millennium madness, you're looking at Hong Kong now. Last time we had an enormous celebration in Hong Kong, not everybody celebrated, was when it was reunited with China as a whole a couple of years ago. And today they celebrate the entry into the new millennium under the leadership of the Chinese government in Beijing with a laser show, a city that has had its ups and downs, was a British colony, had its ups and downs but now enters the new millennium as part of China, reminding people everywhere the powerful ideas of technology and human rights, all of them extant in Hong Kong, the former British colony. We're going to go away to local news. We hope you'll stay with our millennium coverage. ABC 2000 will continue live from around the world in just a moment. What are your favorite moments of the millennium? A special time with family? A celebration with friends? Or one of mankind's greatest journeys? Now you can have them all on one special Kodak picture CD that's yours free. It contains all your Kodak pictures from your latest roll of film plus excerpts from life's collection of the greatest pictures of the 20th century. Look for this free limited time offer at participating Kodak retailers. Announcing the Nissan Here in Countdown event. For 14 days, just 336 hours, Nissan is offering some of the best deals of the year. Now get $500 in addition to existing incentives when you purchase or lease the new 2000 Altima, Quest, Sentra, Frontier, even Pathfinder. That's a total of $2,500 or more in savings. So what are you waiting for? You've just let another 30 seconds go by. This $2,500 or more in savings ends January 3rd. With savings on everything in the store, Huffman Koo's giant New Year's sale is really worth celebrating. But hurry, Huffman Koo's New Year's sale ends Monday. Take advantage of special financing or an extra discount for cash. Over the past hundred years, Ford has made automotive history time and time again. And for the last time this century, we're doing it again. Presenting the 20th Century Clearance from your Tri-State Quality Ford Store. It's the biggest automotive sales event in history. It's also your last chance to get the deals of the century and almost everything in stock, including Ford Focus. Now get low 4.9 financing on the all-new Funda Drive 2000 Ford Focus. So come into your Tri-State Quality Ford Store today, because when Century Clearance ends, it's history. What should you do to stop a friend from driving drunk? Whatever you have to. Years of technological achievements have made us what we are today. Jeep is the most award-winning brand of 4x4s of this millennium. So we're celebrating the next millennium with the Jeep year-end awards event. Featuring a great lease on the legendary and powerful Grand Cherokee Laredo. Get one now for zero down, $379 a month and $874 due at least signing. So get to the Jeep year-end awards event and see where a little recognition can take you. Check out this 379 lease at your Jeep dealer today. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. 
Good morning, everyone. We take you live to Times Square, where you can see people are already packing in. Yeah, thousands of people already claiming their New Year's Eve spots as they wait for midnight and the year 2000. A very special good morning to you, December 31st. So glad you're with us. I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Ushery. We're keeping an eye on things for you in the tri-state area while ABC continues its worldwide coverage. This is the final day before the year 2000. The ball is in place. That's the important thing. So are a lot of people. They're getting ready for the final countdown. The ball went up at 7 this morning, and this is a live picture right now from Times Square. Sandra Bookman is also in place there in Times Square. Sandra, what's the latest? Well, I'm going to tell you what's going on now. It's cold and I'm wet. And I know you didn't ask me how I am, but I thought I'd tell you anyway, Nancy. And probably a lot of the people that are here in Times Square, they're cold and wet too, but they're also very happy to be here. They started arriving early this morning. When we first got here, there were people that had already started sitting along the sidewalks. There's plenty of room to move around down there on Broadway and 7th. Not anymore. 42nd Street uh, and then heading up north this way at 46th Street, starting to back up with people all trying to be the first in line here because we know there's supposed to be between 1.5 million and 2 million here before that ball finally does drop. You know, actor Ron Silver has kind of acted as Mr. Millennium for the city. He's been around here this morning shaking hands, greeting people. He told us a little while ago that so far the city's party is going exactly as planned. The only thing dampening so far is this little <laughs> mist in the air, but no, I don't. I, don't, I really don't think so. People know it's a, it's a nutty world, and we live in a very open and free society. But we've taken every precaution you could take. Silver is confident that uh, nothing bad's going to happen. You may get your feet stepped on here tonight, but that's about all he believes. Uh, so far, as we said, several thousand people here in Times Square. We expect oh, about a million more. We're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, Sandra, you'll like the forecast that's coming up. Okay. All right. Well, everyone, keep an eye on Y2K concerns. And one place there's been a lot of concern is at the airports. Jim Dolan, live at Kennedy, where. It seems okay. Jim? David, did you see Sandra? She's surrounded by a couple of hundred thousand people. Look yeah. at me here. I'm the loneliest guy in New York. I'm at JFK Airport, and there is nobody here. Uh, if it weren't for the crew, I would be the loneliest guy around because the airport is empty. A, a flight did take off just a couple of minutes ago for El Al. Uh, it was an El Al Airlines for Israel. There's another one for San Juan in about a half hour. But if you take a look back here, there's some uh, tape from just a few minutes ago. There is a lot of security uh, here today, but security is about all there is here. Two buses just came by in the last few minutes. Both of them were empty. Not a single person on either bus except for the driver. And uh, so th there'll be no heavy lifting here at JFK uh, today. A lot, uh, not much going on. And uh, I don't know, if you look real closely back here, I think you can see a tumbleweed floating across the street. So uh, not much going on, and that's the way they want it to be. Reporting live from JFK, Jim Dolan, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, Jim, spend this time bonding with the crew. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys or anyone else want to go to the big party in Times Square tonight, you should know that police are conducting random searches for weapons, and you should know that any alcohol will be confiscated. Indeed, and the area virtually shut down right now, certainly to cars. Police trying to keep New York's celebration safe. Broadway and 7th Avenues from 42nd to 47th Streets are already closed. And that frozen zone will expand later this evening. All right. We will have weather, too. Lingering showers, they're going to leave, so don't worry about it. Much more local news coming up in 15 minutes. I'm Nancy Lou. And I'm David Ushery. For right now, ABC 2000 coverage continues right after a quick break. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of cola. Listen, I got it right here, buddy. It's icy cold and tasting great. Now, come on, Jeff, you tell me. Is there anybody in this world who deserves this here Pepsi more than you? Hi, Jeff. See you later, Jeff. Hey, that's what I call motivation. I don't know where she came yeah. from. The joy. For those of you just joining us, we're at the New York Stock Exchange to hear the bell ring.
And Ahmed Ali and the chairman of the New York Stock Exchange, Nick Grasso, on the left there. The uh, a place that really and truly, as Betsy Stark, who covers Wall Street for us, has told us so many times, knows how to put on a show. Are you there, Betsy? I am, Peter. You're absolutely right. You know, this is the world's biggest stock market. It knows the world is watching, and it's become customary to use the opening and closing bells as an opportunity both to publicize new companies listing on the exchange and to draw attention to the exchange itself. And as the millennium has approached, there have been a parade of famous people coming through here. Uh, the playwright Neil Simon was here earlier this week. Bishop Desmond Tutu, win winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, was here. And a certain famous former anchorman, who's a name I can't recall at the moment. I assume you mean Walter Cronkite? <laughs> That's the one. Uh, we'll have Walter Cronkite on this broadcast before the day is over. Now, talk to us a little bit about how this place is going to change because everywhere we go in the world now, somebody's open and trading, and the New York Stock Exchange is going to have to go into the next century following suit. That's true, Peter, and it's been a century of tremendous change already. I think we have some pictures to show you of what this place looked like at the turn of the century when uh, the New York Stock Exchange moved into these current quarters on Wall Street. At that time, everything about this building was considered state-of-the-art, from the architecture to the ticker tape used to record trades. Back then, trading volume was half a billion shares a day. Today, nobody blinks an eye if it's a billion shares a day. The big board used to show where the Dow Jones Industrial Average was trading was considered state of the art as well. Today, everything's electronic. 90% of the trades made here are made electronically. And in the future, as you suggest, the expectation is that stock trading will become even more fully electronic. People want to be able to trade anytime, anywhere. And there's a question about whether all these people you see running around behind me will even be necessary in the future. Well, I must say, as I do on occasion watch the financial networks, I see someone, not you, standing in the middle of a whole group of guys like this. And we can take that shot of Betsy now with people coming and going, these are traders coming back and forth across you, right? That's right, and believe it or not, Peter, there are usually many more of them here than there are today. The day before a holiday is typically uh, an uneventful day, a light trading day, and that's been the case this week. I mean, yesterday was one of the lightest trading days of the year. A lot of people have already gotten a jump on the holiday weekend. There's an awful lot to celebrate this year on Wall Street. Now, am I recall correcting, Carlene, that there were 12 original stocks on the, on, on the original New York Exchange? I think you told me the other day only one is still, still on the board. That's right, another sign of just how much things have changed. Back in 1896, when the Dow Jones Industrial Average was introduced, there were just 12 stocks. Only General Electric of those 12 remains. Today, there are 30 stocks in the Dow. Just last month, four companies got booted out. Four more added, among them Microsoft and Intel, added to reflect just how important technology is to the U.S. economy. And what is the pressure on human beings there now, given the fact that they're going to go to a 24-hour trading day? Well, if we do go to a 24-hour trading, we'll start here at the New York Stock Exchange with an evening session. What it means is that there will be a, a, a second session of, of personnel who will have to come here to the exchange. Nobody's too excited about that. The trading hours here are pretty civilized, 9.30 to 4. Many people get in earlier and do stay later. But it is going to change the way of life. And in our recent past, of course, there is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, you just can't say enough about the NASDAQ this year, Peter. It's the technology heavy market, and that's where the action has been this year. The NASDAQ is on course to be up 84% this year. That's the single biggest gain ever for any U.S. stock market. There were stocks that were up 700% in a day, as you know, made no money. I mean, what we saw was the internet con economy really come alive and dot-com fever took over as investors just tried to ride the wave. A lot of them made money that way, but people here on Wall Street say a shakeout's inevitable and there will be money lost too. Betsy, thank you very much. We look forward to talking to you a little later on the day. I'm again, you're stunned at the calm that women, I know of no man who works the floor at the moment, that women exhibit working on the floor like that. The only busier place in town at the moment right now is Times Square. Take a look a little after 9.30 in the morning. People have come and they have stayed. How long they will stay is anybody's guess, but they are there at the moment and having a bowl. There's Jack Ford down there somewhere and Diane Sawyer.
We'll be back right after this. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. Wouldn't it be great to have instant access to information on the internet, wherever you are? Soon, you'll be able to. Hey, Annie Matthews, what's on your plate today? Today's going to be great, but really busy. 10, maybe 15 cuts. Lunch's here, Annie. I'll probably grab a quick bite when I can. Annie, you're two o'clock's here. And maybe get heartburn. I used to think Tums if I'd already eaten. Not anymore. Now you can take Pepsid AC whenever you need it. Pepsid AC controls heartburn before, during, or even after you eat. Of course I can take you. No matter what's on your plate, today should be heartburn free with Pepsid AC. You are a skilled and gifted surgeon. He left behind the only family he's ever known. By whom? To find his place in the world. I've never actually seen the ocean. The Los Angeles Times calls it a superb film. <laughs> and now it's been nominated for two Golden Globe Awards. Rex Reed says it's definitely one of the year's best pictures. I love you. The Cider House Rules, rated PG-13. Now in select cities everywhere Christmas Day. Celebrate ABC's Super January with the BCS. Wisconsin meets Stanford in the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. Alabama faces Michigan in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Number three, Nebraska battles number five, Tennessee in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And number one, Florida State meets number two, Virginia Tech for the national championship down in New Orleans in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. of making Monday night special. This week, San Francisco, Atlanta at 9, 6 Pacific. Toy Story 2 is the most fun you'll have at the movies this year. Get ready for never-before-seen Toy Story 2 Outtakes. It's now funnier than ever. It'll help here, please. <laughs> Toy Story 2 Outtakes now playing in theaters. Rated G. Jump. No! Out the window. Critics are calling Bicentennial Man a wonderful holiday movie. <laughs> Robin Williams is brilliant. Do you have any friends? Only Wolfie. That is the extent of his skills. Bicentennial Man, a Chris Columbus film where PG now playing. What are your favorite moments of the millennium? A special time with family? A celebration with friends? Or one of mankind's greatest journeys? Now you can have them all on one special Kodak Picture CD that's yours free. It contains all your Kodak pictures from your latest roll of film, plus excerpts from life's collection of the greatest pictures of the 20th century. Look for this free, limited-time offer at participating Kodak retailers. Announcing the Nissan Here in Countdown event. For 14 days, just 336 hours, Nissan is offering some of the best deals of the year. Now get $500 in addition to existing incentives when you purchase or lease the new 2000 Altima, Quest, Sentra, Frontier, even Pathfinder. That's a total of $2,500 or more in savings. So what are you waiting for? You've just let another 30 seconds go by. This $2,500 or more in savings ends January 3rd. I don't know about you, but I don't have time to shop for the best price on a mattress. That's why I'm excited about the Macy Bed Low Price Guarantee. Macy's won't be undersold, so I'm getting the best price from the store I've trusted all my life. During our biggest mattress sale of the season, save 50% plus 10% and extra dollars off with no payment, no interest for three months and get free delivery and free bed frame. For the guaranteed low price, come to Macy's or call 1-800-MACY-BED. From Times Square in New York and around the world, this is ABC 2000. Once again, Peter Jennings. More than a year ago when we were beginning to do our first serious Y2K stories and where would the millennium bug show up, if anywhere, I remember we did one on a fire 
pumper, a pumping piece of apparatus because it was one of those things that people thought people might not find the bug in. It reminds us this morning John Miller's all over New York City for us to watch the panoply of life unfold as the century changes and at the moment he's with the fire commissioner of New York City, Thomas Von Essen up on 133rd Street or up on 103rd Street. John. Well, Peter, the fire commissioner's job has changed a great deal. Commissioner Von Essen is not just in charge of the fire department. The fire department has also enveloped the ambulance service for the city. That means you've got a lot to think about tonight, fire and medical emergencies. This is a big night for the emergency medical service. It's probably the busiest of the year. There's, also, there's always a lot of minor injuries that happen when you get that many people together having a lot of fun. And it's hard to move around in there. Very difficult. So we've tried to come up with different ways of having roving patrols inside of Times Square to prevent us from having to get ambulances in every time somebody needs help. Using golf carts, people on foot? Yeah, we've got roving patrols of EMTs and paramedics, uh, firefighters and fire officers. We've got golf carts that we can get people out quickly without having to get ambulances in. And we think we're ready for lots of people coming out to have a great time. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas Von Essen, and I'm sure John, that you spent a lot one, of time John, preparing one, for this. John, I have one quick question for the Commissioner. Oh, sure how thing. Long, question how long, from Peter Jennings. How long ago did they get all of their pumping equipment Y2K compliant? How long ago did you get all of your pumping equipment and everything else Y2K compliant? Our, our pumps, our uh, ladders and engines have really been compliant since, uh, uh, since we've got them. Uh, they, they haven't had a lot of computer chips on them that we've had to worry about in that area. But we've brought everything up, we've tested everything, we've had the manufacturers come in just to make sure there aren't any glitches and we feel secure about them. Very good, thanks. Thanks very much, thank you Chief, thank you John. When we come back we're gonna go down into Times Square because Diane Sawyer is out there and so is Jack Ford. They've been talking to the people who've come for this great event. Please stay with us. Who is it? It's me, Influenza! You know, the flu. Coming in! He's influenza. How are you? And he'll make you miserable with symptoms like fatigue, high fever, cough, headache, and body aches. People say I have an infectious laugh. What do you think? <laughs> Introducing Relenza, a new prescription medicine to help you start feeling better sooner. The virus that causes the flu lives in the lungs. Go away. If you think you have symptoms of the flu, talk to your doctor right away. I'm not bugging you, am I? Ugh. Relenza is an antiviral medicine that's inhaled. You should be shown how to use the inhaler. Those with chronic lung disease or asthma may experience wheezing and should consult their doctor. Side effects occurred in 3% or less of patients and included nausea, diarrhea, and sinusitis. Soup. <laughs> yeah, that'll do the trick. The soup. <laughs> if your doctor says it's influenza, ask about Relenza. It's a freedom, adventure, uh... It puts me at one with the uh, natural elements, liberating, allows me to clear my head. One of the few things I can do whereby I actually don't hear music in my head. Um, brings me closer to God, uh, allows me to, to bask in the, the wonder of God. Being at the top of a mountain is one of the most incredibly beautiful experiences I've ever had. Ever have that dream where you're driving? Introducing the next Celica. Go! It's Millennium Madness now, but once the confetti clears, there's an election to settle. The 2000 vote. No team covers it better than Sam, Cokie, and the Georges. Sunday. Will Bush stumble in New Hampshire and Gore is feeling the heat from Bradley? New century, new president. And this week, first with all the politics that matter, Sunday. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Our time is 9.45 and the crowds are already big and building as the party getting louder in Times Square, where it's New Year's every hour now. You betcha. We hope you've been enjoying ABC's Around the World coverage. We have got you covered locally. I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Ushery. For those of you just starting your day this New Year's Eve, you may be a bit late. 
Because well, long before the sun came up, the crowds were gathering in Times Square to ha help mark the new year in each and every time zone. There you see the party still going strong. Sandra Bookman there live taking it all in. Sandra? That's right, Nancy. The party is still going. As you know, it started early this morning. A few people, and now there's quite a bit. If you can see behind me, uh, Broadway here from 42nd Street is filled with people, several thousand people. Now, basically, the plan by police here is that they're going to put people in these pens. The pens are basically made up by barricades, and as one pen gets filled up, uh, they'll close it off, and then they'll move people over into the other barricades. Now, up 42nd Street, uh, it's pretty filled with folks, but when you get down to 42nd, 46th, rather, the street is a little, still a little bit empty, but I got a feeling in a few hours, as folks start to pour it off the subway system, get out of bed, they're going to be here in Times Square. The NYPD says with seven to 8,000 officers here today, they'll be ready for the crowd. We're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Sandra, very much. Well, things are a bit more focused, a bit more serious in Lower Manhattan, where the Office of Emergency Management is keeping watch on the city. And city officials are not expecting trouble, but they are ready nonetheless. Sarah Wallace is live at OEM headquarters with more on that. Sarah? Hi, Nancy. Hi, David. This actually is the first shot that we've gotten today of the command center. It's the bunker here. That's what it's nicknamed. It's actually the nerve center for any crisis that should occur in the city over the next couple of days. You might be able to see behind me a number of people gathered here. There are 28 city agencies represented, 23 state and federal agencies, as well as members of business, for instance, the securities industry. The mayor came by just a few moments ago told us there are no problems but they are looking very carefully at what's happening in other parts of the world that have already reached the new millennium including Australia they're keeping an eye on that to see if there's anything they need to know here he says they're definitely ready though he believes they are because actually they have even practiced all of the outside agencies have also tested their systems in other words we've moved the clock ahead pretended it was 2000 to see if everything would work. And uh, from what we can tell, all the critical operations of government and all the critical operations of Con Edison and the other agencies uh, work. One of the things that the police commissioner told us, he also spoke a few months ago, was that they have had a number of hoax threats in the last couple of weeks. They have made several arrests on that, but again, no serious threats, nothing that they believe is a problem at this point. Of course, this is going to increase throughout the day. And as of 8 o'clock tonight, every commissioner or deputy commissioner from every major agency will be represented here. And this will stay open until the afternoon of Monday, January 3rd. Live from the Nerve Center, Sarah Wallace, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you very much, Sarah. All right, a quick check of the weather. It's cloudy most places right now. There have been some showers. They're going to move on. It's 35 degrees, a relative humidity right now, 92%. Again, those sprinkles should move on. It should be a bit sunnier this afternoon. The high will get up to about 44. And what you need to know for tonight, it'll get down to 36 degrees, but it'll still be hot and sizzling in Times Square. I don't think the people in Times Square care. I'm Nancy Lou. I'm David Usher, ABC 2000. Return. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update brought to you by Toyota taking you into the new millennium. Time is running out on the year's biggest blockbuster, Toyota Thon 2000. Don't miss edge of your seat action and red hot values on the year 2000 Toyotas. Now, it's all about time. Miss it and you'll get left behind. Toyota Thon 2000. And soon at your Toyota dealer. Now, what'll it be, sweetheart? Let me guess. A nice, cold Pepsi. I wouldn't want to hear one of those crazy voices of yours, huh? Honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hit it, fellas. As the world celebrates, Times Square 2000 celebrates. There, where Broadway and 7th Avenue meet one another, 
the upper end of Times Square, all those umbrellas or parasols are here because they're currently celebrating midnight in Japan. And in the ancient city of Nara in Japan, where it's just 10 minutes before midnight, they're celebrating in a much more contemporary way. Bringing out the old year is a tradition for New Year's Day in Japan, and Nara is the theater of Japan's early history in the 6th and 7th century. But this is the way they want to do it today. A good example of why things Japanese have become immensely popular in Asia. Go to downtown Tokyo today and you will find this kind of life and you go almost anywhere else in Asia. And we're, while we're watching this, we might even bring in Mark Litke, who lives in Japan, but is today in Shanghai. Mark, is this traditional Japanese fair today? Well, it wasn't quite what I expected. It's not uh, really traditional. but. The this is a society that is uh, deeply ritualistic and traditional. You know, over the years, one of the most interesting things I've ever heard describing Japan was that this was a nation of 120 million people that acted like a tribal village of 120 families. Uh, and that comes uh, largely from the 200 or so years that Japan was cut off by its own choice from the rest of the world, from the early 1600s to the mid-1800s. And it was in those years that the very uh, rigid mindset, the Shanghai. bureaucracy, the traditional behavior of the Japanese was shaped. Uh, and in many ways, Japan is a nation that lost out on much of the development of the last couple mm. of centuries. And it is because it's still stuck a bit in that old traditional mind war mindset that it sometimes has difficulties reacting quickly and adapting to so many of the changes that are needed. Uh, and anybody who's ever over the years dealt with Japanese trade issues know how frustrating that can be. Here's a familiar figure to us, Mao. It's night there on the banks of the Huangpo River, so I know it's difficult for you to turn to your, I guess, left and look at the new modern cities across the river, but can you give us any sense of the contrast from where you are on the Bund to the other side? Well, on the, what, what was just behind me was the old traditional bund uh, of the colonial powers built by the British in the 20s. And right across the river, uh, which you may be seeing now, is the future. This is the China that, this is the, the image that China is desperate to project to the world. So much of what's happening in China today has to do with pride and trying to live down centuries of humiliation. China is desperate to prove to the world that it is a prosperous, self-confident, powerful nation worthy of respect. Uh, hence, all this modernity across the river, which 10 years ago was a rice field. I think you know when you were visiting here not long ago, Peter, you were up in some of those buildings which were just scaffolding. Now they're all completed. Too high for me. Mark Litke is our chief Asian correspondent, so I want to take advantage of his Japanese background for a moment. The Japanese have had a very bad patch over the last decade, and as they go into this 21st century and we see all of this 
sort of hip goings on. Are they, are they self-conscious? Are they feeling better about themselves? Well, I'm not sure that they are. This is the uh, lost decade, they're calling it, the 90s, and they're very happy to be out of it. Maybe that's why some of this slightly uh, light and frivolous entertainment is a way of forgetting how terrible it's been. The Japanese were deeply shaken by the collapse of their economy after feeling they were on top of the world only 10 years ago. They were deeply shaken by the Kobe earthquake, which shattered their faith in their country's uh, strength and resiliency and this, the, the faith in their own government, which couldn't help them during the aftermath of the quake. And they were deeply troubled by the terrible Om Shinrikyo uh, gas attack in the subways in Tokyo only a few months later, which shattered their belief in their nation as one of the safest places on earth. These are deep, deep psychological traumas that uh, the country I don't think is out of yet. And uh, I think there's a great deal of hope that the, the new century and the, the shaking generation. up of the society that's taken place, yes, the new generation will allow the country to step forward. Thanks. But it's still slow going. Thanks, Mark. And somebody said just the other day, Peter. culture is like water. It flew, flowed first from the United States to Japan, and now you can see this young, modern culture flowing to the rest of Asia. Three minutes until midnight in Japan. This is the ancient capital, as we said, though it doesn't look a good deal like it at the moment. You get some hints of it off in the distance there. You see the etching of the trees there. This is the place where they really took the Millennium Bug very seriously. The Japanese government called on people to stockpile food and water and fuel and medicine ahead of this New Year's holiday, and they were roundly criticized for it. the most important festival in all of the Japanese calendar. Remember, we're celebrating a lot of different calendars and many different measurements of time around the world today, but everything in Japan is closed for this celebration.
rising sun, the new century begins. 126 million people celebrating the arrival of the 21st century. In Times Square, they're celebrating right along with the Japanese. I got it. Uh, In Times Square, they're celebrating right along Korea. with the Japanese, as you can Happy see. New Year to the world. With the petals. Uh, now and now we go to Korea to Pushingak in Seoul. Pushingak, the great landmark on Chogno Street, the main street of downtown Seoul, to the Bell Pavilion. Talk about passages of time. The original bell built here was cast in 1468. And I assume this is the local anchor person doing his job. We'll be right back in a moment to continue celebrating with the Japanese and with the Koreans. Why do echoes carry so well? Because they're designed from the inside out. What do you have, folks? A large pepperoni pizza. Can I Pepsi, please? Sure thing, Curly. Thank you. Uh, we both know I ordered a Pepsi call. And now you've insulted me by offering me this. this. But I'd like to give you a chance to make immense capiche. Crest Extra Whitening Toothpaste really works? They do. It's the first and only toothpaste. It's ADA accepted for whitening by polishing away surface stains. Try Crest Extra Whitening. Cellular One, clear across America. Should have used Energizer. They keep going and going and going and going. Frankly, if I'm like in my room or something, I'm having some trouble, some winged creature comes in and blowing and stuff like I do yeah. on the show, oh no. Here comes the <laughs> oh, I would be so out of there. That's what I like about the view. Monday, Super January kicks off with the angelic John Die, live on an all new view. The Super January ABC Daytime. Hey! You're invited to the biggest party of the year. Congratulations on the turnout. All My Children's Crystal Ball. May I have this dance? Experience the excitement. This is going to be a surprise announcement. Share the romance. Will you marry me? You won't believe what happens. Oh, God! By invitation only, All My Children's Crystal Ball continues ABC Daytime. 
Simmons is dropping the ball, on the competition that is. Only Simmons has Beauty Rest pocketed coil springs to reduce movement and help give you undisturbed sleep. No matter what's rolling around next to you, Beauty Rest by Simmons, the Do Not Disturb mattress. Right now, buy any new Simmons Beauty Rest at 1 800 mattress and save 50 to 70% off regular department store prices during our giant millennium closeout. Call 1 800 mattress, click on mattress.com, or visit one of our more than 500 nationwide showrooms. Announcing the Nissan Here in Countdown event. For 14 days, just 336 hours, Nissan is offering some of the best deals of the year. Now get $500 in addition to existing incentives when you purchase or lease the new 2000 Altima, Quest, Sentra, Frontier, even Pathfinder. That's a total of $2,500 or more in savings. So what are you waiting for? You've just let another 30 seconds go by. This $2,500 or more in savings ends January 3rd. The countdown has begun to the dawning of the next millennium. Siemens Furniture celebrates with markdowns in every department and no down payment, no finance charges, and no monthly payments until 2001 or an extra 5% off every piece of furniture you buy. Siemens Furniture's Millennium Celebration going on now with special New Year's hours and no payments until 2001. From around the world, ABC 2000 continues. Once again, from Times Square, Peter Jennings. Welcome back. We're continuing to take the measure of time around the world. Sometimes it goes very slowly, sometimes it goes very quickly. And it's really fascinating to watch how, how the people who celebrated Times Square 2000 have kept up. All those pieces of pink confetti were designed to be the equivalent of cherry blossoms as they floated down on Times Square. They've got something for almost every country around the world that's been celebrating. Immediately below us are all these extraordinary parasols. Good morning, everybody. Down there, Diane Sawyer, who's in Times Square. I know I understand completely why you get so much energy working here. Peter, good morning. Uh if Diane and I are here, we can barely hear, but I suspect you were saying hi to us down here. I was. Uh, it, what's happening, as you mentioned, is, is as part of the festivities here, a number of things are taking place. One is that Diane's wearing very cool glasses here. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, but the other thing that's taking place here is that each time we show another midnight segment in our big screen up there, everybody sort of buys into the celebration. We heard them counting down for Japan just a few moments ago, and then an explosion that, is, that will rival, I think, what you're going to hear at midnight. Around here. You've got to know, too, these people swear, you swear you're going to be here at midnight. Yeah. You're not going to. So I've been compiling a kind of survival guide. How do you do that? And it turns out the first thing you have to do when you come to Times Square is express yourself. Now, didn't you wake up this morning, Peter, and say, I think I'll put jello in my hair and some sparkle? Just look at this. We have a multitude of it. We have people, how many layers of jeans? Two. Two layers of jeans. People are wearing six and seven layers of clothes, and they have cereal boxes stuffed down into their clothes. Well, all these guys, as they, these guys have been here since we've been out here for at least two or three hours now. We're still, well, 14 hours away, but they promise they're going to be here tonight. Well, anyway, Peter, I just have to tell you that I asked them all what they're going to do in the millennium, and they all said, toy person, find a restroom. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. Right, Diane Sawyer and Jack Ford on New York's Village Green. It is absolutely true. You come to Times Square in New York, no matter where you are from, from, and someone here has an opinion about something that is going on elsewhere in the world. Let us go elsewhere in the world now. First to London, to Charlie Gibson. Charlie? Peter, you know, you were talking uh, earlier to Mark Litke about modernity, and the British, you know, I think as much as any other country are so worried about that. You'll remember Tony Blair, uh, when he became the new prime minister, wanted to change the phrase from rule Britannia to cool Britannia. The British, who were so transcendent in the world at the beginning of this century, go out now somewhat uncertain about what their role is. By the way, I should say the British have their crowds. They have now four stages around London that are beginning to have music that is going to run all the way up to midnight. Crowds are gathering all along the embankment. 
of the Thames. But to come back to this question of modernity, you know, the British wanted to show that they, along with so many nations, are ready for the 21st century. So one of the things they built is this wheel, uh, the Millennium Wheel, the London Eye, they call it, uh, that was constructed really with private money, about $35 million. Most of the money came from British Air. But of course, the British, <laughs> nothing ever seems to go totally right here. And the British always worry about whether things work in this country. And the wheel doesn't. Um, <laughs> they had inspectors who came in just a couple of days ago to look at it, and one of these pods doesn't rotate correctly as the wheel goes around. What you're seeing are some pictures of some people who were on the wheel just about a half an hour ago testing it out. But they don't consider it safe yet for the public to ride. The Prime Minister, Tony Blair, was supposed to get on it with some uh, people who won a contest tonight and be the first people to ride around. But the safety inspectors came in and said it's not working. And so it's not going to start running until about the 1st of February. So much for modernity here in Britain, Peter. Thank you, Charlie. Look forward to talking to you shortly. It is a reminder, though, at the beginning of this century, when the age of invention was just taking hold and people were utterly fascinated by technology, it is no different. Here we are at the end of the 20th century. Let's go to Paris and Barbara Walters. Well, I hate to rub it into London, but the Ferris wheel here in Paris is working. There's a huge one in the Champs-Elysees, and there will be 12. That's the big one. You can see it's working. There will be 12 smaller ones of every design that will start going off at midnight, and they're just for that one time only. But, Peter, the mood in general here uh, is subdued. You talked, you and I talked earlier about the storm, yes? And uh, it's been very bad here. They've had two hurricanes, one on Sunday in the north and then on Tuesday in the south. Half the trees, Peter, in this country are down. Even right outside by the Eiffel Tower, you can see trees down. Uh, there's an oil spill on the coast and, and, and lots of birds are dead. There are still a million people without electricity here. So that even though it's been a very good year for France, uh, uh, financially, economically, it's a subdued mood now because nature has ruled, and the last few days it's ruled uh, badly. But just briefly, Barbara, and we can come back to it throughout the day, you put your finger on something really interesting. France comes to the end of the century feeling overall very good. It's about itself, has the best economy in Europe by some accounts at the end of this year, and f is feeling that its general tendency towards leadership is justified, right? Yes, I mean, it has a mixed government. Uh, the, the prime minister and the president are of two different parties, but the socialists seem to have uh, gotten things rolling. Uh, they've privatized a lot of the industries, and as you said, uh, the economy is very good. They're introducing a 35-hour-a-week uh, work uh, week, and they don't know whether that's going to work. But I should point out, because you can see the Eiffel Tower, it's only eight hours away from midnight, and there are a lot of Americans here. The shops are full, the restaurants are full, so the tourists are feeling very, very good about today. Okay, Barbara, thanks. We'll come back to you not uh, too long. Looking forward very much. Barbara went to Paris, among other things, to talk to some of the world's greatest designers about what design and fashion was going to look like in the 21st century. We should, however, give one more tip of the hat to George W. Ferris, who, who um, developed and designed and invented the Ferris wheel for the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago. Man, we get a lot of mileage out of him today. On the other side of the world, we go now, not quite on the other side of the world, we go to Bethlehem and ABC's Bill Blakemore. Bill. Peter, it's been a very peaceful, quiet day here, except for the rehearsing you can probably hear for the concert here tonight. But we have noticed that the Palestinian police, who have been guarding, for example, the entrance to the Church of the Nativity just behind me here, have been watching very closely with uh, pictures in their hands of several people they're looking for. We've seen some of the names, Eric, John, and James. We've seen the pictures. They look Caucasian. They look like, for example, some of the American Christian fundamentalist groups th that have been here. The Israelis have been deporting some of those Christian groups, some of whom are said to be suicidal on the eve of the millennium. And we know, I spoke with the Palestinian director of security here a short time ago. He said they are taking special measures and trying to track down every last one of these people who they're worried about, especially some of these Christian fundamentalist groups that have come from America. Bill, I know that the new Palestinian Authority had hoped very much to cap capitalize, if we can stay with that picture for a second 
to capitalize on Bethlehem 2000. This is uh, Manger Square, basically. It uh, was full of cars and buses not too long ago. They've redesigned it. Do they feel that their hopes so far have been realized? Well, it's too early to tell. The crowds seem to be less than they'd expected. They certainly have poured a lot of money in $150 million that they funneled in from donations and investments from around the world. They've spruced the place up. It looks beautiful during the day with the gleaming new stone. But so far, the crowds have been rather sparse, and we'll see how it looks tonight as midnight approaches. Okay, Bill, thanks very much. Bethlehem, wakeful, tense, and not for the first time in its troubled history, waiting to see what happens next. We'll be back in just a moment. It's a freedom, adventure. Uh, it puts me at one with uh, natural elements, liberating, allows me to clear my head, one of the few things I can do whereby I actually don't hear music in my head. Um, brings me closer to God, uh, allows me to, to bask in the, the wonder of God. Being at the top of a mountain is one of the most incredibly beautiful experiences I've ever had. I went on chemo at the time my oldest daughter was getting married. We had planned everything. The fabric, the design, the whole gown. But when it was time to sew the dress, the chemo, it makes you weak. My whole life I've made clothes for other people, but for my own daughter's wedding, I was too tired to make the dress. Are you a chemotherapy patient? Ask your doctor about Procrit. Procrit is a natural way to regain red blood cells lost during chemotherapy, and more red blood cells can mean more strength. Procrit is safe and effective. In studies, only diarrhea and edema occurred more often with Procrit than placebo. Procrit is for patients with non-myeloid cancers. Call now and learn how Procrit can help you get back the strength you need, your strength for living. In life, you take the bitter with the sweet, but I plan to end up with more sweet. Spend the next week watching classics come like on, this. Come on, Devil Mice! Or you could come to the Gotta Get a Kia year-end sales event. And get a 2000 Sophia starting at $92.45 after $750 cash back. So, it's up to you. Either get $750 cash back during the Gotta Get a Kia year-end sales event or enjoy the game. Come on, Devil Mice! Touchdown! Yeah! Highlights on sports updates. You win 250. You're right there to go. $25,000. The winner is. He's won a million dollars. Who wants to be a millionaire returns January 9th on ABC. From around the world, this is ABC 2000. Once again from New York, Peter Jennings. Uh, stay with that. Uh, come on, let's go back to that picture for a second. Something I said we were going to do today, which we haven't done yet. Roger Goodman, put your hand up. Roger Goodman is our director. We've worked together for years, and this is the biggest technological challenge we have ever tried together in television. Stay still for a second. On every single wall in our control room, there are little squares. Those are television monitors, even when they're not television monitors, and every one of them represents a different part of the world. Roger, you have another control room, don't you? Now, how's it, tell me how it's going. <laughs> Roger, I, I don't know if you can hear him or not. He says we're four hours and a long way to go. We're, we're members of an enormous international television uh, consortium, and uh, we're getting these pictures from Kiribati, from New Zealand, from Shanghai, from Tokyo, partly from our own cameras when we're working independently, but also partly from the consortium. And the only place, I think, Roger, that it hasn't worked until now is in Fiji. Am I right? That's correct, Peter. Thank you. Who are you talking to up there? I'm talking to you. 
Oh, that's nice to hear. Roger Goodman, our director, it's an enormous challenge, and we'll check in throughout the day to see it is going. Right now, we want to go to Orlando because Deborah Roberts is there with some very intelligent people. When did you make your plans for New Year's Eve in 1999? Look at, first of all, Florida from our satellite camera, 22,500 miles above the Earth, and we take you right down to Deborah Roberts at Epcot. Hi, Peter. One of the things that has struck me over the last few days as I've wandered around and talked to people is just how far in advance many people made their plans to be here in Walt Disney World, the land of magic, on the eve of the new millennium. There are a thousand people from Indiana here today who said that they made their plans 10 years ago. But nobody, I have to tell you, Peter, uh, can top this group of folks whom we met just a couple of days ago. Uh, they made their plans to be here 19 years ago. And uh, let me introduce you to them. We have John and Andrea Johnston and their seven-year-old daughter, Erica. And we also have Kenneth and Mary Ann Zabricki. Kenneth and Mary Ann were 23-year-old newlyweds when they were here. 19 almost 20 years ago and John and Andrea were 23 and 29 also newlyweds now Ken let me ask you how did this all come about how did 1999 which probably felt so long away long away at that time come about well we were staying at the campsite uh, and we decided we were having such a good time here at Disney that we'd come back and stay at the Contemporary Hotel well, they Which were, was a pretty plush hotel at the time. The best place here. And uh, they, were, they were booked for years ahead of time. So we asked uh, the receptionist, how far ahead can we make a reservation? And it turns out, because of the millennium bug, December 31st, 1999 was the last date you could take. And so we looked at each other and said, we're going to take that. Oh, of course. And my favorite part, Peter, is the room rate at the time when you made your reservation. How much was it? We paid $85, or we put down a deposit for $85. $85 a night. Is what it would have cost then. And did they, on, did, they, did they honor that? Well, they, no, and now they guaranteed as of 97, it's now $385 a night. A big difference, Peter, but it is sort of in, impressive how many people saw this as a destination point for 1999. Thanks very much, Deborah. Okay, we're going to uh, continue our coverage of the world when we come back. Years of technological achievements have made us what we are today. Jeep is the most award-winning brand of 4x4s of this millennium. So we're celebrating the next millennium with the Jeep Year-End Awards event. With a Cherokee Sport lease for zero down, $269 a month and $764 due at signing, plus air and more at no extra charge. Or get a no-charge automatic on select Wranglers. So get to the Jeep Year-End Awards event and see where a little recognition can take you. Check out this $269 lease at your Jeep dealer today. a week, rediscover the thrills and chills of childhood. For an all-inclusive vacation, call 1-800-CLUB-MED or your travel agent now. Club Med. Renew. Announcing the Nissan Here in Countdown event. For 14 days, just 336 hours, Nissan is offering some of the best deals of the year. Now get $500 in addition to existing incentives when you purchase or lease the new 2000 Altima, Quest, Sentra, Frontier, even Pathfinder. That's a total of $2,500 or more in savings. So what are you waiting for? You've just let another 30 seconds go by. This $2,500 or more in savings ends January 3rd. Ecampus.com. Textbooks and stuff. Cheap. Save up to 50%. And shipping's always free.
Over the past hundred years, Ford has made automotive history time and time again. And for the last time this century, we're doing it again. Presenting the 20th Century Clearance from your Tri-State Quality Ford Store. It's the biggest automotive sales event in history. It's also your last chance to get the deals of the century on almost everything in stock, like Ford Windstar. Now lease the five-star safety-rated 2000 Ford Windstar for just $269 a month. So come into your Tri-State Quality Ford Store today, because when Century Clearance ends, it's history. ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. And good morning, everyone. We're now just 13 and a half hours away from the year 2000, but in Times Square, you'd think it was here already, Nancy. You betcha. There in the crossroads of the world, revelers have been celebrating with people throughout the world. The excitement is building in Times Square, and so are the crowds. We're glad you're with us on this very special morning. I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Ushery. We're, of course, keeping an eye on things happening locally while ABC covers the world. And as you can see there, the party already on in Times Square. And it has been going since very early hours of the morning. If you're just getting up, you're late. Sandra Bookman has been there all morning. She's there live. Sandra. Hey, Nancy, you're right. You're behind if you're just getting up. We've been up here for hours. And as you saw those red balloons with the gold, uh, tassels as you uh, we came on here. Well, we love props and the uh, people out here at Times Square are going to get plenty of props today. These are just a few of the goodies. Let me tell you that if you're out here celebrating, they're going to make sure that you're in the party mood. You know, you got your what do you call these pom poms? Yes, I guess it's so, sort of a lay here. And my personal favorite is going to be this Mylar wig that um, I think my head's too big for. But they're giving these out during the course of the day. Every hour, there's a kind of theme. Uh, there's a, 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 a beard here when Father Time comes out. So if you're headed down to Times Square, come on the bus, come on the subway. Do not try and drive your car down here. The city also says, don't drink alcohol. If you're caught, you're going to be cited and the alcohol taken, taken away. But they do want you to come down and enjoy. Just get ready for the crowds because they've already started to show up. We're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Sandra, bring me back one of those wigs, all right? It's happening. David, I think your head is too big for this wig. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. In New York, no one will give you a second look. That's true. That thing. Well... <laughs> Tappy Phillips is live in Grand Central where they've been having some ATM problems. Of course, the question, Tappy, are they Y2K related? Well, we don't know that, of course, yet, David. What we have here is two ATM machines out of the bank of eight here. They some, those two say they are unable to accept deposits or unable to dispense cash at this point. Fortunately, there are not too many people here, so there are other machines that are operating or able to service the people. Uh, in fact, it has been a very light rush hour over here, overall here at Grand Central. And in fact, about half of the people here are visitors and not regular commuters, so the ATM problem is really only an annoyance at this point. Uh, Chase says they are looking into the problem here. They say it is not uncommon for about one to two percent of ATMs system-wide to be out of service at any given time based on uh, refilling, giving, uh, putting in more cash. Now, as I said, it has been a very light rush hour here in Grand Central. You can see behind me there's not really too many people here at this point. But uh, I did talk to the station manager earlier. He said uh, he expected the crowds to build as the day goes on, as people choose to take the train into the city to celebrate the new year. I'm Tappy Phillips, live in Grand Central, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Tappy, thank you. Well, speaking of ATMs yes. and money, a lot of people dreaming of becoming millennium millionaires. Mm -hmm. And we'll know who the winner of the $100 million jackpot is tonight at 627, where we'll have the live drawing. There have been long lines uh, at many places this morning. New York State lottery officials say today's ticket sales could top $10 million. Keep in mind the odds of winning 53 million to one. And you should know Y2K has already arrived in other parts of the world. No problem. Right. Have a great morning. I'm Nancy Lowe. I'm David Usher. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News update brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of cola. Listen, I got it right here, buddy. It's icy cold and tasting great. Now, come on, Jeff, you tell me. Is there anybody in this world who deserves this here Pepsi more than you? Hi, Jeff. See you later, Jeff. Hey, that's what I call motivation. I don't know where she came yeah. from. The joy.
Well, we have something exciting for you. Hello, and welcome years to ago, the South Pole, where the temperature is a chilly minus 30 <laughs> degrees centigrade. We celebrated New Year's Eve here about four and a half hours ago, but the most important ceremony of the evening is still to come. With me is Larry Hottam of the, new, of the US Geological Survey. Larry, we're going to move the pole. Why? We have to move it every year, uh, or place it every year at a new location uh, because of the movement of the ice. So the ice is moving. We're on, yeah. we're on two miles of ice and it's moving. That's correct. It's about 10 meters per year. Okay, and if we look behind us, what do we see as we stand? You should here? see a line of markers going back to at least 1986, uh, where the pole was uh, at each year. Okay, now, nearly 90 years ago, in 1912, in January, Robert Scott, Captain Scott, arrived That's on right. this spot. Yeah. He'd been beaten, there was a Norwegian flag flying on the pole. How on earth did he know he'd got the right place? Yeah, he used an astronomic method, uh, which is observations on the sun, uh, to determine the location of the pole plus or minus 200, uh, two to 300 meters, which is about uh, the same accuracy that Raoul Amundsen had used uh, for a method that he had used at that time. Okay, now ever since then, the ice has been moving. So how far are we from Scotland? Approximately 1,000 meters okay. from here. It's a, thousand meters it's a thousand meters behind us. Yes, that's correct. Is it still on the surface? Probably not, uh, well, we know it's not, uh, it, because of the drifting of the snow, accumulation of snow, it's probably about 20 to 25 feet below the surface. Okay, now you're about to, to plant the new pole. How do you know that you've got the right place? Today we use the most modern positioning technology and that's signals from the global positioning system. And the accuracy that we have for the position of the pole is approximately one or two centimeters relative to our continuous base station that's located over here in the Skylab of the dome of the South Pole Station. Okay, now you did that yesterday, didn't we you? We did that yesterday. Almost a hundred years since Robert Scott set off. Robert Scott set off to uh, to Antarctica. Here we are, live and then live with videotape uh, from about the South Pole. Satellites. And we need about 15 minutes of data. Observation started at 0420 GMT. Yeah, that looks good. We're setting Odin up on the point, and that should be within a centimeter or two of the location of the pole on January 1st, 2000. <laughs> okay, shall we walk down and, and go and do it? This is quite a privilege, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a very important event. It occurs every year to uh, set a new marker at the location of the pole on the 1st of January. Okay, now the, there's something very interesting about this pole. It's got a wonderful yeah. plaque on top, hasn't it? This is a specially made marker here at the South Pole. It's been a, tr a tradition for the past six years. Okay, and what does it say? And it says, uh, it's very unique in, that it, in this design representing uh, uniqueness about the being at this location of the South Pole. Okay, Larry, should we do the business? Take over with the ceremony. Yes. I'm now placing this marker at the location of the South Pole on this day, January 1st, uh, 2000. We wish uh, everyone, uh, all members, of the scientific community and the Antarctic support people and the Antarctic program. And everybody who's <laughs> watching this, all the viewers, a very happy New Year's, happy century, and happy millennium. Okay, that's the ceremony done. Let's party! <laughs> you see the people in the background there who've got on the tuxedo or dinner jackets at the South Pole? There in the vast emptiness of this polar plateau, which is breathtaking at any given time, more people than we had anticipated. But as they move the pole, it has to be done every year. Lenore, Idaho. Got a message for home? Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. Okay, who else have we got here? Hi, Ethan Rogers. Well, while, well, while this is the consortium, while the consortium prepares to party, as they put it. Eat your heart out, those of you who are not living in Miami. When we come back, we're going to talk to one of the great astrophysicists in the world, Dr. Neil Tyson from the Hayden Planetarium, about the next century and the next plateaus of discovery. ABC 2000 will continue live from around the world in just a moment. This 
I got it right here, buddy. It's icy cold and tasting great. Now, come on, Jeff, you tell me. Is there anybody in this world who deserves this here Pepsi more than you? Hi, Jeff. See you later, Jeff. Hey, that's what I call motivation. I don't know where she came yeah. from. The joy. Introducing the new AccuView 2 contact lens. So natural, it feels like you're wearing nothing at all. For a free trial pair, call us or visit your eye care professional. Cellular One, clear across America. ABC is the place to be for all the tradition and pageantry of college football on New Year's Day. Reaches touchdown! At 1 Eastern, Florida takes on Michigan State, powerhouse.com Citrus Bowl. At 4.30 Eastern, open up the history books. Here comes Ron Dane. Heisman winner Ron Dane leads Wisconsin against Stanford in the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. 8.30 Eastern, Alabama, Michigan in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Fumble! It all kicks off at 11 a.m. with the Tournament of Roses Parade. New Year's Day on KBC. If you were a new luxury car, how would you stand apart from the rest? Would you have the most powerful V6 in your class? Or the largest interior? Maybe you'd offer amenities you couldn't find anywhere else. Imagine how special you'd be if you could claim all of them. Presenting the all-new Infiniti i30. It's all the best thinking. You know, moms like this often wonder... What helps kids build strong bodies? Well, they could lift 300 pounds a day or wear this absurd costume. He's not fooling anyone. Or you can give them Wonder Bread with peanut butter like my mom gave me. Wonder has a vitamins, awesome iron purpose. It's soft and delicious too, so do what I do. Remember the wonder. <laughs> medic. I need a medic. Announcing the Nissan Here in Countdown event. For 14 days, just 336 hours, Nissan is offering some of the best deals of the year. Now get $500 in addition to existing incentives when you purchase or lease the new 2000 Ultima, Quest, Sentra, Frontier, even Pathfinder. That's a total of $2,500 or more in savings. So what are you waiting for? You've just let another 30 seconds go by. This $2,500 or more in savings ends January 3rd. In a home where every child has a place to rest his head. Good night, you princes of Maine, you kings of New England. There is one who will risk everything for a chance to follow his heart. You knew this was going to happen. He's a young man. Critics rave it's easily one of the best films of this or any year. A 10, emotionally uplifting, a truly great movie. I love you. The Cider House Rules, rated PG-13. Now playing select theaters everywhere Christmas Day. Over the past hundred years, Ford has made automotive history time and time again. And for the last time this century, we're doing it again. Presenting the 20th Century Clearance from your Tri-State Quality Ford Store. It's the biggest automotive sales event in history. It's also your last chance to get the deals of the century on almost everything in stock. Like Ford Explorer. Now get Explorer for $3.89 a month with zero down, no first payment, and no security deposit. So come into your Tri-State Quality Ford Store today. Because when Century Clearance ends, it's history. From around the world, this is ABC 2000. Once again from Times Square, Peter Jennings. Well, it isn't even 11 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, and if you want to come down for Times Square later on today, I think you're going to have a very hard time getting here because that Times Square, the village green of this city, um, center of the universe from New Yorker's point of view, is already beginning to fill up. We're very pleased that Dr. Neil Tyson, as I said, one of the world's great astrophysicists and the director of the Hayden Planetarium, got through here today. Yeah. Watching that stuff from the, from the Antarctic is fascinating. Remind, tell us again, nice and clearly, because no one does it better, well, that, why that, they move the pole. That pole is not stuck in the ground. It's stuck in a glacial sheet. 
the, and glaciers move, as that's what they love to do. And over time, over the year, the glacier moves the pole that they inserted a year ago away from the where it's supposed to be, so then they just replant it. It's very dramatic to see that long, long yes, line of right. poles going up for the last several years. When, when you talk about millennium, you sure mean something different than most of us. Well, millennium is such a small slice of time in the spectrum of the universe. I mean, we've got the Big Bang happening 13 billion years ago. You know, what's a thousand years between friends? Uh, much has happened in the universe since then, and uh, I and my colleagues spent our careers studying the evolution of phenomenon throughout that time. We managed to get a visual representation of the Big Bang here. Can you tell us what we're looking at? Oh, certainly. Uh, all evidence points to the fact that the entire universe began as, as a single point of very high density that then exploded and brought forth all matter and energy into existence, out of which galaxies, planets, stars, and people were formed. And the uh, so what you have... This is happening, what we're looking at, over millions of years? Uh, yeah, well, actually, a lot happened in even the first few minutes. And uh, we, have, we can tra trace our laws of physics that far back. And there's a point where our laws of physics break down. We've got people working on that. Right. <laughs> but the, um, most of the universe we are familiar with is long after all of the real excitement took place in the early universe. Well, when we come back, I want to ask you to give us some sense of where we fit in the history Certainly. of time. I think people will find it extraordinarily dramatic when they hear just uh, how unimportant we are in terms of the whole line of time. We'll be back in just a moment with Dr. Tyson. This is ABC 2000, the celebration of the millennium. Brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of cola. And by Toyota, taking you into the new millennium. I need love, love to ease my mind. I need to find, find someone to call mine. My mama said, Now there's a whole new way to snack and kick back. Introducing single-serving Tostito Snack Kits. Just be sure you pick the right time to eat them. Dig in, kick back, Tostitos. Arizona Angels coming to bat in the first. Seven, six, five, four, Year 2000 Corolla. Millennium proof dependability. I became famous playing Superman, a man who could fly. Now I can't move or even breathe on my own. But after my accident, when I knew I would live, I learned an important lesson. My disability need not be disabling. I can still pursue my career as an actor and director. So tell your kids not to become discouraged in the face of adversity. Tell them that with faith, their bad days are just good days in disguise. You don't need any special eloquence to talk to your kids. Just the act of talking to them can be a spiritual experience. The right words will come. So tell them to have faith. Just like you, we care about how your kids feel. Hi. I need to pick up my car? You, you are. Yes, me, please. Okay. Can you spell that, please? B-L-E-E-T-H. You know, maybe I should just come back another time. No, 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 no. no. Monday on 2020, an emotional tug of war. Adopted children searching for their birth mothers. Birth mothers who don't want to be found. I was also just absolutely terrified. Can you understand why your birth mother does not want to have contact with you now? A gripping 2020, Monday.
ABC 2000 coverage continues with the latest from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Counting down to the new year, and if you wanted to leave early and get a head start for a position in Times Square, well, Nancy, you'll have lots of company. Oh, yeah. I, from the picture, you can tell all those prime viewing spots, they're gone. <laughs> So glad you're spending this special morning with us. I'm Nancy Lewis. And I'm David Ushery. From the size of the crowd, you'd think New Year's was minutes away, not hours. The crowd has been building since long before sunrise, and even Mayor Giuliani seemed surprised at how early this party started. Sandra Bookman was there early, too. She's there still, live for us with the latest. Sandra? That's right, Nancy. We have been here for about six or seven hours now. There was a buzz when we first got here this morning. That buzz has continued. No question there is a party going on here in Times Square. But we got to remind you, as much fun as it is out here now and as much fun as people want to have tonight, there is still a big concern about security. Besides the Y2K concerns, there's, of course, the concerns that uh, some there may be some sort of terror terroristic act. The city is confident they've done everything within their power to keep that from happening. Um, to that end, there's seven to 8,000 officers going to be on duty out here. Police are intending to control this crowd by using barricades. Already the area is basically frozen, and that frozen zone, as we've said throughout the morning, is going to extend as the day wears on. So we're going to tell you, if you're headed this way, forget about the car, get on the train or on the bus. If you're coming this way, don't bring alcohol. City says come, have a good time. They want you to do that, but you better, you're going to have to fall in line if you're going to be out here celebrating this New Year's Eve. We're live in Times Square. I'm Sandra Bookman, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. You got a choice spot right there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, as Sandra suggested for weeks, Mayor Giuliani himself has said the New Year's bash should be trouble free. Sandra mentioned security, and on that note, the city emergency officials not taking anything for granted. Sarah Wallace is live at OEM headquarters with more on that. Sarah. Well, Nancy, actually, for the moment, it's been renamed the Emergency Operations Center, which is a fancy name for command post. Right now, there are 28 city agencies represented here, as well as 23 state and federal agencies and a number of business organizations. They're monitoring everything that is going on in the city, as well as they're tied into information centers across the world. For instance, if there were to be a problem in Australia, which there hasn't been, that's already in the year 2000, they would then anticipate if that problem could happen here and put something into place. So far, there's no, been no reason to activate anything. In fact, everything is going so smoothly, according to the mayor, that he himself offered us a little personal humor. So, so far, it has not been, as far as we can tell, a Y2K-related problem. As you hear problems, I think everything that happens today, the first issue is going to be, it must be, you know, I had a little trouble getting my lights on this morning, so I was convinced that it was Y2K. Actually, I was sleepy, so I couldn't find the switch. The uh, reality is every problem is going to be first considered a Y2K problem. So f then we'll look behind it and see if it is or it isn't. But so far, there haven't been any. And they're hoping that stays the same, so these gentlemen and ladies behind me will have a very boring day. On a more serious note, of course, they are anticipating any problem that could arise. In fact, as of 8 o'clock tonight, every commissioner or deputy commissioner from every city agency is required to be here. And this command center will remain activated until Monday afternoon. Live from the command center, Sarah Wallace, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you very much, Sarah. And that does it for your local news. For now, I'm Nancy Liu. And I'm David Ushery. We'll keep an eye on things, but we'll take you back now to ABC 2000. This ABC 2000 Millennium Eyewitness News Update, brought to you by Toyota, taking you into the new millennium. How do you enhance a V8 engine that produces 245 horsepower? A chassis that can haul up to 2,000 pounds? Or brakes that have four piston calipers? Simple. Add about six pounds of steel. Toyota Tundra, Motor Trend Truck of the Year, and Four Wheel and Off Road Magazine's 4x4 of the Year. The best taste for me is Pepsi when I'm cruising down the streets of the NYC. Me and my boy just shooting the breeze. On the streets of LA, we sipping a Pepsi. To the ever blessed joy, they only call it for me. The joy of flavor, the joy of fun, the joy of vocal, all on your tongue, the, the joy of joy. <laughs> Yo.
Y'all need a lift? Wishing you a happy Kwanzaa from all of us at ABC7. Well, we didn't imagine when we started all this that we'd get as much use out of Times Square today. Credit to the organizers. Now they are reminding us that in about 10 minutes from now, we're going to be celebrating midnight in China, the world's most populous nation. And being the Times Square crowd they are, they want to be a little ahead of the game as they celebrate China here in Times Square. And while we're waiting to celebrate midnight in China, we want to talk again to Dr. Neil Tyson from the Hayden Planetarium. You know, they put up the Hubble, or they fixed the Hubble telescope yeah. again today, or the other day, rather, which is very exciting for us to watch the astronauts work. What's that going to mean? Are we going to be able to see even farther into the future, or are we going to get to see things we've already know about? Well, it's, it's both. We get to see more of what we know to sharpen our understanding of the universe, but also there are always new discoveries in the universe. Practically any time you point the Hubble telescope anywhere, there are elements of the universe that are revealed to us. Right now, the Hubble Deep Field remains one of the most significant images we have of the universe because it's a sight line that goes from where we are here on Earth all the way out to the farthest reaches of the universe. And there are galaxies nearby, galaxies far away. And these galaxies hail from a time when the universe was much younger. And so it's a, in a way, it's a timeline of the 13 billion years of cosmic time. Uh, is that the magic figure, 13 billion well, it, years of there's some uncertainty. Time. There is some uncertainty in that number. Yeah. We, uh, up at the, at the new Rose Center for Earth and Space, we've settled on 13 right. uh, for a big timeline that we've, we're creating there. Uh, knowing that perhaps one day it might be 14, but our, our billion-year markers are on sliding tracks, yeah, so in case incredible. we have to adjust Now, I know the answer to this already, but I'm always fascinated, so I'm going to be your prop man. Tell okay. us where man fits into this timeline, and how much space do we occupy? Well, the timeline that we create is about, is about the length of a football field wrapped around. And as you march your way down this, uh, down this ramp, you see chronicled at a rate of about 3.7 million years per inch the history of the world. Two-thirds of the way down, you pass the formation of the solar system. And at the end of the ramp, the thickness of hair on the sheet that you're holding up, the thickness of that strand of hair represents all of cultural history of human beings on Earth That's in time, from cave paintings to the present. And so you ask, where does a millennium fit? It's that, it's, it's one thirtieth of the width of that strand of That's hair. That's absolutely extraordinary. So um, man's contribution to time all goes in to a period or a space the width of that hair. On, on a timeline stretch just the length of a football field. Now I have to tell me, you're the only man I know who carries around his <laughs> own... <laughs> I have to show you this. <laughs> his own this, meteorite. It was fun getting through the, the metal detectors with this. <laughs> this, is a, this is an iron nickel meteorite that um, was found in Namibia. Right. In, uh, off the southwest, southern west, Africa, southwest right. Africa. Right. And let me just plop that in your lap here. You get a sense of that. Holy mackerel. Now, and my first question when you give me this, should we be wording in the next century that Earth is going to be hit yeah, by things like this? Carrying that around, you wonder what will happen if it hits you in the head. You'd be squashed like a bug, basically. The, yes, these things are out there in the universe, uh, in the galaxy, in our solar system. And uh, perhaps there's one out there with our name on it, but we don't know yet. And we want to at least start looking. And, as a scientist, and you look out at this next minuscule, ludicrously little period of time called a hundred years or even a thousand years. Anything to worry about? Well, a hundred years, you know, or ten years or a week, you worry about your job, you know, your life, your kids, that sort of thing. But with a cosmic perspective, it enables you to take a step beyond that. Just walk out of the building at night, look up, and ask, what does the next millennium mm. eon or, or trillion year period bring for, for survival of the Earth, the survival of the solar mm. system? And we've got people studying the evolution of the sun, and you learn that it's going to go red giant in five, in five billion years. Uh, not something to put on your calendar, but it's... But it's interesting. I was, I, I was listening last night on the radio to Arthur Clarke, who wrote, among other things, 2001, yes. and who was a great futurist. And he believed that, that we were going to have a rotating, a, a traveling Hilton close to the planet, to, close to the surface of the moon. Do you think within this century people will be visiting the moon? That, that'd be an awfully expensive trip to take. Uh, now, there's no, you know vacation spots, there's no limit to what people will spend, of course. Uh, if I could go, I'd probably want to go. Uh, no, I don't think in this century. I think futurists, one thing they, they get some things right, but what they more typically get wrong is estimating the actual time scale over which things will, mm. will take place. We all saw 2001, and what, mm. there were, it was routine to go into orbit and to take trips to the moon. That's not the case. How do astrophysicists feel about predictions? Well, we, we 
If there's, <laughs> <laughs> I think astrophysicists are the only people who actually can predict anything in the world. I can tell you to the exact moment when a total solar eclipse is going to happen, when the sun is going to rise, and uh, if we were of such an ilk, we could have tremendous cults following us saying, watch what happens to the sun tonight, or the moon, or the lunar eclipse coming I, later in January. I have to tell you, if you walk out of here in the Times Square and start saying that, I guarantee you'll get a crowd. <laughs> it's great to have you. Yeah, it's good no one in the country explains science more clearly and more eloquently than you do. Thanks very much. Thank Happy you. New Year. Thank you. Nice good. to see you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Neil Tyson uh, from the Hayden Planetarium, which is soon to become the Rose Hayden Planetarium. The, the Rose Center for Earth and Space, the opening Rose, in February. The Rose Center for Earth and Space, and I have had a little glimpse of it from the, from the inside, and and everybody who comes to New York always wants to go to the planetarium, especially if they've got kids. Now it has got, thanks to Dr. Tyson and a lot of generous people, even more exciting uh, than it has been in the past. Worthwhile. It opens in February. Great. We take you to the future. Again, Shanghai, as I said, to the most populous nation in the world, though a country slightly smaller than the United States. And our Mark Lifke, our chief Asia correspondent, is there. Mark, you don't know this, but thanks to technology, we've dressed you a little differently. Uh, than you were before. You were looking all dressed up and keeping warm, and thanks to technology, I think we've managed now to put you in a jacket. But why a celebration in, why a celebration in China of the millennium? They don't use the same calendar. Well, in many ways, this is China's way of reminding the world that <laughs> this is not a millennium celebration for China. This is a five millennium celebration for China. This is 5,000 years of continuous history. Uh, 5,000 years in which uh, China was at one time the greatest civilization on the planet. In the year 999, the Sung Dynasty, China was the greatest civilization. It was a time of great scientific and artistic achievement. The invention of paper and printing and gunpowder and the compass. And all these years later, China, in some way, is trying to tell the world we need to capture that lost glory. So, so celebrating the millennium is a way uh, uh, to stick its chest out a little bit and say, we can do you three millennia better. Let's listen to them for a second. Thank you, Mark.
With one minute to go, they have been singing Love Our China, a reminder that the U.S.-China relationship in the next century is going to be one of the most complicated relationships America has in the world. And here, as always, is the the uh, official party uh, led by the President of the People's Republic of China and Jiang Zemin is going to come here and mark the new century. of the world's fireworks, so they've got to be very happy in that respect today. As for the Y2K problem, which we've been talking throughout the day, China has strongly suggested to the chiefs of all of its mainland airlines that they be in the air at that moment to win public confidence. It's felt that throughout China they have not done as good a job as other countries have. And here's a reminder that the Chinese were able to use fire a million, rather a half a million years ago. This fire was lit today at a place called Jokotien, on the same site where Peking Man was discovered and has been moved to this uh, place quite near Beijing, to the Millennium Altar built especially for this occasion and now back to Shanghai. Mark Lithke. Well, there it is, Peter, over the... Uh the very modernistic, futuristic Pudong area, right across the river from the old Bund area of Shanghai. Where until this very recently the, uh, they had two of the tallest buildings in the world, which are now in Malaysia, but still there are there which make you nervous to go up in, including I think your hotel, right? Absolutely. We're, my room is on the 85th floor and it's uh, pressed right up against the windows. It's quite spectacular in the morning. And it's getting deafening around here. It's quite difficult to hear you now, Peter. Jiang Zemin, the General Secretary of the Communist Party, uh, out in Beijing, a country with which Americans have such a long love-hate relationship, upset now because of the Chinese Communist Party's crackdown on Falun Gong, though Mark Litke told us on the phone the other day that the Chinese don't pay nearly as much attention to it as we do. Barbara Walters, who is with us today, uh, must have some evocative memories because, Barbara, you went with President Nixon when he went to China. I did indeed. It was 28 years ago, and Peter, it was like going to the moon. By the way, a, a year after Tiananmen, I interviewed uh, Jiang Zemin. I asked him about the uprising at Tiananmen Square, and he said, much ado about nothing. He said it in English. But Peter, when, when I went with a small group of reporters uh, to China, uh, there was no color at all. You couldn't tell the men from the women. Everyone was in uniform. Uh, Mao Zedong was the premier. The Cultural Revolution was on, cracking down on artistic and intellectual life. It could not be more different in less than these 30 years. It was like going to the most foreign country you could possibly have visited. I think many people believing that uh, we'll be very surprised if communism lasts deep into the 21st century because from Shanghai, where Mark Litke is tonight, uh, to Beijing, as Barbara just points out, uh, the technological revolution has reached the country with enormous proportions. Mark Litke, you and I were reminiscing the other day that if you couldn't be in Times Square, you could get exactly the same feeling in downtown Shanghai. Absolutely. And uh, this morning, I actually went down to People's Park in central Shanghai, which was the site of the old race course, horse racing course during colonial times. And it was a brilliant day, people strolling with their families, taking in the good weather. And I have never, I talked to a great many people out there, I have never seen Chinese so optimistic. Always a little cautious. This is still a country where people take two steps forward, one step back. But beyond that caution, there was an optimism that China has turned a corner in recent years, that the future 
is brighter than anything they, their relatives, their ancestors have ever known. Thank you, Mark Litke, our chief Asia correspondent who uh, knows China and most of the other nations in Asia so well for reminding us that uh, between these two superpowers, the United States and China, it was America who led the way in looking out to the rest of the world. China was far behind. But when you look at Pudong on the other side of the river there, um, and even what's happened to Shanghai, what's happened to Beijing, and the kind of change that is irresistible in China, even for a Communist Party very much still in charge of the political and police apparatus, the next century is going to be very, very different. We'll continue our millennium coverage in just a moment. This is ABC 2000, the celebration of the millennium. Brought to you by... 101031 and by AccuView contact lenses vision for the new millennium Introducing the new AccuView 2 contact lens so natural it feels like you're wearing nothing at all For a free trial pair call us or visit your eye care professional Announcing a new way to see near and far AccuView bifocal contact lens with pupil intelligent design. Call 1-800-531-2121 for a free trial pair or visit your eye care professional. Uh, my driving test kind of got off to a bad start. On calls like this, you want to talk a while. That's why it's always a good idea to dial 10-10-3-2-1. Well, I, I thought I was in first. With 10-10-3-2-1, you save 50% on calls over 10 minutes. Now that's just eight cents a minute, day or night. I was supposed to turn on the blinker. And no monthly fees. And at 50% off, you can go on and on and on. So finally, I pull out of the parking space. Talk as long as you want with 10-10-3-2-1. Before I quit smoking, I asked my doctor, is Nicorette safe? And he said, of course Nicorette is safe. Smoking is not. Nicorette has been proven safe and effective in dozens of clinical trials. And Nicorette offers the Committed Quitter Support Program, which my doc said is clinically proven to increase my chances of success by up to 50%. And when he told me that only Nicorette comes in mint, I knew that that was the right choice for me. So I took my doctor's advice, and you know what? It worked. You can do it. Nicorette can help. How do you enhance a V8 engine that produces 245 horsepower? A chassis that can haul up to 2,000 pounds? Or brakes that have four piston calipers? Simple. Add about six pounds of steel. Toyota Tundra, Motor Trend Truck of the Year, and four-wheel and off-road magazines 4x4 four four of the year. It's the dawn of a new millennium, and only one thing is certain. Monday nights belong to ABC. Network premieres of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters. I can't lie! And our outstanding originals. Mary Tyler Moore and Valerie Harper are back in Mary and Rhoda. From the producers of Annie, The Beat.